All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the J.E. Fox Gymnasium in beautiful downtown Reading. Coming to you live in the first set, we got Fairview versus Gospel Haven. This is a big game because the loser is eliminated. Gospel Haven came in as the number one seed and were knocked off by the number eight seed. I think that was probably the first time in the history of the FCS Invitational that eight knocked off one but watching the game it was not a fluke maranatha has come in and surprised everybody and gospel haven is the reigning champion but did not look quite as strong as last year and so they got knocked into the losers bracket fairview as the five seed lost to the four seed central which set up this classic match at 8 30 on saturday morning and loser will go to a consolation game this afternoon with no Ability to advance. The winner advances for the 10:30 game against Hartville. Fairview takes game one. This is best of three. Losers bracket. The games are starting at four to four. The game goes to 25. If there is a rubber or bully game, that game goes to 15. Again, Fairview takes game one. Game two coming up. Enjoy the game. Thank you very much.
In case you joined us late, this is game two. Fairview and Gospel Haven. Fairview took game one. Fairview leads 17-15. Loser is out of the tournament. They will play a consolation game later. Winner advances to a 10-30 matchup against Hartville. So they are still alive. Enjoying some good volleyball this morning. We've got Ken Cooper in the house along with Kevin, our reliable refs. Thanks for joining us. Beautiful downtown Reading, the J.E. Fox Auditorium, along with my producer, Arlen King. We're coming to you. Enjoy the volleyball. Fairview leads 17-15, game two. Winner advances. Loser is out of the tournament. Yeah. <laughs> 
23-23 in game two. Fairview took game one. Fairview had a four or five point lead here. Gospel Haven pulled it up to a 23-23 tie. Fairview prevails. Gospel Haven is eliminated. Gospel Haven prevails. We go to a game three up to 15, win by two, cap 17. Thanks for joining us this morning. This broadcast is brought to you by the Laundry King. If you're in Reading and you need clean laundry, Mr. King owns the best. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy the game. All right, folks, there you have it. Fairview advances. I don't want to be a home team Larry Anderson kind of announcer, but we're glad for the win. Gospel Haven is eliminated. That's the one seed, and that might be about the earliest elimination of the one seed in the history of our tournament. They played well. Competition is very tough this year. Fairview's far from out of the woods as they advance to a tough match against Hartville. Here at 1030, the, the match coming up now is Solid Rock versus Mountain View. The winner advances. The loser is also in a consolation match against Gospel Haven. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back in 15 minutes with Gospel Haven Mountain View. Good win, Fairview. Good job, Gospel Haven.
All right, and we are back. Welcome back to FCS Live Sports. This is Blake Fox and Bryce Fox commentating in the booth. We have a good match against Solid Rock and Mountain View. Just about to start. A little weather update for you on this beautiful Saturday morning. 31 degrees, partly sunny. Actually, looks like a very sunny day, so it should be a very beautiful day. And we have a very good day about volleyball coming your way. Started off the morning with a Fairview upset over Gospel Haven. So just to get things started, we have a big upset. So who knows what's going to happen? It's the Fairview tournament. Anything can happen. Saturday morning, beautiful weather, like Blake said. Downtown Reading. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. 35 seconds till we start. we got Solid Rock and Mountain View. Stay tuned. Should be a solid outing. Oh, let's see what you did there, Blake. All, All right. you pun lovers out there, that was for you. Just some key matchups to look at tonight, today, this morning, I mean. Sorry, excuse me. Um, Blake, who is the best or who is the one to look at from Solid Rock? Who's the person that you got to keep an eye on on the court? Maybe number 16, Juliana Reese. A very ball, a present at the net. A presence. 
a presence at the net. I like the way you term that. A sophomore going into her junior year next year, she is going to be a problem. If you know anything about volleyball, she's got what it takes. And on the other side of the corner, Mountain View, you're going to have to look out for Taylor Yoder. Uh, key to their offense and to get them going early in this game. Our game today will be ref by Kevin Cooper and Kevin Line. So, no, Kevin what? <laughs> Kevin, it's not Kevin Line, but I always call him Kevin Line. But by the Kevins, Kevin Sherbert. So, Coop and Sherb is what we're calling them today. No disrespect to the officials, obviously. And on the lines, we're going to have Benji Nolt and Jacob Petersheim. Just a, uh, just a little information for you. This is an elimination game. So we have eight teams left. After this game, there will be seven teams left. So winner advances. It's on the line. It's winner go home. If you are here live at the tournament, you could see some great food on this menu here. I've seen a pulled pork sandwich stands out to me. Can't go wrong with the pulled pork on a Saturday morning, honestly. If you're more in the breakfast mood, I mean, we got donuts, coffee, hot chocolate, breakfast sandwich. Wow. Can't go wrong. Sherb going over the lineup. Seems to be a little mix up there on the solid rock side. And looks like he's getting it figured out. So up first to, to serve, we have number 13, which would be Isabella Beachy up with the serve. Beautiful placement set. And that would be 16. Goes for the uh, little tap there. Oh, what a call by Benji Nolt. That was centimeters from being in. He had his eye on the line. Just like the fundamentalists say, you got to have the right posture when you make the call. Lifted his hand vertically. Oh, and he made the call. And followed by a serve in the net by Solid Rock. Mountain View to serve. Nice spike there. As we're going to see earlier in the game, we're going to, we want to see some consistent serving. A lot of these games start off very sloppy, and it just gets out of hand quickly. So, And if you're solid rock, you have to do better at get. Oh, we have a little timeout, ref timeout. If you're solid rock, you have to do better at getting back and getting your both hands on the ball instead of just one. Um, ended up a little wild there, out of bounds. Mar uh, Mountain View at the point. And we're going to redo the serve by 80, which is Kiana Beachy. Kiana with the serve. It's Hit up to the center, bumped. Oh, it's tight on the stick, but they call it good. Nice little spike. It's deep. Benji, oh, what a call. A little jab there by Benji with the in call. I like it. Keeps the intense movement going. Ah.
Nice hit by Peter Sound to the back row. Set up. Uh oh. Oh. Okay. Off the face of number eight. Whatever it takes, I'm telling you. Oh. She was miles. I say miles above the net, sarcastically, obviously. But she was up there and she hit that down. Mountain View had no chance of returning that. Balls bumped up and set. Number eight with Spike. Okay, a little wild play. Oh. Poor communication by the Mountain View defense. Like, what do you have to say here about the importance of communication on a volleyball team? It is so important. Find those little soft spots and communicating who's going after those balls. It's so important in this game. Yes. If you ever follow volleyball, you know that communication is extremely important. If you have two people going for the ball, it always ends bad. If you have no one for going for the ball, obviously it's just going to drop it. That ball set up. Mountain View. Oh, tries to find a spot. Out of bounds. What a call by Trisha Sensnig on the line. It seems that Jacob Petersheim may have gone a substitute going for breakfast. I mean, oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Talking back about communication, that was just not, not how it's done. Let it drop right in there. All right, here's the bump. It's set up a little deep. Oh, but a nice return. It spiked it. Okay. Another nice set. She get, 16 gets up there. Wow. Mountain View ain't going to kill you on powerful spike, but they are finding spots, causing Solid Rock to not be able to get a good hit to their setter, causing them not to spike. I mean, it seems to be working, even though Solid Rock is up 8 to 10. Here's Sean with the hit. We got a little roll there on the elbow. Mountain View Point. Something you're going to see if you watch Mountain View Volleyball is number 13 loves finding those soft spots right next to the net. She has those little sets right there. She's very good at it. Something to watch out for there. That is what we would call volleyball IQ there. Just finding that soft spot. The defense can't quite get to it. It's not the most powerful play or the most prettiest play, but it works. And anything to get the point in volleyball especially at this big tournament. A nice hustle play there, but could not get it high enough for her teammates to get back to it. Yeah, whoever put that wall there, I don't know. <laughs> really messed up that volleyball play. <laughs> All right, little back row spike, solid rock. Up to Bishi, sets it. Okay, back row hit. Uh-oh, this is trouble, okay. Great defense by Mountain View, good communication. Definitely getting better. And there's their opportunity to drop one, and she decides to set it. Oh! Thrown backwards by Juliana Reese. To all your basketball fans out there that just give you what it looks like to have number 16 there at the net, it's like a Giannis onto the Kupo underneath the rim when you're going up for a dunk, dude. It's a presence. There is no way you can get around her, her blocks. Yeah, I don't know about comparing her to the Greek freak, but I mean, maybe Taco Fall. <laughs> she is not to undermine her skills. She has really helped the Solid Rock team out. Just that presence. Oh, the defense can't handle it. Mountain View looking solid up 12-11 early in this game. The substitution and number 12 coming in to serve. Number 12, Samantha Beachy is a freshman, so just starting out her volleyball career. Seemed very confident at the stripe, but Solid Rock returns it, and Mountain View can't handle it. Solid Rock point. If you are a little confused by the backwards score, the score is not backwards. Only on our screen is the score backwards. So it is 12 to 12. Solid Rock with the set, a little doink over. Oh! Like I said, number 13 finds those soft spots. She's a very exciting player to watch. And that's a hard one to not put out of bounds if you put too much power behind it, but she just gently kissed it over the net, right in the lines of Solid Rock. 
Oh, what a call by Benji. I, I'm telling you what, I don't I don't like to harp too much. I sound like a broken record, but Benji's form, he's got it. I mean, I've seen a lot of line judges over the years, and no one quite does it like Benji. A very confident line judge. Oh, yeah, for There's sure. There's no debating if he knows what he's doing. Benji is a junior from Favorite Christian School, and um, looking pretty solid on the basketball team this year, if you're into the basketball, but not today. We are into volleyball, and Benji, among a star in basketball, is a star in line judging. Uh, Mountain View playing tight to the net, rejected by number one. And Solid Rock gets a set up. Number one with the spike. Oh! Looks like Mountain View got caught on their heels there on defense. It's not quite enough momentum to get to that ball. Like, what's it looking like for our turnout today? How many people are you predicting are going to be in this small gym? Not a lot of seating. But this place can get pretty packed out. What are you thinking? Yeah, I'm saying earlier today, we're, we're hitting 150 to 200, maybe more. I'm not sure, but I think we'll be pushing through. Uh, yeah, I, I'm thinking it's going to be a little higher than that. I mean, out. you never know. It's something, it's something they come to watch volleyball. It's, it's another thing to come and watch the fans cheer. And the fans oh, the fans. The wow. If you, were, if you were tuned in for the Fairview game, this place was going nuts. It was a 23-23 game. And Fairby pulled out 25-23. The crowd was going crazy. Which reminds me, to, um, this morning at 10.30, we have a very, very good game. The number two seed against the number five, I believe. And what are those teams? That would be Hartville vs. Fairview. And oh, wow. Just Fairview just knocked off the number one seed. So they're looking for another upset here. Let's see if they can pull it off. Fairview looking to ride their momentum into Hartville. I mean, I haven't seen Hartville play. I wasn't here yesterday. But from what I hear, they're solid. Solid Rock trying to get a little offense going. Nice spike by Juliana. Oh, wow. It's like a little standing standing spike by number 80 there. Much power. Okay. Got a little volley going on. Oh, definitely something. Was there a net on Solid Rock? If you're just tuning in, it is a tight game. Mountain View up 17 to 16. First game of three, am I right? Yes, first game of three. Oh, way to be there by number 13. Yoder sets it up. And number 13 with Spike. Oh, just a little deep. And Benji again with a solid call. <laughs> Seventeen off. Mountain View with a nice return. Sets up thirteen. Oh, just a nice little tap over. Oh, she was up there. And Solid Rock still handling it, getting a little squirming around. And that's gonna be four hits on Mountain View. Solid Rock takes the lead. So next game we have Ferry at Hartville. What do we got coming up after that? We have the winner of this game and so Maranatha versus oh that game already played. Uh, sorry for the confusion. We got Maranatha versus the winner of this game. Maranath looking solid, pulled off a big upset against Gospel Haven last night. So Gospel Haven, the number one seed, has been eliminated. Um, it's going to be a long trip back to... Whoa! Oh, my! <laughs> wow! What? Number one. Number one just rose up. You don't see that all the time. I mean, she's been pretty um, casual recently, but she just rose up and pounded that ball. Maranath, Mountain View, was not expecting it. Number one, Madeline is a soft Yes, you heard me right. A soft wow. that potential. We are going to be seeing lots, a lot of her over the years. I mean, it would be one thing if she was maybe a junior or a senior, but three more years of this girl, I don't know. I mean, we might have D1 coaches in this gym in a couple of years. Who knows? <laughs> oh, wow. 
Oh, what a play by number eight. A little spike set. I don't know what you call that. Just like she was up there so she could like hit it down with a set. You don't see that every day. Oh, wow. I like the analogy there. Sleep, what I have lack of right now because I had to get up at 8 o'clock in the morning to watch Fairview. Ah, I'm not better, if it sounds like it. <laughs> All right. Solid Rock with a costly mistake in crunch time. And we have a timeout here by Solid Rock trying to clean up all the confusion on the court right now. 20 to 19, Mountain View with the lead, coming down to the wire. I mean, these mistakes are going to be costly if they don't clean them up soon. And we'll be back after the messages from our uh, host. <laughs> From our host. Okay, this is this is the principal of Fairview, Manage, Fairview High School, and just want to thank everyone for coming. Um, we just want to, um, yeah, just give a little shout out to our ref and to our line judge Benji, who's eyeing us up here at the booth. <laughs> a little shout out to Benji, and yeah, thanks for tuning in. We have 20 seconds till game time again. Um, so yeah, this game is sponsored by State Farm. Are you in good hands? All right, and we're back in action. We got Bryce Fox and Blake Fox here in the booth. Um, yeah, definitely rookies to the booth if you haven't noticed, but you know what? We are sending it right now, so um, we're, yeah, we're just up here chilling. <laughs> All right, it's crunch time. Looks like we have a little substitution for Solid Rock. Number six hits it out of bounds. Right away, Mountain View targets number six. See if they can work their hands a little bit there. So Mountain View with the two-point lead, 21-19. Oh, nice spike, nice serve. Uh-oh. At the net, what's the call? Oh, they're going to call a carry? I'm not sure what that motion was. <laughs> Maybe a net, I don't know. And Mountain View trying to get a little offense going, sets it up. Nice little spike. It's up. Oh, oh wow. Are you kidding me? There, but, hey. Mountain View coach wanted a carry, but I don't know. That was close. Um, great job by Solid Rock to stick with it, get over the net. Great hustle back here by Mountain View when sliding into the stands. Um, can't complain. Okay, we're going to have a tie game all knotted up at 21 apiece. And we got a two ball set. Ouch. Solid Rock traveling all the way from New Jersey to play in this tournament. Had a lot of great competition against them in recent years. So shout out to their um, athletic department for um, allowing them to come play. I think this is their first year at the Fairy Tournament. So congratulations to them. 21-22, Solid Rock with the lead is set up. Peter Scheim with a spike. Oh, 16, Juliana couldn't handle the block. And it looks like we're going back again with Spike. Double block. She gets through it. Okay. We got a volley on our hands, folks. Oh! Wow, that was tricky. That was tricky, but Solid Rock handles it. One thing you want to see here and a uh, little more in the game is that feed number 16. They haven't been feeding yeah. her as much as she should be. She's a Piper Dandy. In comparison to basketball, it's like having a big man in the low block, and you're just not getting her him the ball. I mean, I don't know much about volleyball, but if I had a girl of her height on my front lines, I would definitely be feeding her the ball. All right, we got a volley going on, 21 to 22. Solid Rock with the lead. And it's, oh. And Solid Rock is taking advantage of every mistake Mountain View has, and it is costing Mountain View right now. Mountain View wants to get back in this game. They got to do it fast, clean up some mistakes. We're down 23 to 21. This is only the first game, but every game matters when it comes to this tournament. Timeout, Mountain View, 24-21, Solid Rock. What is Mountain View's coach going to draw up here to bring her team back? I mean, they seem a little bit down and out. They had a, some costly mistakes, kills your momentum. 
Um, she's looking fired up down there in the huddle. She's like looking at everyone like, what are we going to do, folks? Like, what do you think she's telling them? I don't know. She's saying, get it together. We need to clean up our mistakes right now. Uh, also, a little, little update here. We had 10 teams, and we were down to seven, correct? I believe that is correct. And now we were, had four states, and we were down to three states that are representing. Oh, wow. So, a national tournament, a national what you would call us. <laughs> represented all around the country. Very big. Huge tournament. Huge. And, down, and hosted by downtown Reading. Um, what's the mayor of Reading? I forget his name. But. Oh, and they. Wow. And they ace. Oh, my word. What a way to win the game. The communication <laughs> was not there. Yeah, whatever Mountain View's coach threw up, it just didn't seem to register with the girls. And but good thing for them, there is his best of three, so they do have another chance. But they're gonna have to get some things together, talk it out before they head into game two. Um, this game is officiated by Coop and Sherb, so thanks to them. I mean, um, definitely have been here for a while, refing the refing all of this tournament. I believe he's um, at least Kevin Sherbert. <laughs> I forget what Kevin. I forget what the one guy's last name is. But he's been refing for years on end. Nice guy. Got to meet him um, today while, while I was line judging. I mean, I met him before. Good guy. He's a big fan of the hot chocolate here. So if you haven't tried the hot chocolate here in the concession stands, come and get it. Well, these two refs represent so many sports. I think mean, Coop does basketball, and Kevin does football and basketball and volleyball. Coop does volleyball, too. So I believe Coop does softball, too, actually, or baseball. So a lot of experience on the court right now yeah these guys are officials for years on end i mean you think about a solid softball ref or ump i want coop behind the plate i mean just think about that on those balls and strikes. called strike three i mean as long as he doesn't like do anything to his rotator cuff i think yeah, he should that, be fine <laughs> every time i mean i mean i know from experience that don't mess you up <laughs> not really but i feel like you would have a quick Throwing you out of the game if you give him that yeah. ball. Or you anything. don't. You don't want to mess with Coop. That's one <laughs> thing. You might look like a friendly guy up there on the stand, but don't mess with Coop. You right now. He is a friendly guy. Great guy. He. I believe he did come and give his testimony at school one time, and I think he is like cancer survivor or something. So shout out to him. Um, okay. So very nice guy. <laughs> great guy. Great guy. Just he. Just you don't want to mess with him in the game. That's the thing. Wait, I thought that's the first. That's the only this. That's the loop. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're wondering why that game looked like it kind of went really fast, is this it is start. They started at fours. Guys, do you know? Yes, they did. I, I believe in the loose bracket, they start off 4-4. Four, four. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it is. We'll see right here. So we'll we'll right. find out. I don't know, because last game, I believe they started at zero, 0-0. Zero. But the Fairview game, they started at 4-4. Four, four, so uh, maybe it's the second set, according to our rules analytics, analytics guy. We'll quote us on that, but comment on the live stream if you think it's... Who's right? Yeah. Like Fox or Rose Fox? We need a little more commenting here. So um, if you guys can tune in, give us some input. Can you hear us well? Um, how's our commentating? <laughs> Maybe don't don't, Maybe not the don't talk about the commentating. How are the line judges? What's your thoughts at? Yeah. All right. Game two. This one is starting at 4-4. I believe it is the second match. So our rules analytics, analytics guy was right. 4-4. And so Solid Rock took the first game, a score of 25-21. And they're looking to bounce back. Mountain View's looking to bounce back. All right, shout out to uh, Bronson for a um, little input. I like that. All right, we got Mountain View setting it over. Uh-oh, this is problem. Juliana with the spike. Returned by Mountain View. Good placement by number 13, Beachy. Little back row spike. Kept her foot on the ground because I believe she was in front of the 10 foot line. All 
right? We got number 80. 80 not being not a traditional volleyball number. I don't think I've ever seen number 80. I wonder what the story is behind that. But um, shout out for being different. Nothing wrong with that. All right, we got to meet up at the net. Oh, re rejected oh. by eight. Oh, my goodness. And as we look at the scoreboard, they do 4-4, four, four, so. I did say that already, yes. Oh, okay. But Mountain View starting off, they need every point this game because there's no messing around. They get eliminated if they don't win this game. 5-4, to four, Mountain View. We've got number 13 up at Stripe. Oh, what a serve. Beautiful place Beautiful. right there. Poor communication by Solid Rock. I believe someone called out, which threw off the back row number one. That's one thing that um, can be kind of tricky is when the crowd or when your coach is calling out, but you think it's in, you don't know what to do. Oh, Benji. I think we might have to go to replay, but Kevin Cook gives him the thumbs up. So I believe that's the right call. It's a hard call to make because the ball is going right at his foot, but I believe he made the right call on that one. Yeah, that was definitely on the outer part of the line, but I think it was in. Okay, a little free ball by Solid Rock. Goes deep into the Mountain View defense. Nice set, Summers with the spike. And it's up. Benji, oh, another great call, Benji. Are you kidding me? Just that little flick of the wrist. Okay, Solid Rock. Beautiful serve. Mountain View couldn't handle it, a little high. Uh, that would have been close to being it out, but I believe it was in. So great attempt at getting it, just couldn't get it up to other teammates. And now Solid Rock can't handle the spike. All right, we got a little instant replay by Sheen. I believe it was the right call from Benji. All right, score update here. We got Mountain View with eight, Solid Rock with seven. Game two, Solid Rock taking the first game. We got number six at the stripe. That would be Lydia Foley Love. So great serve, back row, Mountain View. Can't handle it. Great sliding attempt there by number eight. Friend goes for it, but I just couldn't handle it. Okay, a little meet up here at the net. Oh, Friend. Oh, they're going to call a double hit or a carry. Solid Rock gets the point. Great. Great. Uh, what's the word called? Um, great call, but also great um, going for the ball. I forget what that word is called. <laughs> hustle. Great hustle. That's the word. Okay. A little twisted up there. All right. Solid Rock with the two set. So Mountain View will get the point. And Mountain View serves it over, back row, solid rock. Free ball over the net to the setter for Mountain View. Oh, she tried to find the hole, and they're going to call a two-ball set. Just couldn't quite keep the ball still as she set that ball over the net. And Solid Rock with a little spike to the setter for Mountain View. A little deep, so she's going to have to just bump it over the net. It's up. Deep. Oh, just nice out of bounds. Beautiful call. I mean, that would have been maybe six inches out. But to see that in crunch time, I mean, everything just gets a little blurry when you're blind judging in a tight 10-10 game. Definitely think we have a very good pair of oh, man. good form. The line judges, line judges. wow. Impeccable. <laughs> Impeccable, I like that. And the freshman, number 12, serves into the net. 
I mean, I think she just had a little bit too much top spin on it. It just kind of dipped. A little knuckle curve or something. I'm not sure what was going on there. A little baseball analogy. <laughs> a little baseball right? analogy. And Mountain Dew set up. Solid Rock handles it with a nice spike, number one. And free ball over the net by Mountain View. Again, number one. Oh, she gets on top of it this time. Mountain View can handle it. And friend, no, Beachy, hits it out of bounds. Solid Rock point. All right, Blake, it's 12 to 10. Solid Rock is up. What does Mountain View need to do? Get back in this game. Um, win this game to move on to game three. What do they got to do? I mean, right now they are playing pretty well. It's just that they're not communicating. It's back to community. Like again, right there. Oh, and wow. But that Rock is just finding those little soft spots. And that's killing Not to take right away now. from that beautiful spike, though. She found a line. And, I mean, Mountain View could do nothing about it. So, Mountain View. Going to get another two ball. 14 to 10. Solid Rock takes the lead. Yeah, timeout here by Mountain View. A very timely timeout there. Looking like they were down and out. 14 to 10. Solid Rock has the lead. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is a big game. Big consolation game. Shout out to Beth, who was uh, making eyes at me for some reason from down there. <laughs> Shout out to Beth Gaiman, pastor's wife. Good lady. <laughs> she doesn't know I'm talking about her. All right. We got a sellout crowd here at the, I think we believe it's the J Fox Arena, if I believe right. That's what Brendan yes. called it. The J Fox Arena. This game is sponsored by J Fox himself, by Grandpa. He um, has a great rental company business sponsoring us. And by the way, you do not want to go anywhere. I said it before, but very, very good game. Oh, man. It is like, Probably the best, one of the best games before the championship and all those, but very crucial game. Yeah, you, you might be thinking about tuning into the Penn State game this this afternoon. Nah, Fairview versus Hartville. That's the game to be tuning into, if anything. But we do have national um, probably viewers here from other states, so maybe you're not in Penn State, but... That's kind of unfortunate. <laughs> You're Ohio State fan out there. You're Ohio State. No respect. Ah. No respect. <laughs> kind of broke our hearts. So did Iowa. Ah. All right. Back to the game. <laughs> Sorry. We had a moment there. We had a moment there. All right. Solid rock. Nice little tip over. Mountain View handles it. Nice little spike over by Yoder. We meet at the net. We're going to have a below, a below the net foot, foot fault. Foot fault is what they call it. And Mountain View's going to get the point. So that timeout seems to be carrying a little momentum to that point. Let's see if Mountain View's going to want to run here. Mountain View is um, coached by Brooke. Brooke something. <laughs> so shout out to her for getting her team back in this game. Um, let's get the official Brooke Tice. Brooke Tice is the name. So shout out to Brooke. Solid Rock responds with a point of their own. 15-11, served by number 12. It's deep. Oh, it's a great call. That's great. a great call. I had, the, I had the angle and just centimeters out. It almost looked like it was on the outer part of the line, but just a little bit out. Great call by Trisha Sensing. Good job, Trisha. <laughs> Gives a little nod. Yes, sure. Shout out. All right. Uh, oh, two ball. Mountain View. Fault Mountain View would get away with it there, but no. Coop is Coop, all over that. Coop is all over that. Serve by Solid Rock. Nice serve. And Mountain View can't handle it. So Solid Rock takes a commanding lead, 17 to 12. Looking to close out, move on to play Maranatha. But you never know. Mountain View might have other plans. It's set up, solid rock. With the spike, deep, close to the line, they play it. And Beachy with the deep hit, oh! Benji with the call, out of bounds.
Solid Rock serves it over the net. Summers, oh. Man, did that girl get up there. She's not the tallest girl, but she got up above the net, spiked down. Mountain View turns it. Here we go. Solid Rock plays it well. Spike up to 16. Got it. Oh! Eating her right now. Wow. That's what you need right now if you're Solid Rock. Get the ball up. Number 16. Her name is Juliana Reese. That's going to be the last time out, I believe, by Mountain View. So All right. they're going to have to. Uh, get some important Manage things. time management. Even though this is volleyball and time management is not a thing, there might if they lose more momentum, they're out of timeouts. <laughs> solid Rock with a solid 19 to 12 lead. You see what I did there? And Solid Rock is not even in the huddle right now. They are so pumped up. They're just out. They're waiting. They're waiting. Like, they're they're ready to go. Going, uh, Whereas Mountain View, having a little um, session of talking it out, communication looks like be a key point if I am good at lip reading, which I'm not. So, if you're just tuning in, it is 19 to 12. Solid Rock with the lead. If you're here in person, we have some nacho chips and cheese on sale for 150. Not really on sale, but that is a steal if you ask me. If you go to any big game and get nachos, chips, and cheese, you're easy dropping four or five bucks. Easy. This big game, 150. That's a steal. Oh, them two two ball sets are really seeming to kill Mountain View right now. Little things just. Man. It's definitely something the coach is going to bring up in the next practice. Maybe have a little setting practice. Mountain View still trying to rally, and that ain't going to help them at all. In the net. Running away with this right now. I'm not one to assume, but it is looking like Sod Rock will advance to the Maranatha game. So tune in for that at 11.30. No. Oh, what a Wait. serve. Finding that corner there. Beautiful serve there by Solid Rock with the 10 point advantage. We have a sub come in here, number 26. Skylar Wenzel. Probably not related to Carson Wentz. <laughs> uh oh. Oh! Mountain Dew just caught off guard there. They were expecting the hard spike. No. Just a little net action calls the ball to um, rotate and drop in there. That's a deep serve by Solid Rock. Giving Mountain View a little glimmer of hope. 13 to 23. So if you're just tuning in, Fairview and Hartville will be next. Big game. Oh. Let's see if number 15 can serve them the victory. It's a long way, but hey, upsets have happened. Uh, I believe in miracles. And Solid Rock, great hustle there. Laid out for the ball, just couldn't quite get it over the net. All right. Free ball by Solid Rock. It's deep. It's going to be in. Say so play it. Oh. Oh. Wow. Wow, was she up there. I mean, there's nothing you can do. Uh, Mountain View, not the tallest team for sure. So definitely on a mismatch, we got game point. Number four, check me. Number four, who would be Ali Shade. It. We love to see the coaching subs. I mean, get those girls that don't get, get some time. She's a sophomore. Coming into a big game, 14 to 24. Some people will call this like the trash minutes at the end of the game. But you never know what can happen. Mountain View is locked in and ready to come back. But can they do it is the real question. Okay. Ali tried to go from the back, back row spike, just couldn't quite handle it. Nothing to be alarmed about. Solid Rock still with a nine point lead. Nice serve, deep. And someone was calling that out, so 
I think she just got a little um, confused at what she should do there. So Autumn Bradbury just quite couldn't handle it. Number 80 with the serve. And again, can't handle it. All right. Man, they're making this a game. Looking down at the coach from Solid Rock, still sitting down, so not too alarmed. But Mountain View showing a little sign of life. And again. All right, and she's putting her uh -oh. starters back in. She's like, uh oh. No, nah, we are not going to another game. We are just and the subs are in. Great call by the coach. I mean, you don't want to let it get too close. It's a six point lead still, most likely. Oh, man. Ah. Oh. Wow. So close. That's so close. Yeah. I mean, great call by Benji, too. He was, he was on it. He flipped that flag up, and as soon as he did that, we knew the game was over. Yeah. So thanks for tuning in, folks. Solid Rock takes this game in two game, this set in two games. So they will advance to play Maranatha. Up next, we got Fairview and Hartville. Good game. Um, shout out to our referees, Coop and Troob. Um, great job. And our line judges were Trisha and Benji. So this game is sponsored by Clover Farms. Uh, shout out to them because our uh, tech guy is wearing a Clover Farms jacket. So big fan. Blake, any closing comments? Um, not really. Then all I got to say is this is Blake Fox and Bryce Fox. Tune in for the Fairview. Signing out.
Little update for all you that are watching and wondering what is happening in the next game. Coming up in six minutes and 15 seconds will be Hartville from Ohio versus the hometown Fairview Falcons. This is an elimination game. Don't go anywhere, folks. You want to watch it.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to you live at the 1030 Losers Bracket game with a lot on the line. It's the hometown Fairview Falcons versus the away team, Hartville. Bryce, thoughts going into this game? Uh, I'm seeing, I haven't seen too much of Hartville, but I've seen Fairview this morning, and they're, from what I hear from the official Kevin the ref, so the Fairview's playing a lot better today. So hopefully they can carry their momentum into this game. I hear Hartville's pretty solid, so they're def Fairview's definitely the underdogs. But, hey, it's their home team. It's a Saturday morning volleyball tournament. Anything could happen. Fairview just knocked off the number one team in the Gospel Haven Flames. They were the uh, number one team in the tournament. Also won last year's tournament. Big win. Let's see if they can carry this momentum over. I do see some fatigue from the Fairview side as Kylie dribbles the ball off of her foot here before she serves. This is Kylie Hoover, the junior player for Fairview. Starting the game off. It's a loser's bracket game, so the score is 4-4. Four four. Serve is over the net to start the game. Gonzalez will get a look at it first, but Olivia Nolt, who is starting the game for the Fairview Falcons, helps out on the defensive side of things there. Shayna knocks it over. Gonzalez puts that one over to Hoover. Kyla Mark, star sophomore hitter from Fairview, bumps that one over. There's Reagan. Reagan Mitchell, the eighth grader from Hartville. Beautiful hit by Kyla Marks, received very nicely by Hartville. Put out and put in. Put over and put down. Hartville scores five to four. Great call there by Kenton Yoder. Right on the line, it was close. He was zoned in, made the right call. It might have even been tipped by Emily. Not sure. Confident Kenton, they call him. Confident Kenton. Confident Kenton. That one served over by Camry Border, a long time. Setter for Hartville. Nice play by the Falcons, and they're going to tie this game up five to five. Number 20 is definitely a girl you want to keep your eye on. A uh, young player, I believe she is a freshman or a sophomore. What is Kyla? Kyla Marks is a uh, sophomore. And Gonzalez puts that one down. That's Marcy Gonzalez. We'll be saying her name a lot here. She's also a sophomore. Number two from Hartville. Players you got to watch here in this tournament is obviously the setter, Camry Border, for Hartville. And she sets up very nicely. Uh, Danielle Miller, along with Marcy Gonzalez there uh, from Hartville. They're going to score here. And the scoreboard is a little confusing. It says Fairview 7, Hartville 5. Um, I believe that's reverse price. That's supposed to be home and away. Yeah, definitely a mistake there by our scorekeeper. Ryan does a great job on the scoreboard. Um, but I think everyone does know the score. Hopefully it makes that correction soon. Six to seven. Hartfield's winning. Miller with a nice hit, and they're going to have trouble stopping her. We got a net call on Fairview, it looks like. And that's going to be the big problem for Fairview defensively is double blocking Danielle Miller. Gonzalez now, the sophomore at the line for Hartville. They're up 8-6. to six. Trying to correct the uh, scoreboard there now. That's Border goes to the Oder Mitchell, which I believe is Lauren Mitchell. No, sorry, Lauren is the eighth grader. That was Reagan. Great defense there by Hartville, but even better defense to get that back from Fairview. Another good look there by Miller as Hartville gives it back to her now. Once again, beautiful hit right at the back there and in front of the line. Nine to six now, Hartville. Going on a little run here. Scoreboard says eight to six, but they're doing some recorrection here. Yes, and they're switching uh, the names as we pointed out earlier. I believe the score is okay. Now they're really recorrecting this here. Give them a moment as our great cousin Ryan figures out the score um, here. Good start here for Hartville. The fatigue I was talking about, Bryce, from Fairview um, is definitely relevant here early. Tell they're just as much spunk in them as the last game. See if they can wake up a little bit. 
Nine to six, Hartville is leading. Gonzalez having a very nice game for them so far. She's still serving and a beautiful serve. And Marks just gets it back over off a bump. Miller gets blocked on that one, try to tap it over. Baby said, not today. Here's Marks. And she gets a nice one to roll for her. There we go. Seven to nine now. Kyla Marks goes to the line. Fair if you want to stay in this game, that's what they got to be doing, feeding Kyla Marks the ball. The star sophomore hitter for the Falcons. As we wait on a, a substitution here. Marks. Nicely served there by Kyla Marks, the star sophomore hitter for the Falcons. Kyla. Kylie Hoover now with a beautiful hit, which makes it a one-point game. Mark's still at the line. Bryce, what are you seeing now from Fairview side of things? Hey, I feel like they're playing well. This is a very solid, heart-built team, very textbook. Gets the ball to their setter almost every time. And they have hitters, and that's hard to defend. But Kylie's been playing well. Had a nice little fadeaway spike there. Just got it over the setter uh, blocker's outreach hand. Hartville went on, is the best offensive team at this tournament, or at least one of them for sure. Right up there with effort on the offensive side of things. Here's Christy Petersheim. She's going to sell that one out of bounds. 10 to 8. Christy can struggle with that. Um, gets a lot of hand behind that ball, but either really good or really bad when she hits the ball. And that time, not so good. 10 to 8. Libero checks in here for Hudville, number 32. Miller with a nice hit, the receive by Kylie Hoover. Leave it back to Kylie. Kylie gets blocked on that one. And that was Mitchell and Border that met her at the net. 11 to 8, Hartville. But you extend this lead in the loser's bracket. This is an elimination game. That's why we started at four. Chrissy. Knocks it back deep. And Chrissy gets a hand on that one. Marks throws her on and hits it. Shana worked that ball over to the other side. Lap into the net it goes. And by the lap. 12 to 8. Hartville pulling away here. Four point lead. This is game one. Shana receives that one. Now, lap over to Hoover. Hoover with a nice hit, and they're going to score off that one. Kylie Hoover having a very nice start to this game here for the Falcons. As that's going to check in Gabby Smooker, number 33, the freshman, I believe, from Fairview. Kylie doing a good job of just finding the hole. She's not just pounding over top of Hartville, but she's finding a hole, getting the ball down, and Hartville's having trouble. She's realizing she can't hit. Uh, over them, so she's hitting around them as Fairview's going to score here once again. 10 to 12. Gabby, the freshman, still serving at the line for the Falcons. Down two. Beautiful serve by the freshman. Border sets up Miller. Gabby hits it over to Chris, who bumps that one across to the red side of the court. Mitchell. Beautiful hit by Mitchell. Sophomore put that one down. 13 to 10. Miller at the line. Hit over by Lydia Barapapa. Blocked by Christy Petersheim. Juggle around, put into the net by Lauren Mitchell, the eighth grader from Hartville. Bryce was seeing a little bit of momentum, but they need a good serve here from Chrissy. A couple of good serves, would you say so? Yeah, Fairview has struggled serving as of late, but has been doing well this morning. Getting the ball over the net, that's all you got to do. That's Mitchell. Olivia Nolte got a hand on that one. Now she's going to get a turn at it. She pushes that ball across. 
Oh, good defense block there by Lady of Barapapa. It's a one point game, Hartville up. Christy Peterson still serving with the Falcons. Puts that one at a wacky spot, but it works. Bear pop up. In, I mean, sorry. That would be a violet lap into the net. 14 to 12. Not a bad look there by Violet. If it would have went over, I think it would have actually dropped in. Just got to be safe with that because every point matters in this game. Seeing a lot of nervousness from her. Um, I believe she will knock that rust off. This is a young Fairview team. People don't realize that they uh, have no seniors in their starting lineup. As a lot of these teams are very young at this tournament. Here's Gonzalez, another young, great player. And that one's hit out of bounds, though. It's a one-point Hartville lead. Fairview's been playing tightly with them, but they can't get over the hump and take the lead. Let's see if they can do that in this position here by Kylie. And that one's a really off serve. She's frustrated at herself. That's going to be 15-13, and that gives Hartville the ball. And that's Camry Border going to the line. Not who you want to see if you're Fairview. Long time setter for Hartville. And has done a great job at her career as a setter for them. Shayna puts that one across now. There's Gonzalez. Beautiful hit by Marcy Gonzalez. And she's going to cash in on that one. Bryce, what did you see from that approach of that beautiful hit? I just saw some good textbook volleyball. I mean, they got the first hit to the setter, and the set was perfect, and she did the rest. Um, great job by Favorite to get up there. Just couldn't get the just couldn't get the block. So, Shayna now bumps this on up to Olivia Nolan, who's had a great uh, Saturday morning here so far. Nice hit there by Mitchell to get it across. Now Kyle Marks is gonna have to scramble for that one. Gets it across. Balls in. Thrown around here. Marks with a good look. Almost cashed in. Emily with an absolute gorgeous play from the back. Gonzalez taps that one over. And that ball just hit around too much with one arm by Fairview. And it's going to drop on their side of things. It's a four-point lead. Porter is still at the line for Hartville. You got to receive this for Fairview. We do not want to go down five here to this Hartfield team this late into the game. Coach Joanna looking a little distraught over here, figuring out what she can do to regain this four-point lead. And that's a start. Wow. What a hit by the star player in Kyla Marks. He's had some trouble breathing earlier in their win against Gospel Haven. But looking like she caught her breath and nailed that one down very nicely. And Border... Sets of Gonzalez. Nothing too much on that one, but got it across there for him. There's Marks. He bumps that one across. Hardville. And that one just went off Jamie Sensen's arms there. Not too much on it. Just bad body positioning, and that one's going to go out. Four-point Hartville lead. And Joanna Martin, Coach Joanna Martin, wants a timeout. She wants to talk things over. Going to be interesting if Hartville comes out of the break here and uh, can serve this one across. We've seen a lot of trouble in this tournament from a whole bunch of teams where timeouts called, server comes out, ice code, and into the net. First, what are you seeing so far uh, from Hartville? Just offensively, you know, not calling Danielle Miller's name as much as we were yesterday, but they're still cashing in on the other players and scoring big. What do you guys say about the other players from Hartville who are playing very nicely tonight? Well, I think Hartfield is doing a great job just spreading the court. I mean, it's not all just one player today. Um, they're spreading it well, great sets, a um, couple nice spikes. And Fairview's defense has been doing well, picking some of them up, not all of them, obviously. But, I mean, Hartfield just looking to close out this game, 18-14. Uh, to 14. Um, I don't know what Coach Joanna is doing right now, but she is really trying to fire up her team. Looks like a little bit of lack of energy from the Fairview side of things. Just came off a big, exhausting run uh, two games ago against the number one seed, the Osprey Haven Flames. That's how Fairview got here, if you're just joining us. 
After this game, we'll give you a little bracket update. What's happening in the day? We got volleyball most of the day. So at least probably 5.30 or 6 o'clock. And that ball's put over. Border. Going to give her team a good luck, but could not cash in. Straight into the net. We just take time to look at that beautiful return there by Emily. I mean, the reaction time was point seconds. I mean, that was insane. She just went lateral and got the ball. There's Olivia Nolt with the serve there. Nice serve by Olivia. We're going to get net here on Hartville, giving Fairview some life now. Down two with a very good server at the line for the Falcons. Joanna Martin trying to fire her team up from the sideline. Fairview faithful over in the nest, pretty fired up, trying to get some chance going to get their team rolling. Here's Miller. Gets blocked. Can Fairview get it across, though, is the real question. And they will. Almost out of bounds, though. Here's Border. She's going to give Miller another look. Jamie Sensen gets hands on that, and Shayna gets it across. Border across that now. Here's Shayna to Kyla Marks. Kyla Marks puts one down, but they receive it. We got net, though. I believe it is on Hartville, and I am correct. 17-18. to 18. Fairview's down one point. Down one, they have rallied back after that timeout call by Coach Joanna Martin. Olivia with another beautiful serve. Here's Miller. What a hit, and that is in. Not even close. What a play by Miller. Two-point lead. Sending Marcy Gonzalez to the line. Miller's still in the front row there with Mitchell. What a deadly combo that is. And Lid Violet Lap just puts that one over. Beautiful spike by the sophomore, making it a one-point Hartville lead with Kyla Marks at the line for the Falcons. Focused in here, trying to give her team the big first W in this match. Kyla doing a great job just putting the team on her back, not only through spiking, but just getting the ball over safely. And here she is at the stripe. At the stripe indeed. And that is a beautiful serve. That's hard to return for Hartville, but they will return it regardless. Here's Shayna to Chrissy, her cousin. That one's going way out of bounds. Not what you wanted if you're Fairview, but you got to just erase that one from your memory and receive this. Serve receive is big for the Falcons. They've been terrible at it all season. Let's see if they can receive this one. Just so put over the net by Hartville. Here's Kylie Hoover. She's going to get a push at it. And she's going to score off of that push. And it's 19 to 20 now. One point lead, but Fairview still has not gotten the lead in a very, very long time, Bryce. They need some consistency here at the serving line. Some rotation confusion by Fairview. The young freshman, Gabby Smoker at the line. Gabby's going to get it across. But it's going to be too much across, out of bounds. 21-19 now, another substitution. Gabby checks back out of the game. Bryce, what do you got to do if you're Fairview here? I mean, they're definitely at a disadvantage with Kyla in the back row. But, I mean, they still got Chrissy up there and Kylie. What? You never know what can happen. Kylie. Kylie having a really good tournament so far, especially really good Saturday. And she hits that one to the back row received here by Hartville. They're looking to get this one across, and they will. Ball's placed right on the money spot, and Chrissy just sends it into the net. 22 to 19. Three point Hartville lead. They could really put this game away, Bryce, at the line here. Yeah, Chrissy just missed time to jump on that one. I mean, if she would have timed it right, who knows what could have happened. Barely put over there by a violent lap. Now she's going to set up Kylie Hoover, who puts that one in the back row. But we see very nice by the libero. That ball's blocked and scored on. It's going to be 2022. And Chrissy Petersheim at the line. She's been struggling this game to see if she can get this ball across. Yeah. 
Gets it across. Hartville juggles it. They're just scrambling now. Hartville, a scary situation if you're a Fairview fan. Oh, didn't score on that one. Here's Hoover now. Kylie Hoover playing very nicely for him on that side of the court. Unbelievable hit. Timeout, Hartville, one point game. Fairview still down. One thing about Kylie Spike, they seem always, Hartville always seems to get a piece of it, but just can't quite block it back over the net, and it seems to drop in. So I don't know if Hartville. I don't know if hands or what, but you're yeah. right, Bryce. I think if Hartville timed their jump a little better, they'd probably get send it backwards. But good, great job by Kylie getting it over the net. And as you said earlier, you know, they're in a big disadvantage with Kyla Marks, their star sophomore hitter in the back row. But let me tell you, Kylie Hoover, the junior, playing very nicely from them when their rotation is opposite. A recent adjustment made by the Falcons that Kylie's in that position and she's been owning it this tournament so far. 21-22. Hardville. People are starting to trickle in more. This gym is getting a little full, a little sellout. But if you're just tuning in, big game. Hartville up 22-21. Fairview looking to come back, take the lead. We'll see what happens. If you're coming to the tournament and you come to the school and the parking is full, which I am sure it is, go down further on Muhlenberg Street. There is parking. Uh, Catholic Church, it will say overflow parking park in there and you want to get here to get a good parking spot and a good seat because the seats are filling up here at this great tournament here in Reading, PA. That one's off Christy Pearson's hands and all of a sudden it's looking a little scary if you're a Fairview fan. 23-21. Hartville taking a commanding lead. And another timeout. They want to talk things over and Mitchell's at the line. Joanna, thinking her team has come this far. No point in turning back now. Down by two. She seems to be very animate in that huddle, trying to fire her team up. Uh, big win earlier against Gospel Haven, and down by two here to Hartville. They're definitely the underdogs, but this is the favorite tournament. They're definitely not giving this game up. At least the coaching staff isn't. 21-23. Fairview fans getting louder. Hartville has Reagan Mitchell, the sophomore, at the line for them serving very nicely so far today. 23-21. Just so gets over the net. And now, wow. I'm not going to call that a lucky play, but it happened at the right place at the right time there for Hartville. And they pushed it like Carlson scored 24-21. That ball sailed out of bounds, and now it is a 22-24 game, and Kylie Hoover's at the line. Earlier, she had a absolutely terrible service. She was frustrated at to see if she gets this one across, and she almost stepped to the line. That was almost going to be out of bounds. Olivia Nolt with a good hustle play at the net. Here's Marcy Gonzalez. She's going to end the game for Hartville. 25-22 is your final score in game one. We're headed to the game two in this loser's bracket game. All the games start 4-4 four four in the loser's bracket. Let's see what adjustments Coach Joanna Martin makes. Not much you can do other than they had a few hits that were nice sets and the players just into the net. Bryce, what else did you see from uh, these two teams, especially on a more positive note for Hartford? What were they doing correctly? Uh, yeah, I think they were just doing what they regularly do and play well. Um, both teams knew that it was crunch time. It's win or go home, and they're both giving their heart. Great game. Looks like we're giving out a little Twinkies here on the sideline. Come on out here to the Fairview Tournament. We'll be here almost all day long. Section down there, place a catch, left hand if you're out there. 
drop it when you can. Okay. My last two Marvel build. This is the 10-30 game if you're joining us. Game two of this match here. After this game, it will be the 11-30 matchup between Solid Rock and Maranatha. That is a uh, win or go home game. At 12-30, we have the game of the undefeated teams in this tournament so far. The Central Cyclones will play against the Effort Legends. Effort oh. playing very nice with this tournament so far. Looking like the team to beat. Let's see if they are as they play in the semifinal game. Winner of the Central Africa game will play in the championship game today, which is scheduled for 4.30. Winner of the Hartfield Falcons game, which we are witnessing right now, will play at 1.30 against the winner of the Solid Rock on Maranatha game, which is happening next. Then the semifinal game in the loser's bracket will be played at 3.30 for the Constellation game at 2.30. So we got a lot of good volleyball coming for you guys. Don't go anywhere, especially right now. Four to four. Fairview trying not to get knocked out of their own tournament and stay alive. Hartville, big story for them in game number one was Marcy Gonzalez. Great hitting from the front row by her. Scary thought is that Danielle Miller didn't necessarily heat up yet. Four to four. This offense from Hartville being very explosive. Looking around where my color commentator Bryce Fox went. I'm not sure where he's at, but I'm sure he'll be back here soon, hopefully. As that ball is put across by Fairview. Nice hit there from the red side of things. Five to four. Hartville takes an early one-point lead, and then Bryce Fox is back in the booth. Cambry Border at the line. Here's Shayna Fox. Set to Kyla Marks. Puts it across for Fairview. Lap to Hoover, playing very nicely in this match so far against Hartville. Lap. Bad spot there by Lap, and his score is going to be 6-4. to four. Bryce, it looks to me like Fairview needs a little rally to give him some momentum and hope. And realization that they can beat this team because they've been playing sloppy so far in the first game and a half that we witnessed. Last game, they messed around early and then went down, and they just couldn't come back. So if they can get these points early, that's big for Fairview being the underdogs. Get points early and also catch a few breaks like they just did um, off that miss hit by Marcy Gonzalez, who has been absolutely lights out the first two games um, in this tournament. Here's Marcy Gonzalez once again, and that one's going to be received. Fairview defending her nicely at the start of this game. And that ball is almost put out. Let's see if Hartville can get it across. And of course they do because that's Camry Border, the longtime setter and player from Hartville. Ball tried to get pushed down there by Kyle Marks, but couldn't. That ball is spun whackingly and it's called a double hit. And now a substitution here. Jamie Sensnick's coming in here for number 23, Kylie Hoover. The defensive superstar from the Falcons, Emily Gaming, in the back row here. The little barrel for them. One of the most important players in this tournament on the defensive side, Emily Gaming. So she gets some action back there. That one's going to be caught out. Good call there by Confident Kenton. One of the best line judges this tournament has probably ever seen, Bryce, let me tell you. Oh, for sure. This guy is confident, collected. And just makes the right call. He's not very like animate or goes crazy like some. He just makes the right call, and that's all you ask. He's not here for the photos. He's here to just get the job done. That's what he's doing. Put across by Olivia. Marcia Gonzalez is going to unload on that one, and that one's going to be in. Good call there. Beautiful hit by Marcia Gonzalez. 
who has been willing this team to victory so far. You know it's a good call when Joanna doesn't react. So <laughs> I have experience from earlier. Made the bad call. Joanna was not happy with good me. Point. Good, good point. Good lady, though. Great aunt. <laughs> Love her to death. Not technically your great aunt. Let's just get that out. <laughs> not technically I said great aunt. She's a great aunt, not a not great right. aunt. <laughs> Seven to eight here. Fairview down one. Olivia Nolan at the line for Fairview Falcons. Olivia serving very nicely. I don't want to jinx her, but she's been playing very nicely at the serving spot for Fairview. Puts this one over. And that one's in. Found the spot. Almost like she tried it. Eight to eight. Very smart player. One of the smartest players on that Fairview has, especially only being a freshman. Fairview having a significantly young team this year, but not showing it too much. I mean, staying cool and collected. Shayna and just height one that time, but we got net on a heart. Nope, they went over the net. And Olivia Knoll's gonna keep getting a chance to whack this thing across. You Hartville fans not very happy with that call. Olivia. Nice spot there by Livy. Ball is just defended nicely, but found its way through the hands of the Fairview defenders and just rolled. On to the round. Nine to nine. We have ourselves a tie ball game and a win or go home game for Fairview. They need to literally win this game or they're knocked out of this tournament. And a nice block there. And this senior came up big there, Danielle Miller. Now, this is where it gets a little dicey uh, for Fairview. You can't let Hardware run away with it and get a lead. And this is that ball is called out. It's like and nine. Chrissy was taking out her frustration on that hit. It was close, but just a little bit out. Getting a little scary here now for Fairview. Violet Lap almost gets blocked, but it rolls into their side of things. Here's Marks, sets that one across. Camry Border gives Danielle Miller a really good look, and she will pass that one in. 12 to 9, and now this is getting urgent. Coach Joanna might just call a timeout here. Although it's only three points, this is a win or go home game. And Fairview's inability to come back recently has been killing them. Here's Lap. Sets up Marks. That's who you want hitting right now. Keep feeding her the ball. 10 to 12, two point lead. That was a perfect placement by Marks. They were a blocking angle, and she went sideline, and she dropped it in there. Beautiful hit. Beautiful hit indeed. 10 to 12. Two-point lead for Hardville. Nice serve by Marks. Now Fairview setting up something offensively. They're going to go to Hoover for something. And that's just going to be simply thrown out of bounds by Kylie Hoover. Didn't realize how close she was to the out-of-bounds line on that side of the court, and she missed that line by about five feet. Here's Danielle Miller. Stars senior for Hartville. Kylie Hoover unloads on that one, and wow, what a hit by Kylie. 13 to 11 is your score. It's a two-point Hartville lead. Can Fairview get a lead now? Let's see. This is their chance. Gabby Smoker, the freshman at the line. And that ball's just simply dropped. Here we go. Fairview down. One point. 13 to 12. Just what you didn't want, serving the net, killing Kirby's momentum. Marcy Gonzalez, who's been killing the Falcons so far, she's back in the game. That's trouble for Coach Joanna. Let's see how, what strategy she uses to defend her on this early Saturday morning game. And now Hartville just built back up the lead that Kirby just chipped away. 
It's like Roadrunner and Coyote. Every time the Coyote gets close, Roadrunner just runs further away. That's what the game's feeling like um, so far. Here's Kylie Hoover, puts that one over. And that's going to be Fairview ball. Violation by Hartville. Chrissy Peterson, the junior from Fairview. Chrissy having a few frustrating plays earlier, but she has uh, recovered very nicely on that serve at least. And wow, 14 to 15, one point game. Chrissy has a chance to grab this lead here. Great job by Olivia, just getting up there and tipping it over. Harfell wasn't expecting it, dropped in. 15-14, if you're just joining us, Hartfield did win the first game. We're in the loser's bracket. This is winner go home for Fairview. Kylie Hoover's going to get a look, and she's going to score. Kylie Hoover has to be the leading scorer for them so far in this game. 15-15, Chrissy Petersheim at the line. Yeah, Kylie just has a way of scoring. I don't know what percentage of her hits that go over drop or just get tipped out, but a high percentage. Very high percentage so far. It's 15-15. Chrissy with a good chance here to give the Falcons a lead. Nice serve there by Chrissy Petersheim. Oh, this is trouble for Fairview. They're gonna get a chance to get it back over though. Chrissy puts it to the back row over to Danielle Miller and Cambry Porter oh. with a smart play that's caught out and Hartville's coach is not very impressed with that, but it's volleyball. I didn't get a good look at that one. And so we're just going to take the line judges word for it. Five ball stuff like that happens. Remember, fans, don't be too hard on the line judges when you're here. They're doing the best they can. 16-16 is the score. Hartville with a chance to build this lead. And a very good server is at the line for Hartville Cambry Border. A smart senior player for Hartville. But she serves that one out of bounds. 17-16. Uncharacteristic serve by Camry Border. Bryce Kylie Hoover at the line. She's been about, I don't know, 50-50 here serving. Let's see what she can give the Falcons at the line. That one is, that's frustrating for Kylie. And she knows it. And she's going to get subbed out here for Jamie Sensnick. And now Shayna Fox is going to check in for Lydia Barapapa. Kylie Lee with the untraditional pop serve there. Um, just didn't get the ball quite. And yeah, just dropped in. She's definitely going to have to work on that in practice. But hey, game's not over yet. Hustle by the Falcons, but that ball, they just put the chairs too close. Shayna Fox runs into it. Could not get her hands under it. Now they're down one. You got to get a stop and a good serve received here if you're fair view. This is the eighth grader at the line, and she'll sail that one out of bounds. Here's Shayna Fox at the line. She's been very consistent early in the year, halfway through the season, started struggling with some serving. Let's see what happens here. 18 18. That ball is also caught out of bounds. 19 18. Fairview lead. Fairview takes the first lead of this series, of this set. Looking to capitalize here, Sheena at the line. Gets that one across. Here's Hardville now. And Miller gets Kitty. met at the net. And now Marks just could not get under it enough. Goes into the net, 19-19. We got ourselves a nail biter, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, if you're Marks, you gotta go up there with two hands and just get that ball over the net. She waited too long, let it drop and it hit the net. Fairview's gotta get a good serve receive here. And Emily was great on the defensive side. Just had a frustrating play. Didn't get low enough for it. 20 to 19. And they are leading. Kyla Marks now to Shayna Fox. is going to bump that one over. Cambry Border sets up Danielle Miller. That's trouble written all over it. And Joanna Martin knows it and calls that timeout. 21-19 is your score. Fairview not looking too bright. As soon as that set goes up to Daniel, Danielle Miller, you know what's happening next. 
um, chalk it up as a point. She has been intense today. Fair view down to here in the huddle. Coach Duena Martin with Tamara Fox, the assistant, trying to spark some life into their team. They need it. Down two. You can't drop a point here, especially two points, or you're in a four-point hole, which is not what you want late in this game against this solid Hartville team. Fairview Falcons down two points with Marcy Gonzalez at the line. Mark has been struggling from the line the past couple serves. Ball is served across and out of bounds. That's Marcy Gonzalez, which gives Olivia Nord, who has served very nicely so far at this tournament, a look to tie this game up. Down 1, 20, 21. This is game two of a winner go home match. Fairview on the ropes here. Late in game two, Kyla Marks gets a chance set up, but they couldn't push it down hard enough. Here's Mitchell, almost got it where she wanted it. Olivia Nolt's going to get that one back now. Gives Hartfield a chance to set it up. There's Mitchell, and that's trouble. 22 to 20. Two-point game. You can't drop this one if you're Fairview. You run a cash out and make it a one point. Got to be aggressive here if you're Kyla. And the set was off, and that's going to be a score for Hardville. Another timeout for Coach Joanna. Coach Martin wants to talk it over. Her team down three now, realizing the seriousness of this game. Every point matters, and the coaching staff is treating it like that. Bryce, if you're fair of you and you serve receive this one, what are you looking for on the offensive side? Are you thinking be aggressive or just be safe? Um, I think you have to be a little bit of both. I mean, for sure, get, you got to get that first hit to your setter, which has, has been a struggle with this good heart of serving. But, I mean, if it's there, don't be afraid to pound it. But also, if it's not there, you're down three. Hartville only got two points to go. you got to get the ball over the net. Number 32 from Hartville at the line. Hargy Noter serves that one across. Shana Fox gives it to Chrissy Peterson. Her cousin who gets that ball across as well. And somehow Fairview keeps it up and gets it over. Great play by the Falcons. And man, Cambry Border does it again. Out thought them on that play. They're down four. Not looking good for the Falcons. Can they come back? Joanna. Trying to spark some energy into a team. Yoder at the line still. The ball's going to go to Christy Petersheim. And that ball is going to go out of bounds. Hartville advances. Your Fairview Falcons are out of the tournament. Good hustle, though, by both teams. Hartville will prevail. Yeah, not much you can say. For Fairview, they gave up a good fight, but the better team won. Shout out to Hartville. Um, solid team. Great. Teamwork. I mean, it wasn't just one player. They all played well. Fairview will go home early. Hartville will advance. Stay tuned on this broadcast. Coming up will be Solid Rock versus Maranatha. That game scheduled for 11:30. Winner of that will play Hartville. Central Ephra at 1230.
Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We got volleyball almost all day. We'll come back shortly.
Welcome back, folks. We have a great game on our hands here this afternoon. The number eight seed Maranatha versus the number seven seed, number seven seed Solid Rock. Um, this should be a, a great game. In your booth today, we have Mitchell Good uh, alongside the Hall of Famer Blake Fox. Our referees today, the longtime vets, Cooper and Kevin, um, great duo. Uh, they always ref a great game. First serve is strong by Solid Rock. Um, something that you're going to see all game and even all tournament is serves. Serves are crucial uh, in tournaments like these. You got to be consistent. Great serve there by Horst. Oh, what placement. One thing about Solid Rock is they always find the line. They are so good at it. Very underrated for that ability. Definitely, definitely agree. Good hustle there from Sensenik, but she just could not get there in time. Jolie with the spike. She puts it down. You're going to see. It's a present. Present. No, present. Present. Sorry there. Pronunciation. You're going to see her all game at that front line, just blocking, spiking. You'll see it all from number 16, Juliana from the Swordsman. Madeline with the set. Over to Amelia. Good set. A good spike by her. Sensenig. Autumn pops it over. Wow. Oh, the placement. Man. The placement by Madeline. It's in oh. Do they call that for solid rock? Yeah. Actually, the ref and the line judge both agree. They both love okay. Okay. It that was that was a great call. Um. Very close call there. I think it was the right one. What Good. Wow. What a set. Sensenic uh, puts the hammer down. Oh, That's too strong. We'll give you a little update on the instant replay if that was a good call or not. We're going to be back in a minute with that. We'll be back uh, soon. Got to check out the Sensenic replay. Yes, that was a good call. Yes, it appears that that ball was indeed in. Uh, Solid Rock now has a two-point lead up against these Eagles. as Juliana puts down another sure. spike. Like we said, she's going to be up at that front the front line there, just tearing up all game. Just feed her the ball. You solid rock, you get in that ball here on that second. Yeah, second couldn't set. couldn't agree more. Well, free play. So there's Juliana again. Oh, what a play by Maranatha. Madeline to Juliana. She just pushes. Oh my word. She is one of a kind, ladies and gentlemen. Horse just cannot control that push from, from Jolie. And that results in a four-point lead by Sod Rock. Uh, Maranatha needs to talk this over. They're going to take a timeout.
Saw Rock will have the ball after this timeout from Maranatha. Oh, what a serve, a placement. Schmidt cannot control that one, uh, that serve. That's going to result in another point uh, for Solid Rock. They're going to now take a five-point lead uh, in this game one of this series. Mitchell, I'm wondering, I bet all the viewers at home are wondering, how many people do you think are in this gym right now? In there this gym? Let's see what you got here. I'm saying 150. 150, I mean, that's no. shooting low. <laughs> you think? I mean, look around. Kids, adults, every age. 150. One edge in 200. There's a lot of people here. It's packed. It's like 300. There's no way. There's no way it's 300. 200. It's probably 150, 200. Um, another good serve there from Solid Rock. And Julie, oh, she puts a hammer down. A good pickup. Pick Force puts it over. Madeline sets over to Amelia. Good hit by her. Oh. Ah. Number one for uh, the Maranath Eagles. Martin, she just puts it right in the net. She's kicking herself after that one. Um, you don't see that a lot from her. Nice serve there. Oh, and gets him with the two. Number one cannot believe the call. Autumn with a nice uh, serve there. Amelia sets over to Julie. Just pumps it over. Forrest. Wow. Oh, it is a She's call met. by Lewis. My word. She's met at the at the net by Julie. Um, you meet her at the net, you're most likely not going to win. Number you, 16 is a sophomore. You heard me right, a sophomore. Did you from really? Solid Rock, number 16. Julie. Juliana. Get used the to one. face because you'll be seeing Wow. 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 That is very surprising. Sophomore, 10th grade. Um, that serves just so out. Good call there from Tyler Fox, uh, one of our line judges today. But yeah, if she's only a sophomore, you're going to have two more years of her. Um, that's scary if you're on another team. That is scary. Madeline's just going to bump this one over. Sentinel, she gets up there and just pushes the ball. Amelia, she's going to push it back over. Good hustle there from Horst. Uh, she just cannot get there in time, and the ball goes spiraling out of bounds. Oh, a nice little tip over there by number 28. Number 25, the trade serve. This might be the momentum that Maranatha needs to get right back in this game, so let's see if they can keep this momentum up. Sentinel there with a good serve. Madeline sets it up. Wow. She was hitting for line there and just so missed that. It would have been nice, but for number 15's height, um, she couldn't really get up there. Side rock sword, and that's Autumn. Um, not as tall as everyone else, but I'll give it to her. She can she can definitely get up and uh, make some great hits. 14 over to Horse. Wow, nice left-hand tip there from her. Uh, Cut oh, this lead down to three. Solid Rock has no idea what just happened as Maranatha went on like an eight-point run there. We'll be back after 50 seconds.
both teams out of the timeout are fired up to get uh, their team going. Both teams are determined to win this matchup as this is an, an elimination game. So uh, the loser will not be able to advance at all. Both of these teams have lost one game, uh, double elimination tournament here. So this can be another point for Todd Rock. Clearly, whatever Solid Rock put and emphasized in that huddle is clearly paying off for them as they go on a two-point run here. How do you think that was a uh, lack of communication? As you see that a lot, a lot of times with teams, um, either there's not enough communication, too much communication, or multiple people are calling for the ball. Um, a lot of times that results in points for the other team. Set there. Oh, another two points. Is that going to be called? Yeah, two. One Todd Rock. Oh, another. Whew. The little things are killing Todd Rock right now. See if they can clean it up at the end of this. That's, the game from that's three two calls in a row. Um, you know, you get, they're better. They're a better team uh, than that. Yeah, for sure. Amelia with a good hit there, and wow! Good hit there from Madeline, and she's going to be serving now. Another great serve from Solid Rock. Amelia to Madeline. Madeline to Julie. And oh she, wow. Oh, my word. Oh, they call a net. Julie just uh, ate that net. She was all over that. Yeah, she um, really was. You don't see that a lot. She's, she's, her approach is, uh, her, usually very well. She um, usually has great awareness of where the net is. And that one's got it. Definitely agree. Lefty puts it over too strong. Nice call there by Tyler Fox. A nice call there by Felix Loveholder. Yeah, Felix Loveholder and Tyler Fox as our line judges today. They're doing a very great job. Today. Yeah, they're they're this afternoon. great line judges. Um, they don't make a lot of mistakes. Uh, you barely ever see another that. dude. Felix Loveholder is all over the calls right now. Good serve there from Solid Rock. The backhand, the back set. Burkholder puts it over. They want to use this one for Maranatha. Good set. Sensenik puts it down. Good pick up there from Saad Rock, though. Oh, a nice push there by number 11. Pretty good volley here. Oh, and net for Saad Rock. Net. Wow. There's just a lot of sloppy mistakes right now from Saad Rock. Maranatha is trying to uh, go on the run like they did last year. Last night against Gospel Haven when they upset them. See if they can do this in this game. Hey. 
tough play there. Sorry, we're having mic issues. See if we can get this figure. Uh, yeah. Testing one, two. Dave, can you hear me? All right, we got this thing back up and running. All right. Game point here. This game one of the three game series, Maranatha, the number eight seed versus the number seven seed, Solid Rock. Amelia, she's just going to push that one over to Horst. Step back up. Horst, wow! Right. My word. Perfect set. Perfect spike. And Horst says, We're not out of this yet. The chemistry is just there right now for Maranatha. Good set there. Sentinel's gonna rush to it. Amelia. Wow. Good hit there from her. Force sends it over to Sentinel. She's gonna hit it over. Oh my word. The placement they can meet. right on the corner. Yes. Like we said before, Slide Rock, they're very underrated in their placement. Um, we see a lot of times they place the ball exactly where the uh the other team cannot get to it. All right, that's it. End of game one. Wow, Maranath is fired up after that first game. Coming out of the half here. They're determined to win this second game. Um, don't forget, loser goes home. Yes. Actually, they don't go home. They have a consolation game. Um, there's actually a consolation game, I think. Maybe not. Maybe not. Um, <laughs> yeah, this the winner of this series, a little prayer time for Maranatha. Love to see that. Locked in coming out of the huddle. Let's see if they can take that into the game. The school is deeply, deeply religious. Um. Force to set 
to uh, start this game two of this series off. Um, Sod Rock took the first one, for those of you just tuning in. And that's a good serve there. Oh, wow, nice good save. hustle. Good hustle there from Solid Rock. Of course, nice set. Reef is going to put it over. That placement was pretty good. Wow, nice serve there from her. Nice serve there by number seven. Oh, what a save by number 12, 18. Autumn with a good hit. Oh, and a good call there by Coop. Like we said, Coop and Kevin, the long time reps, they know what they're doing up there. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, wow, the placement there. The placement was impeccable. Um, they had three blue jerseys in the area and they just dropped it where those three jerseys could not get to. Um, very impressive there. Wow, Julie is just... <laughs> Amelia over to Madeline. Wow, good 10 hit there. Lefty puts it over. I think she's the only lefty in this tournament, if I am correct. Another two. Sod Rock's hoping to clean that up as Marinath is up by three. Number 55 is the only lefty in the tournament. Am I correct by saying that? No. There's another Jamie Sensenig. She's also a left-hand uh, player. I think that's it. Schmidt Save hustles it. over. 55. Autumn puts it over. From North Carolina. Jolie. Oh, oh wow. what a save. What a Madeline puts it back over. 55 to Sensenig. Sensenig puts it over. Madeline, oh, another good. Oh. Nope, you're not going to get away with that one. Coop. Coop, that yeah, Coop, Coop doesn't miss calls. Um, he was right there. Um, that's going to be a net. Oh, good serve there from number 55, the lefty. Jolie. She's going to push. Oh, Horse loses her shoe. Would have been a great play. Storyline, shoe comes off, saves the play and scores, but no. No, they did not get it over the net. Um. That's just a really the story of Maranatha today. Their hustle, um, inconceivable. Um, Diving everywhere, bodies on the floor. Um, we love to see that. I we mean, like, love, love the hustle is, like I said, inconceivable. Inconceivable. Um, it's no team even matches up with them. They their hustles everywhere. You got bodies flying left, right, forward, backwards. Nuts. It's great to see. Tough one there by 25. Good serve there. from saw Rock and Julie's just oh, going to put it right down. Play by number 16. We got presence at the top of the net. Like we said, um, we continue to say this and repeat ourselves, but it's true. Juliana for uh, Saw Rock, number 16. Uh, an, an animal, if I will, if I dare say, an animal. Todd Rock's going on a little bit of a run here, see if they can keep that up. Wow. Her arm is like Julie. two feet above me. Oh, that's going to be she like five hits from Maranatha. You're not allowed to do that. Um, that's not a check to the roll, but that's illegal. Another point for Sod Rock. They're going to take a one-point lead. Um, this game has been back and forth so far. What are your thoughts so far uh, on this game two of this year? You know, I think it's a great game. Two teams that are about the same in skill-wise. They're just playing with heart, and it's you love to see it. You love to see it. I do, I do. Um, coming into this tournament, Maranatha was ranked number eight. Uh, there wasn't high expectations. They came in and knocked. Uh, they beat the number one seed, the biggest upset of the tournament so far. Um, it probably will be the biggest upset of the tournament. 
Uh, that number one seed then was beat again by the Fairview Falcons, the number five seed. Good God, good God. And Gosplay is now out of the tournament. They will be playing a consolation game later today. Um, but Maranatha has just surprised everyone. But yeah, uh, like I was saying, Maranatha has just surprised everyone. Um, Solid Rock, to no surprise, they're they're just good. They have a solid team. They have a, literally a solid team. Solid Rock, solid team. Sorry. Uh, I see what you did there, partner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Horace is just gonna get set it over. Uh, Saw that one coming. Horace gets the two. Um, usually you don't see that from her. She's an excellent setter. Uh, mm. Horace has really been uh, the glue for Maranatha. Horace and Sensenig. 25 and 7 for the, this Maranatha team. Oh my, what a play. The IQ on that play. Something they do not talk about enough is Maranatha, probably average height is about six foot. They are just a big, big team. <laughs> I would agree. Not quite six foot. But they're, they're a big Look, team. Good serve there from Autumn. Um, something I, I I also think that we missed with Maranatha, their IQ in volleyball has, I think, has increased greatly. Because they just know what they're doing now. Um, a few years ago, not hating on any of those teams, oh. but you know, it kind of looked like a little sloppy. They 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 make mistakes, but but they're a solid team. They're not they're not very sloppy. Over here by number eight, I think. Oh, miscommunication by number fourteen and number fifty-five. That was tipped, Tyler Fox. Uh, with the call. Yeah, makes the signal of a. That ball was tipped as it was heading out of bounds. Julia was set to Madeline. Madeline just bumps it over. Oh. There's been a lot of two calls, partner. Um, we've seen several on both sides. I've seen a lot of mistakes uh, from both teams. Um, it's They're not looking like, either team is not looking like themselves. They've had a lot of mistakes, um, a lot of two calls, a lot of net calls, as Julie spikes that one. Um, they're not playing bad, but they just don't look like the normal selves because a lot of times these teams do not make mistakes from what we've seen so far out of this tournament. Sensing. Oh, what a spike. Oh, good call there by Love Holder, dude. Love Holder with another good call. Um calls that one out. A little too strong there from Sensenig as uh Autumn comes out. A nice tip there. Madeline sets up for Amelia. Amelia, what placement there. That would be good. good hustle there from Horst. Back to Amelia. Oh. A nice. Oh, oh. oh that would have been almost an unbelievable save, but cannot come up with it. That was nice. Um, nice hit there from Amelia. She's been solid. She's she's uh, very consistent for the team. Someone that you can always rely on if you're a uh, solid rock swordsman. Juliana, excellent server. Of course, she's going to tip that one over. And that point is going to cut the, the lead down to three as Maranath is climbing their way back into this game. Um, love to see it. 25 right into the net. Just when things were looking north, it turns out. Uh, that's another point for Solid. Solid Rock. Um, scores now 16-12. Good serve there. From number 11, Amelia. Madeline bumps it over. Good set there from Burke Porter. That's going to be oh, out. What a call there by Tyler. So you know what they say. When things are not going right, go left. So I think that's so true for the Maranatha team. If things are not going their way, go the other way. I All right? I couldn't agree more. Um, yeah, you said it. You said it well. Oh, man, what a spike. She might not have much height, but she can jump out of the wazoo. Amelia with a good set. 
Madeline. Oh, man, did you not see that? Denied. She hit it into the net. She, you did not see that a lot. Um, Madeline, uh, when she gets up there, she usually puts the ball down with force. Uh, there, she puts puts force into it, just goes in the net. Wow, Madeline. Oh, too hard. They're not the still staying around. Number 10 with a good serve there uh, for the Maranatha Eagles. Oh, they are just keeping Maranatha around right now. Maranatha is sticking with them. Two uh, things close us out. A lot of mistakes as number 15, Autumn, has just put the ball into the net. Uh, another another point that really should have been a point for Maranatha. Todd Rock is better than this, um, but they're kicking themselves. Oh, right. another oh, one. Oh, man, in frustration, so number 15 up. hits it across the court. You He's see not it. too happy with herself right now. Understandably, as we know, she's a better player than that. Um, just a, a mistake, and you can't blame yourself. Uh, I mean, you can blame yourself, but she knows she's better than that. Eleven, good hit there. The dedication from number eleven to this game uh, is incredible. Her work ethic. Oh my word! What a spy! And Maranath is now rolling. I did not want to jinx him, but they're on a roll right now. Um, Sawrock just continues to make mistake after mistake. I don't think it's a lot their fault. Maranath is just playing like themselves right now. Uh, they're playing very well. Yeah, this is nothing new for the Maranath Eagles. Madeline puts it over to the Eagle side. Oh, back set. Oh. oh. Gets away with one there. That was close. Sure Coop, I think Coop missed that net call. Maybe not. The lefty. Oh, lefty. Oh, we only call her lefty. We don't even know her real name. We just call her lefty. Oh, that was a good spike. Madeline. Oh, oh. that was tough. Uh, solid rock point there. Um, solid rock scores another one. They're now up one. Mad oh, oh man. wow. Those little things are costing Todd Rock in this game. I'm telling you, Maranatha, they're not looking to leave this tournament um, without going farther than what they are now. Nice serve there, number seven, horse. They're going to take advantage of this. Oh, right into the net. As we come down to the wire, Solid Rock up nine, Solid Rock up 19, and Maranatha 18. Should be a fun and close one down to the wire. Oh man, Maranatha just has no answers right now. These last two possessions, Maranatha um, kind of dropped back out of the groove there, but you see Autumn clapping her hands. Telling her team, let's get it back together, you know. Good serve there from Madeline. Autumn set to Sensenik, who's been very excellent. She scores again. The one thing I've noticed about number 25, Sensenik, um, she's humble. After every play that she scores, she's not coming back into the huddle screaming. Um, she's calm, quiet, steady, consistent. Oh, nice call. Oh, wow. And, and that's why they get paid the big bucks. Man. Great call there from Tyler. This is gonna, game's going to be tied up now. Yeah, you would not believe the price of line judges these days. It's The salary is out of this world. Um, weekend hustle, you know. We're still getting paid a lot. Oh, oh good block there the from top. Julie. Autumn just puts it over this time. Madeline, oh, up back. to Julie. She's just going to tip. Oh, Great shit. hustle by Hordes. Autumn puts it back over. Another set here from Madeline. Julie. Oh, blocked oh, by Autumn. Is Autumn is playing excellent right now. They're going to give it back to her. Why not? Good hit there from her. Back to Juliana, maybe? Yep. Oh! oh. And Marinette has a first lead in a long time. Wow. And they caught a timeout. Wow. The Swordsman have to talk this over after an wow. excellent uh, volley there. And Juliana just puts it into the net. Like we said, uh, Juliana will be getting a lot of the sets to her uh, to spike. 
and she's capitalized on most of those opportunities. Now, I don't know if you can hear it, but the gym is in an uproar right now. I mean, so loud. Maranatha the fans is. are on their feet. They're fired up. Yeah, yes. Ready to go. Out of the timeout, Amelia sends it over. Set by Horse to Sensenig. This will be huge. Oh my wow. Lord. The momentum is through the roof. They're oh rolling. My. The Marinette fans are on their feet right now. They're fired up. This gym is in a frenzy. The lefty with a beautiful oh. call. And a good call there by Love Holder. Like we said, Love Holder's been excellent all day. He does not make a lot of mistakes. One of the uh, top line judges in this tournament. Yes. And then, without without cap You also see a lot of Jacob Petersheim. Um, he is exquisitely awesome at line judging. Um, wow, oh, another point. For, oh, yes, wow, yep, yes. I saw that one coming. Uh, Maranatha gets caught. I mean... Maranatha gets another point here, and they're going to take a two-point lead, and they're only two points away from winning this game, the second game out of the three-game series. Um, if they win this, the game will, the third game will only go to 15. Hold on to your socks. This game's going to come down to the wire. Amelia with a... Oh, nice stop there. Hold on to your suspenders. <laughs> Man on with a good set. Juliana puts oh, it. Oh, the placement from that. Juliana. Love wow. All over that court. Wow. Juliana... Like we said, Solid Rock's placement has been on cue it's been, all day. Wow. It's just like, it's speechless. You can't even I, explain it in words how it's You have to come to the tournament. Impeccable. impeccable. Nice set there. Oh. Madam. Oh, a nice set. Oh, oh fascinating. He right Oh! Holy! Holy! Sentinel Schoolpa. <laughs> she's fired it. And she's gonna. Um, that could have been the game changer right there. Literally the game changer. Number 14 gets set to serve. Good serve there from her. Amelia set to Juliana. To Maranatha side. Backhand set to Horst. Amelia. Wow, this oh. game is coming down to the wire, Sorry, folks. Hold no, on to no, your suspenders. No. Hold on to your suspenders. 24 to 23. Uh, this is a win by two, if yes. I'm correct. Yep. So um, if Solid Rock scores here, um, then it's win by two. Yep. Number 25 is definitely making her mark on in this game. Horst, good hit by her. If you're Solid Rock, you need a score here. No little mistakes. Oh, oh it's a free play. Oh, oh they cannot oh, get boy. there. The swordsmen are fired up. Out is still nice now, and we have the Sod Rock fans on their feet. As a timeout, at the Eagles, we'll be back after these messages by our host. Get a word from our sponsors. Uh. All right, we're back to the game after that word from our sponsor. Oh, no way. Wow, that was excellent. 
The Swordsmen have to score this next point, and they will win this game um, and this series. They will be advancing if they score here. Wow. What is happening in the game? Oh, my word. The placement again. Uh, Baron to mounted a comeback, but just could not hold on. What, what do you guys say about that? Um, it was very impressive the way they handled themselves, Hard Rock, uh, not getting discouraged as they were down big. Uh, they came back and worked themselves into that game uh, after winning the first one. They are down in the second, came back. Um, one thing, like I said earlier, I just saw an, a smile on Maranatha's face. Um, they have great uh, team spirit. Um, and to all you listeners out here, we have an Ephrata Central game, probably the best game before the answer this, this game. <laughs> Uh, this is this is going to be an excellent game. Um, you have Ephrata and uh, Central here. Folks, you're going to want to stick around for this one. Um, like we said before, this number three seed effort, a, um, a great solid team as they beat the number one seed and also the number two seed, if I'm correct. Did they beat Gospel Haven? Uh, effort, a, maybe I'm wrong by that. Uh, this is a little game update here. So next up right here, Central effort, a, and then loser that will play Right after, so this is a back-to-back -back game. Would be is going to be the loser of this game against Hartville. Hartville is a very well-rounded team. Very well. They lost Ephrata by a little bit last year, or uh, last week, uh, la yesterday. Sheesh! Wow. Sorry, too early in the morning. That, that was a definitely a great game. One of the best of the tournament so far. That Ephrata Hartville game. Um, we love to see great competition like that. Something I've mentioned before, the warm-ups from these different teams are very interesting. You seem some different, uh, yeah, just some some weird-looking stuff. The, what they're doing right now is obviously not weird-looking, but especially from Hartville, not it's not a bust on them at all, but uh, maybe it works. But you see some interesting warm-up techniques. Um, maybe that's our secret to success because Hartville – it seems like they're good every year. They're in uh, competition for the title of this uh, tournament almost every year. Remember, two years ago, Emma from Harville, she really carried that team last year. Yes, it, we, there was some greats in the past. Emma Miller, um, her younger sister, Elena, Alana. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. They were the, Those two sisters were impeccable, if you will. Um, some of the greatest volleyball players I've seen in a long time. Um, now they have excellent players. Danielle Miller, I do not know if they're related, but number 26, a senior, she's an animal. I'm talking spikes that will knock you, knock your socks off, if you will. Yeah, and Marcia Gonzalez, a sophomore. Marcia Gonzalez, number two. Um, you see a lot of her. Um, she's a sophomore, um, which I still can't comprehend that a sophomore playing at that high of a level. Um, it amazes me. So, this Hartville team is definitely. Uh, great team, but let's take a let's take a quick look to look a, a quick moment, excuse me, to look at this Ephrata team. So Ephrata has Jenna Groff, their lead, um, their main setter, Miranda Martin, Caitlin Newswanger. Caitlin Newswanger has played excellent this whole entire tournament. Uh, you see a lot of her at that at the net, making great plays, uh, a lot of good spikes. Karina Rutt, she's just a solid player. Denisha Wagner. Um, for her height, that's something that still amazes me. Basically, um, all six players for Ephrata are Ephrata legends are just solid all around. They yes. have great hustle. They're picking up the ball everywhere. They are such a good team. Uh, back to Denisha. She's shorter, but she can get up there, and she hits the ball pretty well. She can put some nasty spikes. Uh, 
You have Karina the Lombrero. The Lombrero? I don't know if I'm even saying that right. <laughs> Close enough. Uh, she's an excellent player. Um, Tirza, I think she's another setter. Um, she's just consistent, the definition of consistency. Um, and they also have some, uh, a few other great players. Candice, Candice Fox, you see a lot of her. Um, she's great. Fired up for their zebra cakes as we wait for this next great game to get started. Up in the air. 
Wow. Right. Oh, that's not healthy. That is not healthy. Right before a game? I don't know about that. You only live once, folks. So why not make it the best life you can? Um, if you're sitting at home today, to keep you entertained for the next five minutes, I don't know if I'm going to talk this next five minutes. Maybe you'll get tired of me. Um, but to keep you entertained, um, let me give you a little life lesson. You know, you only live once. You only live once. So what are you doing just being boring? Go out on a limb, take some crazy dares, do some crazy stuff, uh, nothing illegal, uh, nothing ungodly, but do some crazy stuff. You know, have fun. Like, you only live once, especially when you're young. Um, I'm, especially when you're young, you know, that's a lot of times where you'll be having the most fun. No offense to older people, but you know what I mean. Like, you gotta, you got to have some fun. A shout out to Tamara Fox that's listening on the live. My little sis. Big fan, big fan. As we see um, this effort of the team that's undefeated so far. Uh, both of these teams are wow. Both of these teams are undefeated, but um we see them warming up. A lot of talented players on that roster. Um I'm love to see this match up here. Blake, anything to talk about for the next four minutes? We got four minutes. Give us a little quote, inspiration or something. Give us something. All right. Wise words from Blake. All right, all right, all right. Give Blake a second. He's thinking, he's thinking. Here's Blake. All right. As a great and wise Sean Spencer once said, don't take pictures of sights. Take pictures of moments because that is what matters. Wow. Well, very true. Um, I'm thinking about a lot of times people taking pictures uh, of sights. Um, take pictures of moments. Wow, that was inspiration. That's what matters. Um, great Sean Spencer uh, quote there. If you don't know who Sean Spencer is, look him up. And <laughs> you do not have a childhood if you do not know who Sean Spencer is. Look him up. Um, you'll find his. Uh, him very fast. Do not look him up. Never mind. <laughs> You'll find him fascinating. Um, he's a great man, I think. I'm not. I actually don't know, so don't don't hold me hold me accountable to those words. Um, to the 58 people watching at home, um, comment down below. What do you want us to talk about? I don't know. For the next two minutes, I'm kind of kind of bored up here with Blake in the booth. Um, very boring. We need something to talk about. Thanks for all those comments. <laughs> all right. We will uh, just keep it quiet for the next two minutes while no, the no, teams no, warm no, up. No, we won't. No, we won't. I want to talk about something. Okay. Okay. How to pig? Fly. How do pigs fly? Um, I do not know where you've learned that. Uh, what's your name? Les. Lee. Lee. Lee Skerber. Lee Skerber. I don't know if that's your name. If I'm pronouncing it correctly. How do pigs fly? Well, you see, it's simple physics. The pig skin is stretchy enough to uh it makes miniature wings but it's like all around their body so as soon as they take flight i mean they just they just soar like i'm talking they they can fly so that's a very interesting question um simple breakdown physics um simple physics um give us some preseason b-ball talk kenyon weber says give us some preseason uh b-ball talk so our favorite Christian school basketball team has lost a lot of talent uh, the last year. Tyler Fox, one of the best players to ever step on this court. Connor Good, one of the best three-point shooters to ever step on this court. Uh, we lost Shad, Shadrack Lap, great rebounder. Um, Reed Rhodes, aggressive defender, great ball handler. We lost those guys, so that hurt. But we do have a great uh, starting lineup this year, and our practices are going growing uh, great. There's some excellent players. Um, this team starring Blake Fox, who is actually in the booth with me now. Um, Rodney Rhodes, excellent player. Gabe Lab, Dawson Arns. Um, Lewis, Lewis Knoll coming off the bench. Benji, I mean, we have some some talent. 
a lot of people think we have lost um, a lot of talent, which we have, but we're still an excellent team. Uh, that's that's not, not bragging at all. Um, what I'm excited for this year is the competition that we'll be getting because a lot of times, um, because a lot of times last year, um, there wasn't a lot of competition. Um, so this year it'll be interesting to see the competition, um, a lot of close games. So come November 30th to Faith Men and High School, that is going to be our first basketball game. Um, All right, that was a long two minutes. Um, so yeah, enough about basketball. Let's get to this volleyball tournament. I'll introduce um, our our announcing crew today. My name is Blake Fox, and I'm here along here with Mitchell Good, and we have our cameraman Rodney Rhodes, who's a very genuine cameraman, knows what he's doing up there. So great thanks to Rodney Rhodes and Dave Knoll as we get ready to pray here. And here is the. We're getting set here for this undefeated team uh, matchup. Both teams are undefeated, as we've stated before. Coop and Kevin figuring some stuff out here. Central set to serve. First serve, great. Good set there by Tirza. Saloma to Kayleen. Let's talk about Kayleen for a second. Uh, she is six foot, six foot one. She is very tall. Um, she's scary to go up against at that uh, the net. She will win the battle a lot of times. Um, great hitter. Katie with a good hit. Oh, um, miscommunication. I'll get you every time. Miscommunication, as Blake has just stated. Um, we've talked about this a lot of times, a lot of games. Miscommunication also often oftentimes, excuse me, leads to points for the other for the other side. Good set there from Jenna. Caitlin puts it down. Force. Ah. Kayleen there. Puts the ball in the net. Oh, too powerful in that serve. Yeah. She's effort is very consistent with her serves. But that one's just a little too strong. Uh, as Karina Rutz serve goes out of bounds. Kaylin sends it over to Denisha. Up to Kayleen. Oh my wow. god, what a push. She I know lie, she probably got about two feet above that net when that hit. Yes. Her her up to her armpit. Her whole entire arm is above the net, which is incredible. Um, and she just puts it down. 
Uh, I don't know how you stop that. It's really her team. Oh, what a killer. She's very hard to hit against, to play defense against. Saloma with a good hit. Wow. That was edging the line. Great call there from the line judge, Reed Rhodes. Um, the awareness from him is superb. Serve there. Oh my word, we're at a perfect spot. Finds the opening and lands it in. Uh, just like that, that solid rock working team, Central Cyclones. Um, the placement, uh, impeccable. Impeccable. Jenna with a nice set to Caitlin. Oh, it's blocked by Kayleen. Candace, oh, one hand, left hand hit back over. Good hit there from 22. Caitlin again. Oh, nice one. Okay. Jenna dives on the ground. Oh, Great man, hustle there. Just owning this game right now. Here in the early parts. We got a quick timeout by Africa. Try to get things together. We'll be back right after this. Gotta get this serve right out of the timeout. Control of the game plan. Nice return there. A little set over. Nice volley going on right now. Nice set. Oh, and a good call, man. After we got no answers right now. Nice serve there. Oh, finds a perfect spot right on the line. Number 12, Denisha Wagner. <laughs> nice serve. Oh, man. This is what you want to see from Ephrata, finding the spots. It's the only amount of comeback here. Good serve there from. Oh. Never mind. Sorry. Sorry. I we, spoke too soon. I jinxed that. We just assume because she is usually a very consistent. She's, she's consistent. Our um, assuming definitely. The um, definition of consistent, Kate, Caitlin Newswing. Um, but she does put. Wow. Oh, my word. You do not see this often. Two best servers on the court. I don't this know. This is just. That. Two best. I know. Oh, they're excellent servers. Very consistent. They both. Oh, and Candace meets her at the top. Puts it down. Height. Uh, give, really gives her an edge at that front line. Oh, right in, hits it right into the net. Nice serve there. Another free play for Central. See if they can make anything of it. Set up to Candace. Denied. Oh, finds the perfect soft spot and lands it in.
They set it up. Good hit there from her and Santa over to Candace. Here's a back over to Karina. Saved by Kayleen. Saloma puts it over. Out of bounds. Denisha set to serve. She gently throws the ball up into the air. Puts it over the net. Oh, cheers a quick saves that one. Everyone, what a save. Everyone said out. Denisha hustles over and puts it back over. Great play here from Ephrata. As they're suddenly back into this game after only a few possessions. As Karina taps that over and scores again. And just like that, in a blink of an eye, Ephrata's right back. The chance for the legends have started. This effort of team, this effort of fan club is fired up. As they climb their way back in this game. There you go. Jenna over to Karina. Good hit oh, on her. Slide. Picked up nicely by Kayleen. Oh, Candace with a nice. Oh, what a pick up there. Number 17, number 15. Good hit from Candace and a great oh, save there. What from a save. Wow. It's been all hard here early for Central and Ephrata. Oh, oh, nice. Oh. Something that I've noticed early uh, and really this whole entire tournament, um, I just noticed that this game we're decided to talk about. Karina Wright, I think she's a very underrated player and also a hitter because you've seen some powerful spikes from her. Um, she's. Definitely an excellent player. Wow. Candace taps it over, and Central cannot control it. Oh. Candace gets ready to serve. She's one of the few players with the dump serve in this tournament. And it's a very nice, yes. very consistent. She's one of the most consistent servers in this league, I mean, in this tournament. It's Kaylin with the nice spike. Kaylin has been everywhere this tournament. I mean, making plays left and right. South and north. East and west. Up and down. Left and, no wait. <laughs> Candace set to serve again. A nice serve. Saloma bumps it over. Tough call there by Reed, but I think you got it right. The ref agreed with him on that one. Candace is set to serve once more. Oh, and after we just continue to rant about her excellent server, she puts one in the net. I feel like we jinx a lot of people. We got to stop because um, she is very. A great server. Rarely see those mistakes. Yeah. Tears uh, over to Caitlin. Oh, what a spike. She's just a great all around player. Definitely. That's going to be net on Central. Effort on net on, net on Effort? Yes, excuse me. That's going to be net on Effort. That's going to cost them a point. Central is now set to serve. Good serve from her. Jenna sets it up to Caitlin. She set that too far um, front. And Caitlin just had no choice to go after. Had no choice. She had to go after it. Um, She's going to get called for a net there. She's very aggressive, but just a little too aggressive on that play. Good hit there from her. Oh, nice That's going to be out. 
just barely out there. The Chans have once more. Oh, never mind. We just stop now. Um, wow. Caitlin, that placement from Caitlin, uh, just a simple bump, uh, bumps it over and puts it at a perfect spot. Uh, just so on the line there. Great call by the line judge. Good serve there from Karina. Saloma sets it up to the six footer, Kayleen. And it comes back, lands on Central's territory. Another point for effort. If I'm correct, that's going to tie, yes, tie the game up here. 15 to 15, the first game of the three game series. Ah, oh, Kayleen's tap is not strong enough. That's just going to land in there, in the net there. And another point is awarded to Ephrata. A few mistakes here from Central. As you see, the Ephrata coach, Cindy, is fired up. That's what she loves from this volleyball team. Great play from Ephrata. Central needs to talk some stuff over. Um, as a timeout from Jalen. We'll be back in 50 seconds. Out of the timeout, Karina is set to serve here for the effort of Legends. Great serve there from her. Nice set there. Oh. There you go again. Another mistake from Central. Effort has a four point lead. Saloma. Oh my wow. God. Wow. Spike. Great, excellent spike there from Kayleen. Jenna sets to Denisha with an excellent spike. Like I said, for her. For her height, she can really put a nasty spike down. Um, great player. Good serve from Caitlin. Saloma with a hit that is barely in. Great call there from Reed Rose, uh, line judge here today. Still a clap. Comes in from Ephrata. Oh, maybe not. This is a chant. Ephrata is fired up as they have a three-point lead. Make that a two-point lead. As Karina slides and did not get there in time. Ball's going to sail out of bounds. Uh, another point is awarded to Central. Jenna sets the Candice. She hits the ball right into the net. And that was a, only a one-point lead for Ephraim. This is still a game. Um, it's been back and forth all game so far. Good serve there from Kayleen. Denisha, once more. Great hit. Yeah.
Saloma. Nice spike by her as Candace tries to block it. Goes off the side of her hand and lands in effort of, uh, effort of territory. Scoreboard shuts off once more. Oh. Kaylin puts that one in the net. Tirza tries to save it and hits a central play right in the face. Scores 21 to 19. Oh, that's out. Good call there from Reed. Just so out. Scoreboard shuts off once more. Having a lot of scoreboard problems this uh this tournament. Gotta correct the score because it's not right. Should be 21 20 if I am correct. Maybe not. Maybe it is right. The energy in the building is just knocking the scoreboard out, I guess. I mean, off and on, off and on. Scoreboard can't take off this. Okay, 22-20. That is the correct score. 22-21. A little confusion down here on the court. Some confusion of whether the score was 22-20, 22-21, No one knew. All right, I think that sh should be correct. Josh Good saying Central only had 20. But there's a lot of confusion, a lot of opinions here. Cooper coming over to the scoreboard, not looking too happy on it, a little confused. All right. All right, I, we got the score up. 22. Ready, ready to resume. Rumble. Resume play. Rumble. <laughs> ready to rumble. Good serve there from Denisha. As the official score is 22-21. Oh, uh, well. Complications here. Kevin blew his whistle and then said that was my bad. Okay. After a lot of confusion, Denisha is set to serve. Good serve there from her. Candace with an excellent spike. Picked up from Central. Central's going to give it back to Africa. See if they can do something with it here. Candace. Another good spike. Saloma's going to tap that one. And Jenna, what a save from Jenna Groff. Karina. Oh. Ah, that, that set went too far out of bounds as Karina was fading uh, to the sideline near the chairs. He tries to keep that ball, uh, you know, in bounds, send it over to Central's territory, but she just could not get it. Um, so that's going to tie the game up 22 to 22. Caitlin gives it over to Jenna. The setter bumps it over. Oh, oh. save one there. Great save there. From oh, Kate. oh, that could be a crucial play in the outcome of this game. That was going out and she saves it. Like I said, you yeah, don't see a lot of that. You don't see a lot of that from Karina. She's very consistent. Uh, she just puts the ball into the net. I'm out here from Ephra. You want to talk things over. Back from this timeout, 23-22, Central. Nice spot there on the serve. Oh, crucial play there, and everyone's going to tie the game up.
Yes, sir. Good serve there by Candace. Oh, what a spike. Oh, and perfect placement. My word. And it's game point for effort in this very crucial game coming down to the wire here in State's Farm. 24 um, 24. This is. This is on Candace's back right now. We'll see what she can do. Um, the gym quiets. Quiets down and an excellent serve. Saloma sets it up. Tap over. Jenna to Caitlin. Go to hit from her. Saloma just sends it back over. They're begging for a point to effort her. Because they're not using. Oh, what a spike! to end the game, my word. That's right, the best spike I've seen to end the game this tournament. What a way to end that game. That was an excellent spike. Couldn't have asked for a better hit. Uh, the force that was put into that spike. Uh, and, and, and conceivable. We were back in three minutes. Don't go away. There's more after these messages. All right, we're interviewing Jack. Um, he's a he's a diehard um, Ephra fan. What do you think after that that last game? It came down to the wire, and an excellent spike uh, to win that game. Oh, that was a that was a great play. Is your name? What's your name again? Mitchell. Not John, Mitchell. Yeah, that's a good, great great play, Mitchell. Yeah. All right. Uh, as you leave, uh, didn't have much words to say there, but they were priceless. A man of few words, but a man of great, uh, wise words. And as he goes over to the snack stand, uh, needs a little snacky snacky. As you mentioned the snack stand here, we have great snacks. Come by. Let, let me let me read you. Let me let me read this menu for a second. If I, you live in Ohio, it's worth coming down here for these burgers. Yes, come to if, even if you're listening from Ohio. Um, I bet like we can teleport you a burger if we need. To. Yeah. Um. So we have a cheeseburger. Uh, pulled pork sandwich, uh, taco salad, chili, pizza, baked sweet potato, mozzarella sticks, hot dog, french fries, soft pretzel, nacho chips and cheese, ice cream, candy, donuts, coffee, fruit, soda. And the list goes on and on. And it goes on and on and on. That's not even the end of it. We have great food here. Um, come on down to this tournament instead of watching this live stream. Um, and, yeah, we'll see what happens here. And we are back. Game two of the Central Effort game. Coming to you live. This is Blake Fox with Mitchell Good in the studio, in the booth. And exciting game. Exciting game to go to the championship. I mean, couldn't have asked for a better matchup. Effort of the number three seed against Central, the number four seed. I mean, wow. The one, number one seed is eliminated. And number two seed is in the loser bracket. Waiting. I think they're going to play Maranatha actually next. So, or um, Solid Rock. So, We'll see what we got there. Has the first play, and Ephrata scores right off the bat. Next game coming to us is Hartville Solid Rock. That should be a game to the century. You want to be here for that one. That's it for sure. As we get a quick timeout here by Central, and we'll be back to you after these messages. Oh, a great, just because we have some downtime here, Mitchell is going to explain to us a great, if you are bored someday, a great phone game. You can get this game in a lot of uh, the stores. You're like, you know, your app store. Um, Retro Bowl, very highly rated. Um, it's a throwback as this game was created in the 80s. 
but you know it's good it's a it's a excellent game if you ever want to you know have a little downtime and um waste some time as let's get back to volleyball enough about uh retro bowl um jenna groff is here set to serve Kayleen cannot control that uh, serve there from Jenna. She's gonna sail out of bounds. And that throw will take a 2-0 lead. Good serve from Jenna. Wow! Great awareness, awareness there from Kayleen as she just tips it right down uh, on the central side. Jenna with a nice serve. Scoreboard flickering on and off. Good hit from there from Kayleen. Oh, that's a two. Great call there from Kevin. He knows what he's doing. Scoreboard shoots back off again. Wow, we are having major issues. Jenna to Kayleen. Wow! What a great... Wow. Great play there from Kaitlyn. Nice serve there. And uh, we have a little confusion, but we're gonna, it's gonna be an out. Not sure what the call is here. I'm trying to call. Little confusion on the court. Great serve there from Karina. Saloma. Excellent set. Katie, her spike is too strong. That one sails out of bounds. Karina will get set to serve for the third straight time in a row. Great serve from her. Wow. What do you do? There's nothing you can do in that situation. It's just like pray to God that it goes out, basically. Caitlin, she's leaning out of bounds and she makes an excellent hit. Next to the top of the net. Wow! Can we talk about Caitlin right now? She's going on a tear. Here she is again. Great hit. Why not give it back to her again? They can't get it to her as Tirza bumps it over. Kayleen. The oh my word! Wow! What an excellent hit from her. There's nothing you can do. She's probably four, three, four inches taller than anyone out in the court. Oh, for sure. Easily. Besides Candace. Yeah, that's true. Tears are with it. Wow. The setter puts down a beautiful spike there. Rarely do you see that. A, set, a setter putting it in the exact spot on a spike. Yeah, excellent, excellent play. It's Caitlin, who has been terrorizing. Terrorizing Central. Wow. I, I mean, I jinx, I jinx everyone. She's been great. Um, she puts that one in the net. Great hip there from Candace. Central has no answers for this effort of offense. As Tirza is now looking to serve here great serve from her Kayleen puts it over oh that's a two good call I'm not exactly sure who is like uh, I guess it's different rotations but Tears and Jenna are the setters Tears is the one that got called on that too uh, she's an excellent setter you don't see that from her a lot Kay Candace with a nice hit. That was tipped. Sails out of bounds. That's going to be another point for Ephra. They have a four point lead against this, the Cyclones. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, what a diving attempt there. Oh, what a save. And Ephrata is just smothering Central right now, all over the boards. Ah, a little basketball term there. Don't really know any volleyball terms. A good call there by Kevin. Some, 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 some issues. Sorry for that. Had some mic issues there. We're now back. Tirza over to Karina. Saloma sets O. Oh. Sets up Katie, who could not make a play on the ball there. Puts the ball in the net. right now. Jenna is set to serve. Great serve by her. Saloma. Wow. What heads up play there from her. Caitlin with an excellent head. Oh, what a save. The save from Central. You love to see that hustle. That's out. Oh, okay. They say it is in. <laughs> That is called in. That's going to be another point to Central. Good serve there from Jenna. Oh, Kaylin puts it in the net. Like I said, you rarely see that from her. Jenna. Sets to Caitlin. That's going to be too strong. With that, uh, Ephrata's lead is now cut down to eight points. Excuse me, seven. Whoa. Okay, six points. Kayleen. That's out. Good call there from Reed. She just puts a little too uh, too much uh, force on that. The chants are now started for 
effort, huh? Good serve from Karina. Kayleen with a good block there. She's going to get an opportunity to hit. Wow. Wow. Great hit there from Kayleen. Killing the ball right now. We will be taking it as Rodney has just put his input into the game for the first time. <laughs> Uh, if you want to give for a new scoreboard, uh, you could donate to Fairview Christian School. Send a track. Uh, 410 to 615 South 14th Street. Uh, zip code 21. I actually don't know it. Um, 1906. Um, obviously, just a joke. But um, we definitely need a new scoreboard because... Many malfunctions are happening. One nine six oh six. Oh, it's O two for here. One nine six oh two. Kayleen, good hit from her. Karina saves that one. Jenna sets up Denisha. Karina with the hustle play. Candace makes another great hit. Good volley here from these two teams. Candace just. Paps it over. Saloma with a hit. They're making it look easy. Wow. The placement from Tirza. Wow. Jenna to Tirza once more. Good pick up there from Central. Candice, nice hit. Blocked by Kayleen. They're going to have another chance, though. Tears is just going to send this one over. Let's see what Central does with it. Good hit there. Tanisha. Wow, it feels like this volley is 1-1 forever. Candice with another nice hit. Kayleen. Here's a set set to Candace. Oh, little too strong from her. Jenna to Denisha. Kayleen puts it down. Um, she's still playing absolutely great. Saloma sets to Kayleen. Good serve there from Tirza. Candace with a nice hit. Saloma. Central will be awarded the point. Thank you. 
four. Good hit there from Central. Um, they're climbing their way back in this game. Good serve there from Denisha. See what Central does with it. Good save. Tirza to Candace. Wow, what a spike from her. Twenty-two fifteen. Does Central have an answer? Kayleen thought that ball was going out. Just so stays in bounds. Game point here. Candace is set to serve. The effort of fans are on their feet as they could advance the championship right here. Candace with the jump serve. That's out. Central is going to be awarded that point. Saloma with a nice serve. Saloma, I mean, Central cannot make any mistakes. That's out. Saloma with a nice serve there. Tirza to Jenna. That's going to be four hits. Um, I would be very surprised if Central could come back and win this game. They have to be perfect. And they have to score six straight points. Good serve there from Saloma. Wow. Africa are on their feet as they're advancing to the championship of this 14th annual Fairview Christian School Volleyball Tournament. They are now officially in the championship Um Stick around because we're we are excited to see who will be facing them. Um, championship game is scheduled for 4:30. Um, next game we got on our hand, Hartville versus Central. That should be an excellent game. Um, Central is playing back-to-back -back games. Hartville is geared up to play. Um, Central is going to have to play back-to-back -back here, and we'll see what happens. Stick around.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are winding down here, the Fairview Christian School Volleyball Tournament for 2021. Looking forward to our 130 matchup featuring Hartville Christian School from Hartville, Ohio, and Solid Rock Christian School from Berlin, New Jersey. Should be a good one. The winner of this will take on Central Christian School in the semifinal which will determine who gets to play Ephrata Mennonite School in the finals. Championship match scheduled for 4.30. There will be a consolation game following this game. A lot of tight volleyball games this weekend. The gym is full. The crowd is loud. And this match should be no different. Solid Rock with the serve to start the game. Scoreboard says 4-4. Beautiful hit out of the middle by Gonzalez and Hartville. Marcia Gonzalez with the kill out of the middle to put Hartville up by one. Scoreboard starts at 4-4. We play games to 25. Number 17 for Hartville. Cambria border back to serve. That all started with a good serve from Border. Oh. But Solid Rock able to even the match. Nice set. Gonzalez that time not able to capitalize. Although a net. A net violation was called on Solid Rock, giving Hartville the six to five advantage. Eighth grader Lauren Mitchell at the service stripe for Hartville. Impressive to see a youngster like that playing and she delivers with a great serve. Solid Rock not able to handle the serve. An errant pass puts Hartville up by two. Seven to five Hartville in the early going. Lauren Mitchell again from the service stripe. Serves a deep back right corner. They run the middle set. Nice job to get hands on it by Hartville. They push it deep to the back corner. Solid Rock able to get that one. Beautiful, beautiful play out of the middle as she runs the little redirect shot to the line. Pulls Solid Rock within one. Number six, Lydia, I apologize, can't pronounce the last name. Serves it just a little bit too deep. Service error gives Hartville the two-point edge. Number two, Marcia Gonzalez with the serve for Hartville. Nicely done, drops it in there. Solid rock, can't quite handle the serve. Hartville with the nine to six advantage. 
Gonzalez again with the serve. Nicely done. Beautiful pass, though. Nice pass by the back row and solid rock. The push shot to the back deep corner. Hartville able to handle that. But the Aaron set up front, and uh, solid rock able to get a side out. Number 16 back to serve for Solid Rock. Juliana Reese, a sophomore. Right idea, just a little too much on the serve. She pushes it deep. Service air gives Hartville the 10 to 7 lead. Number 32, the libero, Morgan Yoder, the sophomore for Hartville with the serve. Solid Rock sets up the back row for the 10 ball. Nice pass on this side by Hartville. And the same player from Hartville that made the pass, number 26, Danielle Miller, able to put the ball away. Miller, one of the better hitters here at the tournament this weekend. Service error that time from Hartville. Gives the ball back to Solid Rock. Number 11 from Solid Rock, Amelia Ruiz with the serve. Nice serve, beautiful pass. They set the backside to Miller, who's able to put it away. No blockers up on that play, and she makes them pay. So much of the offense, uh, offensive game of volleyball starts with that first pass. The pass was well done. The set was well done, and Miller with the nice kill. She steps back to the serving stripe for Hartville. Nice serve. Pass a little too far. And number 17, Cambria Border, able to put it straight down for Hartville. Hartville starting to widen the lead a little bit. Solid Rock looking to rebound. Miller again with the serve. Double touch called. A double touch called that time on Autumn Bradbury. Hartville with another point. Miller still serving for Hartville. Nice, consistent serve there. Back row with the set. They run the middle hitter, the set to the middle hitter. And number 22, Reagan Mitchell, able to use the cut shot and the hard angle and put it away. Miller again with the serve on a nice little run here for Hartville, and she drops another one in. Tight pass. Setter goes right back over with it. A double touch called there again. Solid Rock calls timeout. Try and settle the momentum down a little bit. Get the ball back. Solid Rock not wanting to dig themselves too deep of a hole at this stage of the game. Eight, nine, ten points. Just a hard deficit to overcome. Hartville breaks the huddle. Number 26, Danielle Miller still serving for Hartville. Another good serve by Miller. A nice pass this time by Solid Rock. Back row player comes up and pushes it deep. Hartville able to play it and set up the middle hitter. Beautiful hit. Nice job by the defense to pick it up. Not able to get any help after that. Hartville up by nine. Miller again with a nice serve. Solid Rock takes it right back over with the first hit. Set up the outside hitter. The set was a little tight. 
And that time, a nice block by number one on solid rock, Madeline Ziegler, a sophomore, able to get up and shut that one down at the net. Number 12 now, Chris, Christina with a beautiful serve. Nicely done, drops it in short on the other side. Hartville not able to handle that one. Solid Rock hoping to add a few more here to their run. Another nice serve. They set the middle hitter, and she can't put it away. Miss hit, out of bounds. Solid Rock doing a good job here of hanging around. Christina with another serve. This time the pass is beautiful. A nice set to the outside. Solid Rock able to pick up that hit. Try to use the short game. Hartville all over that. Nice pass out of the back row here. They set up the middle hitter with the big swing. Nicely dug out of the back row by Hartville. And a double touch called on the setter. Gives Solid Rock another point to pull within four. Good job by Solid Rock here to keep on fighting. Another well, well done serve, well placed. This time the set to the middle hitter. She's able to put a good hit on it, but lands just a couple inches out of bounds. Solid Rock still with the serve. Another good serve by Maria. And too many hits on Hartville. Solid Rock able to close within three, and now Hartville calls the timeout. Solid Rock breaks the huddle after the timeout. Apologize. I think I said the server's name was Maria a couple times. Christina, the freshman, number 12, helping to fuel this rally here for Solid Rock, and she hopes to add another one. Christina, the freshman, with the serve. Another nice serve. A perfect pass this time. They set up the middle hitter. She tries the little dink, but Solid Rock able to pick that up. And the short tip over the top this time works for number 15, Autumn Bradbury, the senior, able to find an open spot on the floor to pull Solid Rock within two. This time, the service error by Christina. She was able to rally, uh, get, a, get about five or six in a row, so good job by her. That run comes to an end. Hartville able to reg regain the service advantage. Number 22, Reagan Mitchell with the serve. Solid Rock able to play it back over the net. They set up the middle hitter. She goes with the short touch. And defense from Solid Rock not able to handle that shot. Harville with their own mini run going right now to stretch the lead back to four. Another nice serve. A little bit of an errant pass. Puts Hartville up by five. Reagan Mitchell again with the serve. Nicely done. Solid Rock plays it back across. Nice pass out of the back row. Porter sets up the middle hitter. Nice job by Solid Rock to get some hands on that ball. Set up their own middle hitter. Who's able to put it away with the kill on the right line. Solid Rock able to cut the lead to four. Looking to make it three here. Number one, Madeline Ziegler with the nice serve. Beautiful pass by the libero for Hartville. Set up the middle hitter. Too many hits. One block is okay. Two blocks, not okay. She gets called for three hits. 
Number 17, Cambria Border with the serve for Hartville. Nicely done, not trying to do too much. Solid Rock not able to make a crisp pass from the back row. Hartville with the six point advantage. Cambria Border, the senior again with the serve. Border, an excellent setter for Hartville. Autumn Bradbury not able to convert from the backside. Tough spot to hit from, had the right idea, couldn't just, couldn't quite push it over the top there. Border looking to close it out for Hartville. 23-16, service error here though, gives a little bit of, little bit of hope to Solid Rock. Bradbury back to serve, the senior for Solid Rock. Nice serve there, beautiful pass. Border with the set to the middle hitter. Gonzalez with a smart play, using able to use the hands of the blocker to her advantage there. Drops it in on the other side. Game possible now for Hartville. Game possible is number four, Lauren Mitchell back to serve. Nicely done, beautiful pass. Setter not a, quite able to come up and play the ball. Gets called for a foot over the line under the net. It wraps up game one for Hartville. We'll be back in a couple minutes with game two of this match. All right, we're back. Just about ready for the start of game two. Hartville looking to close this match out in two games. Solid Rock looking to force a game three.
All right, Cambria Border serves to start the game. Aaron pass in the back row. Gives Hartville the early advantage. Once again, the scoreboard starts at 5-4 to four with games to, games to 21. We start at 4-4, four, four, play into 25. Border with another serve. This time, and Solid Rock able to handle the serve and return it. Set up the middle hitter. A little too much on the hit. Right idea. Drops it a couple inches out of bounds to tie the game at five. Number one for Solid Rock, Madeline Ziegler with the ace. Puts Solid Rock up by one. Ziegler again with the serve. Nice serve by Ziegler there. Pass a little off the mark, but Hartville able to recover. They push it deep and push it too far. Out of bounds in the back. Seven to five, solid rock. Ziegler again, nice serve, but nice recovery by Hartville. They set up the middle. Use a little shot over the top. Hartville able to pick that one up and return it back. They again set up the middle. Same type of hit. This time, Hartville not able to play it. Solid rock going on a little run here to start the game. Hoping to force a deciding game three of this match. Ziegler again at the service stripe. Another nice serve. Beautiful pass this time. Nice set. Oh, nice job in the middle by the blocker for Solid Rock. 16, Juliana Reese, the sophomore. Shuts down Marcio Gonzalez, the sophomore on the other side. Solid Rock off to the fast start in game two. Hartville with the timeout to talk about it. Both teams break the huddle out of this timeout. Hartville looking for a side out to get the ball back. Number one, Madeline Ziegler looking to continue the run for Solid Rock here. Able to string a few points together, looking to add another one. Good consistent serving by Ziegler here. A little bit of miscommunication there from Hartville. Two players playing the ball at once. Didn't quite work out. Ziegler serving again. Another nice, nice job serving back there right now. Set a little too tight. Hartville plays it back over. Hartville with the chance to set it up here. They set Gonzalez out of the middle. She's able to turn. Nice dig in the back row. Front row, though, not able to recover. Good job by Ziegler coming the whole way from her service spot to try and pick that ball up. Couldn't quite do it. Number four, Lauren Mitchell, the eighth grader. Eighth grader with the serve for Hartville. Nicely done on the serve. Too much on the return. Out of bounds point to Hartville. It's again, Lauren Mitchell at the serving stripe. Another nice serve. Solid rock caught staring as a couple players watch that one fall to the floor for an ace Hartville within two it all starts with that first pass solid rock looking to get the ball back here another nice serve this time a nice pass out of the back row strong side hitter able to get a pretty decent hit you rarely see that right there a beautiful set to Miller on the outside no blockers up and she just hits it into the net. One of the best hitters here made a mistake on that one. 
Number 15 here, Autumn Bradbury at the service stripe. And a service error gives a point to Hartville. Marcia Gonzalez, sophomore number two now, serving for Hartville. Beautiful serve. Great spot. That's a tough ball to return. An ace for Hartville. Pulls him within one. Gonzalez again with the serve. A service error this time. Her foot was on the line when she served, which means it's a point side out rewarded to Solid Rock to give them the two point advantage. Haven't seen that, seen that call made a lot this weekend, but the foot was on the line. Blake Fox with the call. Nice pickup by Solid Rock there on that ball. Beautiful pass out of the back row. Border with a good set. And Miller able to find the corner. You drop it in there. Nicely done. It's a great spot. Number 32, Morgan Yoder, the sophomore. Libero for Hartville with the serve. And an errant pass in the back. Errant pass from Solid Rock. Knots this game at 12. We got a brand new ball game, folks. First team to 13 now wins. It's a nice serve. Nicely done in the middle by 22 with the block. Oh, excellent play, though. Nice play by number one, Madeline Ziegler. The set there just a little too tight. Hartville able to take advantage and go up by one. Morgan Yoder serving again. Solid rock with the pass. Ziegler able to return it. Border with the set. Little tight. Good job by Miller, though, to come up and get something on that ball. And she gets the point for Hartville. Two-point edge now for Hartville. Morgan Yoder on the nice little run from the service stripe here. Nice serve again. Border the whole way across to Miller. Miller swings. Solid Rock able to return this ball. Border again across court to Miller. Nice job by number 16, Juliana Reese, to get over and get her hands on that ball. Miller with one more chance. She's able to put it off the hands and out the back. They kept going to Miller there, and she's finally able to put it away. Yoder again with the serve. Tries the front right corner this time. Solid Rock returns the second hit. This time they set up the middle hitter. Hits it off the top of the net. Solid Rock able to return that. Set up their own middle hitter. Nice block in the middle, though. Battle at the net. 22 with a couple chances. Able to roll it over the net and drop it in that front left-hand corner to put Hartville up by four. Sometimes you get the roll, sometimes you don't. That time she did. Solid Rock with the timeout to discuss it. Just about set to return to action here in game two of this match between Hartville and Solid Rock. Hartville currently with the four-point edge. Morgan Yoder, the sophomore with the serve. Oh, that's a great spot. 
Excellent spot for that serve. Tough ball to return. Solid Rock not able to do it. And Hartville now up by five. Yoder this time tries the other side. Solid Rock with a little bit of trouble, but able to return it. Border tries the little trick shot. Couldn't quite make it work. Now they go to Miller with no blockers up. She's able to put it away. Well done. You're playing with fire when the set goes to Miller and you don't have any blockers up. She made him pay that time. Yoder still serving. Solid Rock looking for a side out here. 16, Juliana Reese pushes it deep. Miller with another strong hit. I'm telling you, folks, she can put something on it. Seven-point advantage now for Hartville. Solid Rock able to take, looking for anything to find some momentum here again. They set up Reese who pushes it deep. The libero able there to pick it up, able to pick it up for Hartville. Solid Rock again setting up Reese in the middle. Nice swing. Nice dig by the libero for Hartville. Wow, nice strong hit out of the middle there by number 22. Reagan Mitchell, the sophomore, with the kill. Hartville just playing well right now. See if Solid Rock can do what they did last game, though. Had a big, dug themselves a big hole. Were able to find, kind of dig out of that, but they give up another point now to Hartville. Hartville stretching this lead out to nine. Tough pass out of the back row. Solid Rock able to regain control and set it back across. Border with the set out of the middle. There is a touch in the back row. And Hartville now up by 10. Solid Rock with a timeout here. Looking for a last ditch effort to close this game. All right, both teams break the huddle here. Return to action, Hartville with the 22 to 12 edge. Solid Rock able to play this one back across. Border with a nice set to the out. Wow, that's a great hit by Miller. Excellent hard angle shot by Miller. Hartville, Hartville starting to smell the victory. This time a good pass by Solid Rock. Nobody there in the middle right away to return it. Border with the middle set this time. Nice job that time by Reese to get her hands on that one. Border tries the short shot in the right-hand corner. Not able to drop it in. Solid Rock's return, though, is out of bounds. Game possible now for Hartville. Game possible. Yoder, who has served several points this game with another one. Reese pushes it deep. Yoder there for the pass. Border sets up the middle. Hitting air in the middle there. That time by Reagan Mitchell. Couldn't quite put it back across. Solid Rock finally able to get the ball back. In need of a rally. Reese steps back to the line. Nice serve. Nice pass out of the back row. They sent Miller on the back side. Nice hit, but beautifully dug in the back row by Reese.
Nice job on the volley here by both teams. That's a nice shot. Nice hit there on the backside by number 11 from Solid Rock, Amelia Ruiz. Two blockers up, and she managed to find the hole in the middle. Hartville not able to return that ball. Juliana Reese with another serve. She's going to have to continue to do that to keep them in this. Nice play there by Solid Rock to recover and get that ball back across. The border sets up the middle. And again, number 22, not quite able to convert out of the middle there. Mitchell with a good swing. Just couldn't quite put it across. Reese again with the serve. She's doing a good job here. Got to be consistent here. Nicely done again. Nice serve. Set up the outside. Mitchell again, not quite able to get it across the net. Good job by Solid Rock to go on a little run here at the end of the game. It's not over, folks. It's not over till it's over. A profound statement from the past. Nice spot with that serve. Hartville trouble with the pass. And Solid Rock cuts it to seven. Great job of serving right now by number 16, Juliana Reese. She looks to drop another one in here. Nicely done. Not trying to do too much. Border with the set. She decides to just take it right back across with the second hit. Solid Rock able to set up number 12 on the outside. Christina, the freshman, able to put it away. It's a great spot in the back there. And Hartville calls timeout. Great job by Solid Rock. You like to see a team that's willing to fight to the end and not just roll over, so they're doing a great job. We have ourselves a six-point game. No room for error here for Solid Rock. Is Hartville still game possible? The horn sounds, signaling the return to action here. Juliana Reese, the sophomore, still serving for Solid Rock. No room for error here. Reese again with a nice serve. Miller with the pass. Border goes right back to her. Nicely dug in the front row. Number 11 able to push it back across. And number 22, Mitchell, not quite able to play that ball tight to the net. Solid Rock pulls within five. Reese again with the serve. She got to continue doing what she's doing. And the run comes to an unfortunate end for Solid Rock. You got to tip your cap to them. They fought to the end. Ultimately, the hole was too big to dig out of. Congratulations, Hartville, for moving on. Good job, Solid Rock. Excellent job at this tournament. We'll be back in a few minutes with our next match.
kicked back from the tournament this weekend, him and all the parody of the, of the play, only did one match and went three games. So, uh, he's always stay on schedule. Uh, we've seen some really good play, uh, big upsets, and uh, the only one match is three. So, following this game, we're going to have the uh, Mark Bill Central. We're going to get Central the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, this year. Coaches, if you have your golf star ballots, if you're working on them, tell them out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the J.E. Fox Gymnasium in beautiful downtown Reading. We are kicking off the consolation match in the 14th annual Fairview Christian School Volleyball Invitational. And this is going to give us 10th and 9th place. Not all the lower places are placed out completely, but Mountain View finished eighth, Gospel Heaven seventh, Gospel Haven seventh, Fairview Christian sixth, Maranatha fifth, Solid Rock fourth, one, two, and three to be decided between Central, Hartville, and Ephrata. And this game is seeding ninth and tenth. It's been a, a tournament of parity all the teams are very close in fact we had an eight seed upset a one seed which i think was the first time ever of all the games played this weekend only one set went to three games so it's been a lot of tight competition but not a lot of three game sets this game is the best of three the first Two games are up to 25, but we start at 4-4. So the score is 5-5. This is Schaeferstown and Faith Mennonite. And I would venture to say these are some of the best ninth and 10th grade teams, ninth and 10th seed teams we ever had. As both teams have a lot of skills, more than normal at the ninth and 10th seed. So it's been a good, good tournament. Lots of good competition, lots of good sportsmanship. Three top seeds to be decided. Following this game, there are two games left. Hartville plays Central. The loser gets third. The winner advances to the championship game against Ephrata. Again, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Enjoy the game. We'll keep you updated occasionally, but you can just enjoy the game.
All right, folks, there you have game one of the consolation match between Faith and Schaeferstown goes to Schaeferstown coming in. Faith was the number eight seed. Schaeferstown was the number 10 seed. As we previous, previously said, tournament has had a lot of great competition, a lot of parity. One through eight was actually very close, and we had the first ever upset at the Fairview Invitational where – Number eight, Maranatha defeated number one, Gospel Haven. So we've had a lot of great competition through the day. We don't play out all the final rankings. Nine and ten are being decided here. Mountain View finished in the eighth lot, Gospel Haven in the seventh, Fairview Christian School in the sixth, Maranatha in the fifth, Solid Rock in the fourth. Again, they weren't all played out, the opportunity to play against each other since the main goal is to get a champion, which will be decided in the next two games. Our semi-final match coming up shortly will be Hartville and Central. The winner advances to the championship game, and the loser gets third place. That was game one. This is the loser's black bracket, game two coming up. We start at four and go to 25. Thank you so much for joining us. This timeout is sponsored by Weaver's Carpet and Tile in Lebanon with their top installer, Jimmy Weaver. Shout out to Jimmy Weaver of Weaver's Carpet and Tile. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the game. We'll be back after the second game for more analysis from beautiful downtown Reading.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, coming down the home stretch in our consolation game between Schaeferstown and Faith. Schaeferstown won game one. This is the second game. Locked in a 2020 tie. Great competition. From our 9 and 10 seed, it's been a great game. A lot of close games this weekend. We did only have one game three all weekend, which is shocking in a tournament of such parity as we've had. Where eight knocked off number one, ninth and tenth gave some tight games to higher seeds. It's been a very, very competitive tournament. Faith up 21-20 over Schaeferstown. If they can maintain the lead, we will go to a game three up to 15. This game goes to 25, the cap is 27. 22-20 Faith. Schaeferstown takes a timeout. Open to force a game three in this consolation game. Both teams are playing hard. I'm glad the girls are not looking at it like a consolation game. They're playing hard. They want to win. Level of competition is high and is good for a consolation game. Coming up soon after the end of this game is our semifinal match between Central and Hartville. And the winner advances to the championship game against Ephrata in a winner takes all, though it's a double elimination tournament. Winner takes all in that championship game. Top three teams look very evenly matched. Hartville appears to have some of the I would call the best hitting team in the tournament. Ephrata has the solid defense, covers the floor real well, balances it out. Central, not a lot needs to be said about them. Perennial champions here. I think they've won about nine or ten of the 13 years. They did not win the last two years. I would say going into the final three, they would be considered an underdog, but Central's never out of it till they are done. And I think it could be... Or any of the top three teams I could easily see winning. But at this point, being their undefeated, Ephrata is clearly the slight favorite. Very nice hit. Faith 24, Schaefer's Town 22. Trying to force a game three. Yeah. 
And to game three we go as Faith pulls out a nice, solid win. Again, this game will be up to 15, win by two, cap of 17. Only the second time this tournament that a game three has been forced. Still a nice crowd here in downtown Reading. Enjoyed having a large crowd here. Each time we get a crowd like this in downtown Reading, we usually have some parking issues. Almost had one car towed last night. We ran out and saved the police from towing it. So be careful if you're still on the way. Make sure you park legally. As we'd like to say, your illegally parked cars are good tax revenue for us. Just to review who placed where, there are only two games left today. And that is the semifinal match between Hartville and Central. Winner plays effort in the championship. Ninth and 10th is being decided here between Shakerstown and Faith. Now places eight through four were not completely played out, but how they probably uh, the way the tournament was set up, finished, although they did not necessarily get to play each other. Mountain View would have finished in the eighth spot. Gospel Haven in the seventh spot. Fairview Christian School in the sixth spot. Maranatha in the fifth spot. Solid Rock in the fourth spot. And they are all finished playing. And so this is the consolation game, nine and ten. And then we're just re finishing with the last two games to decide third, second, and first place after the championship game, which is scheduled to begin at 4.30. Stay tuned. We have some all-stars to give out and the awards. This year we have a lot of good hitters. And I think some of the – we had – each team had just, I think, one, at least one, some of them two very good hitters. We've seen some, some good hitting, a lot of good competition. Best of all, a lot of good sportsmanship between the teams. It was a very well-played tournament. Enjoyed by all. Thanks to our producer, Dave Nolt, for making this possible. Dave does sound and videoing. If you ever need any work done, See Dave Nolt, teacher here at Fairview Christian School. Check out his YouTube channel sometime. All right. This is the rubber of the bully game with the consolation match. And this will start at 0-0. Zero, zero. And we'll play to 15, win by two, cap of 17. Thanks for joining us. As we like to say, the J.E. Fox Gymnasium in beautiful downtown Reading. Enjoy the game.
All right, we have a timeout on the floor. Schaeferstown jumps out to the big 6-1 lead. Again, Schaeferstown took game one. Faith bounced back with the game to win. Schaeferstown jumps out 6-1. Reminder, this game is only to 15, win by two, cap of 17. So leads in the game up to 15 are big. Make a big difference. Schaeferstown jumped out quickly, had a couple nice hits. Faith takes the timeout. Join us late. We have two games left. Semifinal coming up. Minutes following this consolation game. It's Hartville squaring off against Central for the opportunity to play Ephrata, who's the only undefeated team in the tournament in the championship game. Schaeferstown just came out on fire, had a lot of nice hits. Seems like they wanted it a little more, and they're going for it. Haven't had a lot of wins in this tournament over the years. Hopefully they can give them a boost of confidence. Schaeferstown coached by Fairview alum, Whitney Petersheim. Feel like they're a little more competitive than they were a few years ago. We will return to play-by-play -play broadcasting for the semifinal and championship game. Fairview Hall of Fame announcer Brendan Martin will be bringing the play-by-play -play along with color commentator, Fairview assistant athletic director Brian Shirk. First year on staff here at Fairview Christian School in the athletic department, doing a great job. They'll be bringing play-by-play -play in the semifinal and championship game coming up immediately following this consolation game. All right, Faith makes a nice little run here. Pulls it back up to 6-8. Volleyball, certainly a game of runs. Schaefer's team came out, got the first swing. Faith got off the mat. Stepped right up and pulled it to a one-point game. I think it's a nice place to take a timeout. I like to take the timeout. When the other team's making the run and you still have the lead. Coach Whitney Petersheim calls a timeout with them up one. I think it's nice when you can call the girls together and say, hey, we are still in the lead. Momentum clearly not on their side. But they are in the lead, 8-7 lead, again, up to 15. So another run by either team could clinch it.
a lot of good enthusiasm in the gym for this consolation game, but fully expect it to be amped up. And it's going to get a lot louder progressively. Which makes for a nice atmosphere. Faith has tied it up, brought it back. Join us late. This is game three of the consolation for ninth and tenth. This game is to 15. Schaeferstown took match one. Faith took match two. This game goes to 15. And as this match has been hard fought, Schaeferstown jumped out early 6 1. Faith made a run, had it tied at eight, and it's been back and forth ever since. Expecting a close finish. Win by two, but the cap is 17. Ref takes one off the head. Looks like he's okay. All right, we got 14-10, game point for Schaeferstown. Again, this is for ninth place, ninth and tenth. And that's it. His faith is called for a net violation. So Schaeferstown takes ninth place. Faith finishes in 10th place. So we have three places to be decided yet. 
Bay finished 10th, Schaeferstown Halls down 9th, Mountain View 8th, Gospel Haven 7th, Fairview Christian School 6th, Maranatha 5th, Solid Rock 4th. Now, a lot of a lot of those places were not completely played out. In other words, the teams did not necessarily get to play each other. But that is where they have been slotted based on where they had their last loss, second loss. This consolation game, this semifinal game coming up, features Effort and Hartville. They both have a loss. Loser is eliminated and finishes in third place. The winner advances to championship game against Effort. Again, we're going to be turning the mic over to our Hall of Fame, Fairview Christian School announcer, Brendan Martin. You hear his voice often. I'm sure you hear it a lot more in the future, along with Assistant Athletic Director Brian Shirk of Fairview Christian School. Game set to be started probably in about 12 o'clock minutes. Thanks for joining us here in beautiful downtown Reading, the J.E. Fox Gymnasium. Enjoy the day. Thank you.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we might have a little break coming up soon. I think we're going to have a little talk here from Mr. Brian Fox. But the game coming up is Hartville, um, the team from Ohio, versus the Central Cyclones, the team from Dover, Delaware. That's coming up in about a few minutes, so stay tuned. And it's going to be a good game. This is the semifinal, and the championship game is scheduled uh, at 4.30. Unless the semifinal goes along, it looks like we'll be uh, running right along in the schedule. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a good one. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I am Brendan Martin, your play-by-play -play announcer, joined here by the Honorable Brian Shirk, the color commentator. Central Cyclones versus Hartville. Brian, quick thoughts on the game here. I, I'm looking forward to a tight match. I think this one's going to go down to the wire. I think we might end up seeing three games between these two, two squads. Um, very evenly matched. A couple good hitters each way. Good setters. Hey, there's a reason those, these two teams are here at the end of the tournament, and uh, should be a should be a good one. Once again, uh, we start the scoreboard off at four to four to start the game. Play to 25. Central with the two-point early advantage. 
Four to six is the score here. Lorianne Yoder with the serve. Wow, nice hit out of the middle there by Gonzalez, but beautifully dug by Central, and they go right back to Gonzalez. Beachy there for the stuff. Central up to a 6-4 lead early. Saloma Mass sets up Beachy. Nicely done by Gonzalez in the middle to get her hands on the middle block. Back Beachy to Gonzalez, the and this side. time, Beachy returns the favor. And someone got net. I believe it was the setter. 17. Was it been playing an outstanding tournament? Yoder on a nice little run here to start the game. Delivers another nice serve. Border sets up Gonzalez. And we got a carry here, Brian. That's a tough call right there. Tough call to make. Lorian Yoder still at the line here. Four to eight is the score. Set. Nicely done. And it's going to be caught out by the line judge. Right Beautiful spot. hit, right idea to go that way. Just a little too much on it and pushed it out of bounds. Lorianne Yoder now with a five-point lead. Serving very nicely for the Cyclones early. Oh. And miscommunication by Hardville costs them. And it's going to be 10 to 4, six-point lead central timeout call Hardville. Border, an usually an incredible setter, kind of pushed that one but between the middle and outside hitters. Kind of no man's land there. No one able to come up with it. Central jumping out to the big early lead. Uncharacteristic mistakes early by Harfield. I'm sure they're going to clean that up. Not a lot of people expecting a 10-4 Central lead this early in the game. Reminder, this is the semifinal. So it is a winner go home game. And also the winner advances to the championship, which is uh, immediately after this one. Obviously still early here, Brendan, but rally point scoring. You never want to dig yourself into that 8 to 10 point hole to start the game. It just makes the deficit so hard to overcome. Really crucial here that Hartville is able to get a side out here shortly. And they can't ice her. Oh, that he can. Sails out of bounds here. 10 to 5. Timeout works to perfection. Service error from Central right out of the break. Puts Hartville off the serving strike. Border with the serve. Exactly who you want at the line to come back here if you're Harville. Can be Border swing very nicely for them this tournament. Nice swing by Maria Miller, but dug nicely in the back row by Hartville. There's Reagan now. Nice to the outside. Smart play by Beachy there to take the short shot in the front corner. It works out for her. Central able to regain the side out. Wilma Byler at the line for central serving to Danielle Miller. Nice pass out of the back the row. Nicely done on the defensive end by Central. Gonzalez catching fire late in this tournament. Let's see if she can continue that as Hartville's going to score here. Kind of a change up on the spike there. Ended up working out. Central not able to dig that one along the line. And we're looking at the eighth grader now for well, Hartville. Lauren Mitchell at the line. Been impressed with her serving this weekend, Brennan. She is consistent back there. She was on that one, especially as good look here for Miller. Can't score on it. Mass the set, and wow, Beachy put oh, it down God. there. Goes right over top of the single blocker in the middle, able to find that back corner. Central maintaining this five to six point edge, six at the moment. Surprising early jump here by Central. Most people expected a little bit of a closer game, myself included. Here's Border over to Miller. Miller in the front now. Nice job to get hands on that by Central's front row. Mast. That's oh. a close call, but Bryce looks like he's right on the money on that call. Excellent shot. Perfectly placed in that back corner. That's a tough ball to get to. Nicely done. Fox Brothers on the lines here calling the game. Nice serve there. Danielle Miller. Miller to regain control and put it back across. Here's Central now. Beachy again. As Martinez gets some hands on it. And Gonzalez, I apologize. Oh, that's a nice, nice block in the middle by Beachy. Wow. She is so good up there at the net. 
definitely pays to have a tall, tall blocker like that in the middle row in the front. She showed it there. Maria Miller with a nice serve there, the freshman. Nicely from run. Central. Now Maria Miller's going to set up Mass. Mass with a nice hit. Whoever gets her hands on it. Gonzalez over nice to kick. Miller. Here's Beachy now. She takes a swing at it. Excellent job of that Central. Beautiful dig in the back row by Lorianne Yoder. Able to set up Beachy who puts it away. And Central looking strong. Very strong, especially on the offensive side of things and serving. Here's Miller. Another nice serve by her. The freshman serving very nicely for the Cyclones. Cheyenne Miller tries the deep shot. Central able to jump on that and send it back over. Order sets up Miller on the outside with the big hit. Nice hit by Miller. Just too much on it. 16 to 6, 10 point lead here. Hartville looking a little uncharacteristic here. hit by Miller there. She's normally very good in that outside. She gets another and chance she gets here. Gets a and good look. It through. Good look. And she catches in on that one, Brian. 7 to 16. What does Hartville need to do on the offensive side to kind of get going? Hey, really critical here. Uh, the, always the key to a good offense is that first pass. A good hit is usually the result of a good pass and a good set before that. Marcy Gonzalez, and that's going to be all central. Tipped out of bounds. Gonzalez usually very solid here at the serving stripe, so Hartville now relying on her to go in a little run here. Wouldn't be surprised if she gets an also the way she's been playing the past couple games especially. Nice serve there. Tough ball to return. Well played by Central. Beachy dumps it in short. That's a tough spot to hit. She did it well. Gets the side out for Central. Substitution here. Mitchell jogs into the game here on the red side of the court. Beachy now at the service right. Nice pass by Mask. Gets a hand on it. Throws it down. Ball's bobbled around. And two hits. It's going back to Central. They still have a 10-point lead late in the game, getting late in the game, 18-8. Yeah, Hartville just having a tough time getting zoned in this game. Wow. I said they got to get her going, though. Just a bit out of bounds in the back row, apparently. Another strong hit, but Miller just not, not finding the court at the moment with those, those powerful hits. Hartville, this point blank period, looks like they're having an off game, and it happens, and... 20 to 8. I don't expect the next game to be this much of a blowout. Very uncharacteristic of this team so far. Let's see what the coach can draw up here. Down 12 now. I am shocked, Brendan. I expected this game to be close the whole way through. Obviously, it's not over, but 12 points, a massive deficit to overcome at this point in the game. Any point in the game, for that matter. Um, every point from here on out is absolutely crucial for Hartville. And on Hartville's side of things, I mean, and it's not just Danielle Miller that hasn't got going. The Mitchell sisters um, haven't been hitting as much as they usually do. Also, Marcia Gonzalez um, hasn't gone off as she has in the past couple games. So let's see if they can get something offensively going, make this game a little bit closer. Yeah, earlier today, Hartville getting contributions from so many other players and uh, just not able to find that same consistency here against Central so far. Beachy again at the service strike. 20 to 8. Oh, and, and another wow. ace. Wow. Beautiful spot there off the serve. 21 to 8 now, turning into a blowout. Here is Beachy's at the line. At this point, Brandon, I believe Hartville just has to look forward to game two and hey, make some adjustments after game one and give it a go again. Coach Schwartz, a trooper, has to be impressed with his squad so far. Lorianne Yoder with that one into the net for Central. Gives the ball back to Hartville with their libero, number 32, Morgan Yoder serving. Master with it. Rolls over the net. They go to Border. Border's going to get a look at it. She's usually the setter. Ball's put over by Central. Now Border's going to set it across. Central read that one. Okay. Central try to take that second hit, use it to their advantage. Number 19, Saloma Masters puts a little much on it and pushes it out of bounds. Let's see what Morgan Yoder can do. She's been having a lot of good serving rallies. Let's see if she can There's catch one another up for one. Hey, mini rally here for Hartville. Three in a row. 
nice to see a team fight like this at the end, even though they're down by so much. Credit them. Let's see what Yoder, if Yoder can keep it rolling here for Hartville. Good, consistent serve. Wow, what a serve by Yoder. Yep. Found the line. That's a good spot back there. Doesn't want to serve it any deeper than that, but able to find an open spot on the floor for that one. And you can see the energy is actually picking up on this side of the court. Another tight pass. A confusing play. What's going to happen on this one, Mass? Nice to the back row. Yoder's going to set her up. Here's Miller now. That's Central well done. scrambling, and they're going on the run here, Brian. Well done Still right there by Hartville. Finding a little momentum here. Beautiful pass by Yoder to start that play. Nice set by Border to Miller, who's able to convert. Currently a four-point rally by Yoder. That's Lorianne Yoder. She's going to hit that one out, and all of a sudden, getting a little interesting. I wonder if Coach Jalen's thinking of calling a timeout here. So 14 21. I'm guessing if we see another point or two, Brendan, we're going to see a timeout. Nice little run by Hartville here. Battle at the net. And that's going to be a violation on Central Brian. What's the call there? I believe they called an attack there. It is an attack. an attack. Yep. Looks like what she's saying. You cannot now. reach over the net and block a set. 15 21. And that's they're continuing. Did we play. get a net? Did we and get a net? Right, as, right like we said, Brendan, we've seen two more points, and Coach Jalen wants to talk about it. And all of a sudden, a 12-point lead has shrunk into a five-point lead. Impressive rally by Yoder and Hartville. Will they have enough to come the whole way back? Only time will tell. I mean, it looks like the team woke up, like we were saying, they were having an off game early, um, just really sloppy, but it looks like they knocked that rest off and have come back with a really – Impressive performance in the second half of this game to see if they can keep it up. Like I said, tip your cap to them. Just at the moment, I said I believe they're going to look forward to game two and start all over. Uh, they showed me what was up. and They went on an impressive run here. Like I said, credit to them. You like to see, you like to see a team fight to the end, even when the, the deficit looks insurmountable. You never know. And they're looking like Harville's firing on all cylinders now. Let's see if they can keep feeding their hitters. Because when those girls get going, it's hard to stop them, especially with a good setter like Cambry Border, who barely misses the spot where she wants that ball to go. Yoder's still at the line. Let's see if she gets iced here. She's coming off a timeout. Nice, nice serve. She shook that one off. Consistent from back there. A chance for Harville to set up another play in the front row. And that's back who you want to set up. Go. That's, that's who you want to set up. That's a beautiful big by Beachy in the back row. They're not able to play the second hit. And Unreal Hartville run. Unreal run. 17 21, four point game. I believe that we're in an eight point rally now by Hartville. Continuing to come back here in the first game of this semifinal match. And they push another one deep. Brendan, this is shocking. Nine points, and it's a three point game. What a run by Hartville. As well as Central was playing at the beginning of this game. It's just the wheels are starting to come up, come off, I should say. Here's Lori again, Yoder, and she's ball. gonna score. They needed that one. Now, if you're them, you want a little rally of, of just a few points to bury this game. You're up four, but feels like momentum is in Hartfield's hands here. Nice shot there by uh, Yoder to get the ball back. The defensive player. In oh that man, that kills right there. Tough, very right. tough. I hate saying this, but it looks like Central's kind of having a little meltdown on the offensive side. Just everything's going wrong for him. Three-point lead, though, still. Miller with the serve. And isn't wow, that, that one goes. She returns the favor. Big break there for the Cyclones. And Saloma Mast, a great server, is at the line. The only senior for Central. Having a great tournament. Nicely done. Miller with the pass. Border now to Mitchell. And that ball is juggled and no serve. Next point of the game, Brennan, is a crucial one. This Hartville is, not wanting to give that 24th point now to Central. For sure the biggest point of this game, 2023. Reagan of, Mitchell at the serving strike here, a sophomore for Hartville. Reagan gets it over. Nice spot. Here's Lorian Yoder to Beachy. Beachy long swing, no jump, throws it over. Yoder. To Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Out of the middle, nice hit by Gonzalez. And we have a two-point game, folks. 
Nobody saw this coming about 10 minutes ago when this game looked like it was out of reach. Unbelievable, and here we were getting bored, and it's a two-point central lead. Two points. If you just join us, Hartville was down 12. They have climbed their way back up the looked like a massive mountain and made it a two-point game. Fascinating to see what Central does out of the timeout here. Even this if Central here. goes on to win this game, I mean, I feel like Carco could possibly be carrying over You're right. that You're momentum right. in the game, too. Absolutely. That's a good point, Brandon. Yep. Something to build off of for sure if they come up short in this one. Brianna Zimmerman, the head coach for Hartville, looking very positive on that side. Both teams breaking the huddle as we look to return to action here. We still have Reagan Mitchell, the sophomore, at the line. Nicely done on the serve. Reaching the pass, they set up Yoder. And there's the wow. eighth grader with a nice hit. She's got a bright future, Brendan. And they go back to her. Porter sets up Gonzalez. Morcia Gonzalez. Oh, well it's, played, though. Well played. And they Central. get it across somehow. Here's Porter to Gonzalez once again. Oh, I never did it again. Nice defense by Central here. Here's he, Mitchell again. Now back to Beachy. Give it to Beachy once again. She's been getting most of their looks on the offensive side of things. Porter to Gonzalez. Gonzalez oh. hits that one out. It's wow. one point now until Central takes us to game two with a chance to send them home. Very impressive sequence on the defensive side by Central. They're able to dig about three or four spikes out of the middle from Gonzalez. Porter sets up Gonzalez. Nice, nice hit again. by Gonzalez, but Beachy just forces it Brendan, down. I think, I think there was a net. Yeah, ball there that was, was something. And that definitely moved. Here's Beachy. Porter now gets it across to Lori Ann Yoder. Oh, this is trouble for Hartville. Oh, oh there's just a tap safe over. shot. Going to Gonzalez in the middle. Blocked by Beachy. 25 21. Nice job, ladies. Impressive fight from Hartville. We're going to game two. Obviously, Central, this is a must win for them if they hope to force a third game. I mean, sorry, Hartville, I should say. Hartville hoping to force a third game. Central looking to sweep it in two. Winner of this semifinal match will face Africa, who is undefeated in this tournament and heavily favored. <laughs> It's going to be a fun, well, rest of this semifinal game, but I can assure you that the championship looks like it could be a thriller as well. Hartville, like we said earlier, off to a rocky start in that first half of the game. Second half really cleaned it up and were firing at all cylinders. To see if they can carry that momentum over that they created in the second half of that match. Brian, we had an exciting game one there. What are you seeing from these two teams in this one? Hey, really, uh, really just looking to see at this point if Hartville can continue to build on that momentum that they were able to find at the end of game one. We'll see if they can carry that over into game two. 
or if Central is able to keep taking taking control from this point. I don't have a strong feeling on who's going to win this game, but I have a sneaking suspicion that it could go into three games here. There is definitely a good possibility. Good possibility. Thanks for joining us here. This is the semifinal game, Hartville versus Central. Hartville being from Hartville, Ohio, hence the name. Central being from Dover, Delaware. This year we had 10 teams in the tournament, four from out of state. We had two Ohio teams. Gustav Haven, I believe, is on the road now. The number one team, Gustav Haven was. They were eliminated earlier by Fairview in Maranatha. For this game, you have Central and Hartville. Just about set to go here for game two, folks. A must-win game for Hartville. The rankings of this team, Central, is the number four seed with Hartville being the number two seed. This is a two versus four. The four won the first one. So let's see how this one goes. Central breaks the huddle, and we're just about ready for the first serve of the game. Hartville starting with the serve. Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a good one. And, Brian, I believe they're supposed to have 4-4 on the scoreboard. Am I correct? I do believe you're right, Brendan. I'm sure they'll get that adjustment made here before we uh, tip things off. Scoreboard was giving us some slight issues earlier in the day, but I, it seems it seems like they've gotten that pretty much figured out. Central losing to Ephra earlier. That's why they're in this game here. Border with the serve to start. Mass to Beachy. Beachy gets it across here. Border to Gonzalez. Ooh, Gonzalez having a lot of good looks. Couldn't get that one. Was to drop in. Yeah, it wasn't sure if uh, the front row touched that ball for Central or not. It doesn't appear like they did. I think they just figured out the scoreboard deal. Border sets up Gonzalez once again. And Gonzalez is going to score this time. Five to five. And Nicely that done. Sends by Mitchell to the line. Nice job on the Gonzalez's part to use that blocker's arms to her advantage there. A lot of pressure here on the eighth grader in a semifinal game. And that one's going to go into the net. Let's see if Central can get this one over. Sent a freshman in the line now for Central. That's number four, Wilma Weiler. Defensive specialist for Hartville checks into the game. Number 32, Morgan Yoder. A little so, yes. bit of an air pass. Nice play by Miller to pick up the change and drop it in on the back line. Good recovery there by Hartville. And we have something going on here. The rest coming down from the stand, adjusting it. Okay. Little referee time out there. Here's Gonzalez wearing number two. He's sophomore from Hartville serving. Nice serve there by Gonzalez. Nice pass though out of the back row. Beachy with the chance, gets denied by the double block. And they call the double hit. Double hit it was, seven to six now. Gonzalez with a really good serve if they partly can find a way to keep her at the serving stripe for a while. Oh, a nice hard serve by Gonzalez. Too hard for Central to handle. Eight to six, two point lead Hartville. There's the momentum we were talking about earlier, Brian. Absolutely. Great spot there in that serve to find the boundary on the right hand side. Brian, are you surprised that we haven't seen too many? Power hits here by Danielle Miller. I am a little bit, both her and Beachy, for the most part, quiet on the offensive end to start this match. I, I am really surprised by that. Hartville getting other contributions. Nine to six. Gonzalez will be very nice to hear for Hartville again. Like, like I said earlier, Brendan, Beachy able to nicely pick up in the back row. The, uh, the only way a good hitter can be effective is to get a good pass and a good set before it gets to them. So both we'll teams Central can do that. a little bit to get it set up. Nine to seven now. Two-point lead Hartville. Subs coming in here. At this point of the day, these two teams have come up through the losing track and starting to tire a little bit. Obviously, Hartville more than Central. Central not having to play quite as many games. 
And the winner of this will definitely probably see some fatigue in the That's championship game. there, but well picked up in the defensive end. Miller sets up number 22 from Central. Burke holder just puts it over. Miller gets set up. That's a great cut uh, shot. Mark's on the line, but he says, I didn't see it. And that ball was in, I believe. Yeah, I, I think that right call was made there. That looked in to me. He singled. I didn't see it. Am I correct there, Brian? I believe that's a play. The line judge signaled he didn't see it. However, there are two officials right now. The second one got a good look at that one. Kevin, rep right on that one. BT gets it over. Border to Miller. Miller wow, puts it head. down. That's a great hit right there by Miller. Electric play by the senior. 11 to 7 is the score. And look who's at the serving line. Great hard angle shot there to beat the double block. Yoder, who went on a massive run in the last game to make it a close one. Here's Miller again. Off the and now and she's down. cooking. Central's got issues. 12 to 7. And I assume, Brian, that. They're thinking feed Danielle Miller the ball because she's on now. Literally, we just got done talking about the fact that her and Beachy have been quiet offensively, but that has all changed in the last minute as, as Miller has gotten the chance to put a couple of balls away. Now just some miscommunication from Central, and Hartville stretches their lead out to six points. Perfect situation here for Hartville. You have who you want serving in Yoder, and you have Miller in the front row. Nice pass there to begin this sequence. Beachy settles for the safe shot. To Miller once again. That's almost Nicely three straight in the back row by Yoder. And a double hit called. Now we're the dig there by Yoder. Now we're seeing a blow out the other direction. 14 to seven. Seven point lead Hartville. It's been a fun semifinal. Continue to keep this live stream on as the championship game will be following this. I assume that there'll be a little break in between to give the winner of this game a little rest. It'll be around 4.30 to start a championship game if everything goes as planned here. If you're central here, you badly want to win this in two just to give, save your legs a little bit more for that championship match. You're going you're gonna to need it all. So every extra game you have to play at this point in the tournament is so critical. You see in, uh, especially from this side of the court, because you can see the bench here, a lot of heavy breathing going on here by the starters. You definitely see some fatigue showing. These teams had to work their way through the loser's bracket, so that's very understandable. Having said that, Brennan, nothing quite like a winner-take-all game, Not so who mind knows? It. It'll be fun if this game goes to three. Let's see if it does. Yoder at the line still for Hartville. Yoder been so good back here. Let's see if she can do it again. Nice serve. Crowder Pass a little bit off the there. mark. And Hartville, a little miscommunication, but they get it across. Beachy with Beachy. a chance. Oh, beautiful look. You can't give a girl like that that nice of a look and not expect a point. What a weapon out of the middle she is. I like the fact that... I've seen a lot of middle hitters get set at the same height this weekend as the outside hitters, and I don't understand it. If I was coaching, I think I'd get that set in the middle just to be a little quicker. Here's Yoder, Lori, and to Miller. There Miller it is. to About Beachy. That height. About that height. That was nice. Let's see if Central can get Beachy going here. Miller a little too much on that one. Goes over the block, but not able to find the corner. Mitchell. Now Border hits it across. And what's the call here? Okay, what, what happened here? The ref thought the setter was playing from the back row. She called a back row hit. However, the setter right now is playing in the front row, so she called a reserve. If you're setting from the back row, you cannot jump and hit the ball over the net. The ref thought that's what had happened, but she wasn't aware that the setter was actually in the front row rotation at this point. Miller gets blocked, but they receive it and go back over across with it. And Beachy sends that one out of bounds. That's a great shot by Beachy. Just a little too much on it. The corner was wide open. Just couldn't drop it in there. Can't score on every hit. 15 to 9. Hartville has Danielle Miller at the line. Yeah. 
Danielle. Nice, easy serve by Miller. Push it outside to Saloma Mass, who pushes it a little too deep. Just a hair over the line here. Miller's still serving. Now she's working with a nice lead here. To this point, Brennan Hartville able to carry over that momentum they found at the end of game one, and they drop an ace in the back again. Beautiful serve there by Miller, 17 to nine. She looks zoned in here, up big. Critical for Central to find something here at the end of game two. Henry Porter just turned to Miller, said one point at a time. Very good point there. Porter with the hit this time. Beachy able to get some hands on it in the middle. Her nice second hit of the game. She they give it another one, but miscommunication. And that ball's going back to Beachy. Let's see if she does a few jump serves here. Nice shot by Sensen to get the ball back. It doesn't matter how you do it, even if it's more of a mistake on the other team's part. Here's Cambry Border. Now she hits it across. And oh. it hits her in the head. And that's going to be Hartville now 18 to 10. Brian, it looks like we could see a game three here. It's looking like that's possible. Definitely possible. Here's Mitchell at the line. The sophomore wearing number 22. Nice gets serve, it across. Man. Beautiful serve. And Central just lost control of the ball at 19 to 10, nine point lead. That floater type serve that barely clears the net, one of the toughest balls to get a good pass on. Fun game to watch so far. Does it again, nicely done. This time, nice pass by Central. Lori Yang gets it across. Nice shot. Good reaction. Mass says bye bye. Ball hits that one out. Mass says, why use three hits when you can only use one? And she puts it away. Exactly. 19 to 11, eight-point lead here. Central is not totally out of it yet, but if they want to win this, they're going to have to make a run, and they're going to have to make a run now. Nice Sir. serve. Porter. Porter sets up the middle to Gonzalez. Nice done by Central. <laughs> oh, that looks like net to me, Brian. Shaking, but no call. Here's Miller to Mask. Mask going deep with it. Too deep indeed. 22-11. Now Cambry Border heads to the serving spot. Hartford Hartford. able to put Central in the same spot that they were put in in game one. We'll see how Central responds. Off the hands there, Central. Samantha Burkler getting a lot of Tough ball passed her way. Couldn't control that one. 21 to 11 in the score. And the border still at the line for Hartville. Really good response by Hartville here in game two. Great idea. Just, again, just seen a bunch of these shots this game, Brendan, where Beeson hits just a little too much on him. Can't quite find the find the court. Whatever feeling Hartville had earlier, whether it was fatigue or just rust, they have knocked it off and played very nicely and after about halfway through the first game. 22 to 12. Number 19, Saloma Mass with the serve. Gonzalez with a big kill out of the middle for Hartville. 23 to 12 is our score, Brian. Hartville, two points away from making this a very interesting game three here. Eighth grader Lauren Mitchell looking to score the last two points and force a game three. A and service there gives life to Central. Lori Ann Yoder at the line, the freshman from Central. Nice serve by Yoder. An opportunity here for Miller on the outside. Good dig in the back. Well done by Lorianne Yoder. Beachy put it to the cross. Mass back to Beachy. Oh, that's nice a great hit. shot. That's where you want to go in this situation if you're central. Beachy able to take advantage. Add a point for central. Taylor Beachy with a nice hit there. Yoder again with a good serve. Porter goes backside this time. Number too 19, much. strong swing, but a little too much on it. Pushes it out the back. Central able to go on a mini run here. 
23-15, just score Central's down. Hartville just trying to end this game and save as much energy as possible. Good job by Miller just to get up and get something on that ball. Set was a little tight. Well done on her part just to get up and do something with it. Gonzalez looking to close it out. Game possible for Hartville. Gonzalez with the serve. A nice hard pass. Serve. Bucci into the net, and that's going to be it for game two, ladies and gentlemen, which means we'll be coming to you in a few minutes with game three. Reminder, the winner of this game plays Ephrata Legends in the championship at 4.30. It's been a fun tournament so far. A lot of upsets. A lot of good athletic young players making their mark on this tournament. Hartville showing us why they have one of the best offenses in this tournament and why are they are the number two seeded team in this tournament. Can't ask for more than this in the semifinal, Brendan. We're going three games, buddy. Third game, obviously rally points, but only to 15. So a, a fast start, just absolutely critical in game three. I would expect the gym to get a little louder in here for game three. People are starting to realize how big of a game this is. Central having lost pretty decisively earlier to Ephra in the semifinal, the undefeated game earlier. We've seen both teams now jump out to early leads in opposite games. It all comes down to this. Everybody obviously has, they, they have their game plan. It all comes down to who's able to execute better. Referee giving a final pep talk to the line judges over there. Make sure they eat their carrots. I could expect some pressure getting put on the Fox boys who are line judging. Um, if there's some few close calls here. Sure, she's just giving them a little rundown of what to expect. A few reminders. Captains are meeting here with the ref, Kevin Shriver, at half court. We have about 45 seconds until the horn goes off and we start this game three. Both coaches going over final adjustments. Making sure they got their I's dotted and their T's crossed. Ryan, what was Central doing in the first game that they got it off to such an early lead? Or was that more um, you know, a little sloppy play on Hartfield's half? Or was it a yeah, little bit of know, both? I, I would say, Brendan, I think you hit, it, hit the nail on the head there at the end. I think it was a little bit of both. Uh, I think uh, just some uh, un uncommon mistakes from Hartville. Not used to seeing those. Central got to give credit to them. And in game two, the roles kind of reversed. Central was with the team playing a little bit sloppy. Hartville able to execute a little bit better on the offensive end. And, hey, that's why we're staring at a game three. Should be a good one. Zero, zero is our score because this one is going to 15. Both teams break the huddle. Central going to start this game at the service strike. Number 15 for Central. Lorianne Yoder, I believe. That is correct. Lorianne heads to the line for Central. The freshman. Buckle up, folks. Hang on for the ride. Got to be a wild one, ladies and gentlemen. Central Hartville, game three of this semifinal match. And the defensive specialist number 32 checks in for Hartville. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Lorianne Yoder kicking this game off. Here we go, Brandon. First nice serve, serve is a nice one. Border sets up Gonzalez. Nice touch, but good job by number 17 on Central in the front corner to pick up that ball. Back to oh, Mitchell. Wide open. Impressive shot by the eighth grader there, Brendan. Lauren Mitchell. Open spot. 
gives Hartville the early one-point advantage. Game three, it looks like we start at 0-0, only playing the 15. Camby Boyder at the line, the longtime setter for Hartville, the senior. A little bit of an air pass. Nice recovery, though, by Central. Not quite able to push the third rough, the third hit over from the back row. Hartville with the early two-point edge. Two to zero. Camry Border still serving for Hartville. That first pass, so critical in volleyball. Central not able to execute well on that one. Nice serve there. Better this time. Beachy with the chance. Wow, what a dude. by Miller in the back row. Beachy, Beachy again. again. Into the and net it goes. Chalk that one up to some good defensive play by Miller. 3-0 run by Hartville. Critical for Central to respond right here and get the ball back. Hartville fans getting into it now. Intensity def definitely ratcheting up a notch here in game three, Brendan. Server Aaron seems Cassidy have been again. a little wild here for Central. Let's see if they can clean that up. They're going to need to if they want to win this game. That ball soared out of bounds. It looks like it. Decent shot there again by the eighth grader. Fortunately, a little too much on it. And Wilma Byler, the freshman, wearing number four for Central, serving. Nice serve there. Beautifully done. Drops it in about seven feet on the other side of the net. Back row defensive player not quite able to get up there and make that pass. Central within one. Nice play there by Wilma. Wilma serving again. Here she is. Nice serve. Border. Order goes backside. Good adjustment by Gonzalez to get that ball back over. Central with a chance here. We got ourselves a good volley. We've got a little volley going here. Let's see how it ends. Here's Beachy with a chance to end the volley. And that's she a, will. That's a great job by Gonzalez to get hands in that ball. Just kind of let down by the defense in the back row. Not able to pick up that second hit. Looks like Hartfield throws there for some reason. Scores 3-3 three to three now Central. Nice response here by Central yes, after sir. dropping into an early early deficit. 3-0 run. Both teams are on a 3-0 run. And now Hartville has the lead again, 4-3. It's a close one, Brian. Here we go. That's a good, good effort on the defensive side by Beachy. Had her hands up, got a piece of it, not able to recover and make the play. Mitchell. Nice serve by Mitchell. Here's Mast to Beachy. Beachy gets oh, it to roll. The friendly roll off the top of the net. You never know. Sometimes you get the roll. Sometimes you don't. That time she did. What a nail biter as Miller goes to the line. Four to four. We're in the semifinal match here. We got a game to 11 now, folks. Border with it. Hits it across. Chance for Central to set up the play. And, and they Beachy do indeed. Home. Well run out of the middle there by Beachy. Beautiful play. By Beachy. Just how you draw it up on the offensive side of your central. Keep that set to the middle, hit her low, and let her go to work. Mariah Miller gets that one across. Nice serve there by wow. the freshman. Impressive set. Beautiful there hit, but they received it very nicely. Yep. Mass gets it across. Border. This could be trouble for Central. Oh, gets blocked by Beachy, by Beachy up in the trees. Nice job to get hands on that by Hartville. Beachy just dominating at the net on the defensive end. Oh, and now she gets right blocked on. by Gonzalez. Five to five is your score. Huge play there by Gonzalez to get the ball back for Hartville. Back and forth we go, ladies and gentlemen. Marcy Gonzalez at the line, wearing number two. The sophomore who has played outstanding in this tournament is serving currently. Nice serve. Good set. Mass nice with a hit. good hit. That's well done. Beautiful set. The pass wasn't right on the money. The setter did a good job to adjust and still get the ball where it needed to be for that outside hitter to put it away. The senior, Saloma Mass, the only senior on that team, leaving her mark as she scores there. It's 6-5. to five. Beachy's at the line for the Cyclones. She oh. just so gets it to roll. 7-5 to five now is Central in the lead. Beachy best friends with that net right now. Beachy hits it across now. Mitchell first to dig that one. And the ball wow. will be Hartville. Point six to seven now. 
set too tight. Central not quite able to play it, though, on their side of the net. If Hartville ever has a chance to pull away, it's now a Toretta line here. Number 32. Nice pass by Beachy. I, I was expecting to hear the whistle there, Brendan. Let's see if Hartville can go on a little run here, Brian. We know this girl can serve. Double hit there by Central ties the game at seven. Seven to seven is your score. Another nice serve by Yoder. Nice pass out of the back row. Sets up the outside. Lorian oh, and nobody wow. Nobody goes for it on Hartville's defensive side. The ball was in by about a foot, eight to seven. I'm sure they're going to have to shake that one off if they want to win this game. Number 22, the freshman, Samantha Burkhoder, is currently serving for Central. They have a one point lead now. The game is to 15. That ball is served out of bounds by Samantha Burkhoder. Now it's eight to eight. Danielle Miller. We'll be serving for Hartville. One point game, Brendan. Coming down to the wire just as we expected it might. Danielle gets it across. Mass the first one to get arms on it. And that's going into the net. That's a good job by the, the uh, number 22 on Hartville there. She knew the ball wasn't coming back over, but sometimes jumping like that can just throw the, throw the concentration of the girl on the other side off. It worked that time. Central looking to respond here. Everyone on the edge of their seats. Miller. Lorianne, oh. she gets met at the net. Hey, ref says there was a touch. Play continues. They get it across. Now, Border the chance to set up something offensive. They give it to the eighth grader. Wow. And what a play. He calls it in. Tough call to make for the line, Judge. First looked like he was going to go up with it and then quick threw the flag down and set it in. And brother Bryce on the other end is smirking. Miller at the back row now for Hartville at the serving strike. 10 to 8. And, and that ball's in. Blake having a few hard calls back there. Doing the best he can. It's a three-point lead. Timeout called by Central. Thanks for joining us. This is the semifinal game. The game's going to 15. Hartville four points away from playing effort in the next game. Crucial for Central to come out of this timeout and get the ball back. You don't want to go down four at this stage of the game. Big matchup in the semifinal here. Good effort on both sides of the floor. Has been a thrilling tournament to watch. A fun one to announce. We have another good game coming up right after this one. Let's see how this exciting match ends up. The horn sounds and we're ready to get back to action. Danielle Miller again at the serving strike for Hartville. Starts with his first pass for Central. Game is win by two, but it's capped at 17. Nicely done. Perfect pass to the front row. Lorianne. A little short shot by the Central. It almost worked. Hartville able to dig that. Got to limit your errors here if you're Central. Almost a call there. Oh, and that ball's a nice offense by Hartville. That's and just a good swing out of the middle there, Brendan. Not much you can do about that if you're central. Victory looking a lot more possible now for Hartville after a scary first game for them. And into the net, that one is served by Danielle Miller. Gives Central a little chance to build a little run and to make this game closer. Masked at the line. The brilliant senior. Normally good from the serving strike. In need of a rally, she goes with the safe serve. Not a bad idea. At this point in the game, you can't afford a mistake from back there. And it pays off. Hartville with the hit out of bounds in the back. Game's not over yet, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere. Saloma Mass is serving down two. Scores 12 to 10. I totally agree with the underhand serve. The safe route at this point. And a, a and carry. We got a carry. Uncharacteristic Just mistake. what Central needed to do here. Mast down only one point now. They're going on a little run with her serving. She just continues to save serving, Brian, as you suggested. Here's Mitchell. 
Lorianne Yoder. That's a good roll, and it works to perfection. Found the spot. Nicely done. Ties the game. Timeout now, Hartville. Here we go. 4 0 run Cyclones. Three points, and we'll be seeing a winner. This game goes to 15 if it is. It's also win by two, but the game gets capped at 17. First point out of this timeout is huge. Brennan, we'll see which way it goes. And Sloan will get it across and inbound. Once again, you might say, why is she going to the underhand serve? Well, at this point, yeah, she, she just wants to make sure she puts it in play. Giving Hart for the pressure of just making a play, and they simply couldn't respond. 12 to 12 is your score. Saloma Mass still at the line for the Cyclones. Native of Dover, Delaware, making the trip up here, playing in this great tournament here. Impressive to see the fight shown by both these teams. Both these teams coming back from deficit deficits at times. Central with the serve out of the timeout. Mass goes to the overhand serve now. That was a little scary if you were a central fan. Very close to that net. Oh, it barely goes and over. And Lorian Yoder has two hits. It barely goes over, and Hartville takes the 13-12 to 12 lead. It seemed to hang up on top of the net for a minute. Reagan Mitchell serving here for Hartville. Deep breath at the server's line. Here we go. Mitchell with a nice serve, nice pass. Miller gets it across. That that ball with Kevin calls it out. Not a bad idea. Just couldn't find the court. And game possible now for Hartville. 14 to 12. Hartville leading Central not out of it yet. Quick timeout called by Coach Jalen as it should have been. Game possible as Brian Shirk just said here for Hartville. Central just has to take a deep breath here. Just do what you've been doing all year. Make that first pass. Make that Hartville good set. breaks huddle. Central soon to follow. Reagan Mitchell still at the line. Game possible for Miss Reagan Mitchell. Reagan with the serve that gets across BG. Wow, that's game. We have a winner, folks. Hartville advances to face Ephrata in the championship game. Congratulations to Central for a job well done. That was a great match. Exciting match there by both teams. Well played by both groups of young ladies. And Hartville versus the Afro Legends. Coming up in a few minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us here on this beautiful day down here in Reading, Pennsylvania on this Saturday afternoon. Shout out to all the fathers who are watching this in their dear stands. We appreciate it. Five minutes is put up on the clock. I believe that it will be a longer warm-up time. We might have some mic time here by Mr. Brian Fox. We'll be coming to you live in a little bit, ladies and gentlemen. Hang in there. We got a championship game to get to. Hartville versus the Africa Legends. See you in a few.
Four minutes left until warm-ups are going to end, and then we'll have a little break in the action as uh, I think the Fairview seniors will get recognized, and Mr. Brian Fox and crew will sing a song. So four minutes hanging there, ladies and gentlemen. I expect about 15 minutes till game time. We're going to have a fun one here. Effort up playing Hartville. Don't go anywhere. Just a reminder, if you cannot hear the commentary or if the score goes weird, please comment below. We'll be sure and try our best to fix any technical difficulties that we could be um, experiencing coming up in this game. Uh, crowd noise will definitely play a factor here as we are sitting directly next to the F the fan section. And I'm sure that they will be wanting to cheer on their squad as they should. But if you cannot hear... Um, the words that are coming out of our mouths, please comment below and we'll try to fix that.
part of this game and match. We're going to do a, a little something special. It was such a hit last year, and we're going to do it again this year. We have a whole man to the thing before we, uh, before we have our our uh, championship game, and I'm going to throw it again for uh, you. So uh, I'm going to go first of all, the boys, Josh Good. <laughs> And then Weston will be the you know, Kenny there for Weston Ball for last year as well. There he is, Tanya, one of your other Matthew. Okay. 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 For the student section, we can tell you for the student section. I'm going to play a student on here, the Honorable Gable Lack. Yeah! Gable Lack. I'm going to do it. We've seen you answer another kind of mind. Yeah, we're all Okay, I have a nomination here. I'm going to give you the name that I just received. I'm out here. I'm out here. Where's he going? Ohio. Ohio, okay. I'm out here. Ohio.
Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Hartville Christian School from Ohio facing up against Africa Legends from Africa. Brian, we got an exciting game. What can you tell me about these two teams and what to expect? Hey, Brendan, there's a reason they're both here at the end. Probably the most two, the two most consistent teams throughout this tournament. We're going to do our best, Brendan and I, to uh, speak up, speak up loud because it is going to be loud. The gym is packed. And arguably, maybe other than the home team Fairview fans, uh, a lot of Ephra fans, a lot of Central fans here. Ephra only being a half hour away. They have brought their, looks like their whole school here to cheer them on. In this championship game, Ephra never having won a Fairview Christian School Tournament championship. So let's see if they can do it here today. Hardville having won it two years ago. Couldn't come last year due to some COVID issues. But they're here and in the championship game. Hardville making a big run up the loser's bracket here. Going to be interesting to see how much they have left in the tank to give Ephrata a challenge here at the end. Hardville being the two seed, Ephrata being the three. Jenna Groff at the line for the Legends, and she kicks this game off. Nice serve by Jenna, who's done so much damage there the entire tournament. Gonzalez, the first swing out of the middle, nicely dug in the back row by Groff. Here's Mitchell now. Mitchell gets blocked by a new swinger. Groff sets up a new swinger. There's Courtney, new swinger. Cami Porter, good volley right out of the gate here. After the so defensively sound, able to find the spot and take the early 1-0 lead. 1-0, Ephra takes the early lead. Jenna Groff serving. Been a sensational player for them. Nice floater serve there. Good pass out of the back row though. Border. Oh, the eighth grader with the cut shot across the court finds an opening. Beautiful play there by Lauren Ray. Lauren Mitchell in front of Now Camry Border is serving for Hartville. All knotted up early. Candace Fox, the one that received that one. Now it's going over to Hartville. Camry Border sets up Gonzalez. That's a good swing off the top of the hands of Newswinger there in the middle and out the back. Hartville, Hartville responds with a little two point run of their own here. Two to one, Camry Border is serving after looking for a good first pass. And Jim goes quiet and a little bit of a misplay in the back. Karina Zimmerman. Karina absolutely uh, normally a really incredible passer. She does so well back there as a defensive specialist for Ephraim. Couldn't quite play that one. Borders still at the line. Nice pass by Candace Fox. Newswinger out of the middle. Good hit, but nice, nicely dug in the back row and returned by Hartville. Marina Rutt on that time from Ephra. Jenna nice Groff going here to Martin. And we got a call here of some sort. It looks like, yep, two hits. Double hit. Three to two. Effort able to get the ball back. Karina Rudd at the serving strike. That's a good spot for that serve. 
There's Gonzalez. Harville able to recover and play it back across. Set up New Swinger in the middle. Courtney New Swinger. You want to give her too many hits inside there if you're Hardville. Denisha Wanger gets it across. Now here's Border to Gonzalez. And she uses the hands again to her advantage. Good effort by Newswanger as the middle blocker couldn't quite shut it down. Gonzalez playing with a lot of power in her serves and her swings in the front row. Hang off there, four to two. Hartville off to an early lead. Although it's only two points, you really want to build on this if you're Hartville and get off to an early run. Lauren Mitchell, a good serve. Effort able to set it up. Wait, that was Deja Wanger with a nice hit. Outside to go to Miller. Nicely done by Newswanger. Excellent pickup on the defensive end. Ball stays alive. Here's Miller. Just gets it across. Tries to find the weak spot of the defense. But after a Reddit, another quick call here. Um, net. I think they called a net violation, I believe. Officials right on that one. Five to two. Hartville is leading with Mitchell. Effort of having to sit a few games here before playing the championship. Perhaps right now benefiting Hartville that they're fresh. I mean, that, sorry, that they're all warmed up, ready to go. Oh, nice shot nice there. Hit wow. there. After they caught a little flat footed defensively, Hartville out to the early four point advantage. But I've watched enough this weekend to know that. I would expect effort to make a run at some sort of some sort in this game. Hartville, a great offensive team. Effort of being really good on offense, but also an incredible defensive nice job team. by Newswanger to get something on it. Get the side out for effort up. Six to three now. This is Karina Zimmerman at the line, wearing white for effort up. Go to the defensive specialist in the back here. For Hartville, she's going to receive that one. Beautiful pass by Yoder to Miller. Nice job by Candace Fox to get hands on that one. Candace gets it over. Here's Border going right back to Gonzalez, where she's been going most of the game. Groff. Nice shot. Winger. That's a tough, tough hit to make. Denisha over to Jenna. Back to Denisha Groff. Oh, they managed to keep it alive. Denisha Wanger got that one across. Here we go. Here's Jenna. Over to Martin. Nice shot. Effort is so scrappy on the defensive end. Effort is setting something up. They, nope, they just get it across. Gonzalez nice couldn't load on this one. No, I see net and it is call. Net called on the effort of gives Hardville the seven to three advantage. And Gonzalez goes to the line. She served great in the last match. Let's see how she does in this championship match here against Effort. She's dealing with a four point lead. Serve tight first pass. Nice adjustment made. Cannons just misplaced the ball in her hand there and went straight into that. Eight to three now. Some uncharacteristic mistakes for Ephrata here in the early going, but I expect them to get that figured out eventually. If uh, they continue this run, I would not be shocked if Coach Fox calls a quick timeout here just to settle down a little bit. Here's Wanger. That's a beautiful good hit by Danusha Wanger. Excellent spot there, Brendan. Two blockers up, and she finds that spot in the back left corner. Tears of Martin serving for the effort of legends. They're down four in this game one. This is best of three. Game one so critical in a best of three match. Zimmerman. Miller able to. Oh, Zimmerman. she gets called for the net violation. She looked guilty right when she touched it. Looked at the official and he knew it's eight to five now. Big point for effort there. Tears of Martin still at the line, wearing number seven, the junior from Ephrata. Nice pass there. There's Miller. Good That's job by, by Fox. Candace. Good job. Fox playing good D in the front. She's going to try to block That's that one. Can't get it. Well dug in the back row. Excellent dig by Tears of Martin. The set Mitchell. is tight. Candace shuts that one down. She Candace gets another. And gets, gets blocked by Miller. A battle of Excellent the tall girls in the front row. row. And Eckman not able to convert. What a battle at the net there, Brendan. An exciting battle at the net between two great players here in Candace Fox and Danielle Miller. That's going to be a fun matchup. Looks like one-on-one -on -one volleyball. They're at the net. Here's Yoder. 
Serves it across to Zimmerman. Martin. Consistent from the straight back there. Jenna Got gets a spot. swing and scores. Excellent spot there by Jenna Groft. It's a great spot to go to. Nine to six. Harville Wanger at the line. Nice short serve, but Hartville able to pick it up. Miller gets it across. Looks like if I could set something up here. Run. Karina Rutt Rutt. A good shot there by Karina Root. Nice yep. job with the little two-hand push. Not trying to do too much with it. Effort of fighting back and making it a close one. Nine to seven now. Another good beautiful action. ace there. By Wanger, timeout called Hartville. Denisha Wanger with some clutch serves for Ephra, the senior, able to come up clutch. One point lead, Hartville. Ephra seems to be settling in a little bit after a slow start. A fun one to watch so far. Best of three. Games go to 25, third one goes to 15. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday afternoon. Great matchup between two great teams. Hartville being an incredible offensive team against a defensive powerhouse in Africa Legends. So many good players from both sides of this net here tonight. After the fans starting to get excited as their team mounts a little bit of a comeback here. Trying to get some energy going and in here. See if Wenger can keep it going from the service line. That's a good spot. And they got a scramble, but oh, they won't get it over. Four hits there by Hardville. Gives a tie ball game into Denise Wenger's hands and a chance to take the lead 10 to 9. Momentum definitely swinging back to effort here at the mid midpoint of this game. Wanger into the net now, 10 to 9 Hardville. Danielle Miller heads to the serving spot for Hardville. Good serve by Miller. Nice set in the middle. Good swing by Candace. Hardville able to dig it. Martin outside the root. Who finds, Rutt the, finds the, the spot. Incredible hit there by Rod. Fox is serving here for Ephrata. 10 to 10 is the score. Candace looks like she's going with the jump serve here. She does it well. That's a good one. Beautiful jump serve by Candace Fox. An ace for Candace Fox gives effort of their what no might be the first lead of the game since the one to nothing early advantage. Super impressive serve there by Fox. Trying to replicate it here. Well done again. Rolls over the net. Good job by Hartville. New swinger recover. hits it across to Yoder. Hartville gets it across. No Candace in the back row. Drives for that one. Nice set in the middle. 22 not quite able to put it away. Oh, and the, the upright is hit by Ephrata, nodding the game at 11. Last few games have been fun to watch. This one, no different here. 11 to 11 with Mitchell at the line for Hardville. Nice floater serve, passed well in the back row. Gonzalez sets up Mitchell. Close to a carry there. The ref decides not to blow the whistle. New Here's swinger, Medetonet. Gonzalez shuts it down. Border. Pass across court. Oh, wow. Mitchell just. I don't know what happened there. I don't think she does either. The score's 11 to 12, though, Ephrata. Is serving. Yep. Occasionally, you wish you could have one back. That was one of those moments. Jenna Groff serves that one across. Courtney nice Newswanger pushes New Swanger. it. Nice recovery on the defensive end by Hartville. Excellent dig in the back. 
New Swinger having a good game there for the Legends, and she scores on that one. Timeout is being called now by Hardville. They're down two. Coach Zimmerman wants to talk about it. Effort has shocked a little bit right out of the gates in this one. Has responded quickly. Hardville now on the defensive end. After looking a little rusty, you can tell they haven't played for a while, and then they shook that right off. Now they're up two again. Got to limit your mistakes against Ephra if you're Hartville, just because they're so sound um, everywhere on the court, basically. That's Ephra. Defensively, just so scrappy. They pick up a lot of loose balls that other teams just wouldn't be able to pick up. You got to give them credit. They cover the floor well. An athletic defensive team is Ephra, and they're up too. Really solid in all phases of the game. Hartville, though, giving them a good match right out of the gate. We'll see how this one finishes up. It's going to be a lot of fun if Hartville can get their offensive cylinders firing to go up against this effort of defense. After this rotation the entire way around as Groff gets her second chance at the serving strike. Close to a double hit there. Marcy Gonzalez gets the call. New swing right into the net. New Zwanger, very reliable there in the middle. Couldn't quite get that one back across. Cambry Border at the line. It's 12 to 13. Hartfield's only down one point. This is the championship game. Game one. Nice smooth serve. They go backside to Root. And we, we got a net. net violation. On number two, that would be Marcy Gonzalez from Hartville. So. Ball rolls across to the effort side of things. Two point lead as Rutt approaches to serve this one. And we got a call of some a, sort. We got an out of out of rotation. On Hartville, I believe. And the illegal rotation is still mixing it up here. I'm not sure was a point awarded there, Brendan, or is that I just don't a warning? Think so she just blew her wrist. Uh, no, but point is awarded 15-12. Yeah, I, I thought so. Out of rotation is always a point side out. And the ref caught him there. Now what you want if you're Hartville, but you gotta just adjust and excellent recovery there by scoring. Hartville to keep this volley alive. Marcy Gonzalez sets her up, they get it across. Effort again, so quick on the defensive end. Here's Border to Gonzalez. Nice cut shot there. Excellent. Took a little bit off of it. Nice job by Gonzalez there to get the side out for Hartville. Hartville chipping away at this effort lead. Lauren Mitchell to serve for Hartville. Nice serve by the eighth grader. Afrida. Nice shot. Denisha Wanger having a great game. Big hole in the middle of the floor there on the defensive end for Hartville. And uh, Ephrata able to exploit it to take the three-point advantage. Zimmerman at the line for the Legends. Border sets up Danielle Miller. Good job defensively. Effort to play that ball off the net. Back. Well, nope, Gonzalez gets yeah, met by Candace Fox. And she pushes it down the score. Net violation on 21, though. A net violation. And they call it back. Incredible play. Incredible play by Candace Fox. Just touched, touched the net in the process. 14-16, Ephra only up two now. Gonzalez. Nice serve. Her foot was dangerously close to the serving line. Quarter to Miller. Nice hit by Miller. And we got a net, net violation on Candace. Again, Candace gets nailed for the net. She's a great blocker up there. She just had to step back a tiny bit away from that net. 15 to 16 now. Ephra's lead cut down to one. 
Another good serve by Gonzalez. Drops the ace in there to tie the game at 16. Afra yells out, but no, it somehow drops on the line, 16-16. Brand new ball game, folks. Once again, play into 25, win by two. Cap, 27. Right pass there. Effort not able to play that one. 17-16. Now Hartfield has the lead for the first time in a long yeah, time. I thought we might see this. Brendan, Coach Cindy chooses to use the timeout right here. Probably a wise move. Time to just calm them down. Hartville Ants being able to put together a little run here. Ephra only down one. Coach Cindy just realized they have the lead and don't want them to build it. Great game so far by these two teams fighting very hard for this championship. Hartville having won it the last time they were at this tournament, which was two years ago. Gospel Haven being the defending champions. Knocked out earlier. Ephra hungry for their first ever volleyball championship here at this tournament. Let's see if they get it. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We got game two coming up after this one. Once again, Brendan, this stage of the day, all those extra games that Hartville has played, interesting to see how much is left in the tank as we go down the stretch. Gonzalez again to serve. If anyone should That's be tired, it's serve. Gonzalez, but she's showing no signs of fatigue there. Getting a lot of plays in the middle. Been serving a lot. Playing great, though, for Hartville late in this game. With Miller now in the front row, Effort looking to put this first ball away. That's a good pass to start things off. Middle set, good redirection by Candace, but Hartville right there. Miller good pushes it. Good recovery in the back row. Tears of Martin just couldn't push it high enough to get it over the net. Excellent dig in the back row by Karina. Front row just not able to pick it up and return it. Now Gonzalez taking the girls on a little run here, 19-16. But oh, was almost on the line. Serve. Just flirting with that ever so dangerously with that service line. Miller with the big hit for the kill. Hartville going on a run. 20 to 16. Brian, do you take another timeout if they score here? I, I would consider it. I really would, Brendan. Yes. Would not surprise me if they do. Here's Gonzalez. Stays away from the line this time. Groff sets up Winger. Oh, and that started, ball. It started that time with a tight pass. Pass Paul. a little bit too tight for the net, tight to the net. Difficult for the server to handle. I mean the setter to handle. And she just rolled it out of bounds. Tight rope walk that one, the ball did. And it's 21-16. Jenna Groff sets nice up Candace pass. Fox. Oh, that's and it's a good in. Shot. That's an excellent shot. That's a great spot to hit. Defense pulls up a little bit. You drop it right in the back corner. It's Only not about a four-point game. It. Not about how hard you hit it. It's where you hit it. Excellent spot to find. Tears of Martin at the line for the Legends now. Nicely passed. Bordered to Miller. Miller couldn't get it across. Yep. No touch on the other, other side by after there. 21 to 18, three point game. Now, Effort is making a comeback now. Good serve. Got nice placement there by Martin. Oh, excellent middle set with the backwards pass off the. Good spot. Ranger. Good recovery, though. Good volley going here. You're going to Fox. She's just going to set it across. Fox oh, on that. She hits the net. That oh, has Brendan. not been her friend this game. And you can see the frustration on her face here. 22-18. Critical point right here. If Ephrata wants to come back in this thing, now is the time. Chanton Yor. Fans starting to throw garbage on the board <laughs> here. <laughs> Confident Kenton slips in his pocket there. Yoder with the serve for Hartville. And well, that was nice some set. Excellent job by Groff to get up there and push it through. Miller pushes it nice across. Nice dig in the back row by Karina Root. Fox gets it over. Here's Border to Miller. This could be fun. Oh, nice spot Miller there. There to pick it up. It was a soft shot, but it found the floor. 
23-18, Sydney Fox calls a timeout for Ephrata. Five-point lead for Hartville. This game has been going back and forth, and it looked like right when he thought Ephrata was going to pull away with it, Hartville came back. Right when he thought Hartville was going to pull away with it, Ephrata came back. It's going to come down to the wire. It's a five-point game now. Ryan, what does Ephrata have to do to kind of get back in this one and maybe even win it? Hey, I can't point my finger at exactly what's going on right now at the F on the F the side. Just not not fluid right now on the offensive end for sure. Not fluid, and credit Hardville for picking a lot of stuff up on the defensive end. It seems uh, after was able to exploit a couple open areas on the floor early. Since then, they've they've really been they've been picking things up pretty well. So, really good match here in the championship championship here uh, Saturday afternoon at the Fairview Invitational. Not many places these girls would rather be than right now in that championship game. Big time for their high school volleyball careers, 23-18. Yoder gets it across. Set to the middle. Candice hits block. Gets Effort able to recover and play it back over, though. Miller. Miller. Oh, wow. Beautiful hit by Miller. Wow, what a shot. And four hits caught on after a game possible for Hartville. They're close to capturing game one of this championship series. Good, good effort to return that ball. It's a good dig in the back row, but just a tough ball to handle on a spike like that. Nice pass here by effort to begin this series. We're going to have a chance here to score, Brian. And this oh, communication. Can they get across? They no. Effort with new life here. In need of a big rally to close this one out. Denise Wanger, who's been playing great. Today at the line, 24 to 19, gets it across. Curveball. Sets up the eighth grader on the outside. Nice spot, plays it deep in the back corner. After settling for a free ball here to play it back over. Cambry Border sets up Miller. And she pounced. What a what dig a, in the wow. back row. Excellent return. <laughs> Incredible dig there by Ephrata. Ruck Green gets it across. A little roll shot. Hardville able to pick that up. Miller with another chance. Good job by Fox to get hands on that one in the middle. Kept the play alive. Cross rolls it over. Gets a beautiful roll to go her way. 24 to 20 now. Four point lead Hardville, but it's not over yet. If you're Ephrata, you got to keep fighting, Brian. Good job by Ephrata. Good job by to keep fighting here at the end of this one. Wanger. Good serve. Can we board a can't get it across? I would consider calling the timeout right here if I was Hartville, Brendan. Amanda Zimmerman, head coach here, saying calm down, girls. That's all right. Looks like she's going to let it play out at least another point or two. She doesn't want to show her team any panic, but if they There's score a... here, oh! Fox puts it down her side of the net. That gives Hartville the win. Game one is over, ladies and gentlemen. Hartville an... captures that one. Right. Uncharacteristic mistake that time at the end. Maybe, maybe the fact that Candace got called for a couple net violations earlier in the game impacted that final play. I don't know. Tip your cap to Hartville for winning game one, but I have a feeling this one's going to go the distance. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, this is the championship match between Hartville, the team from Ohio, and the Africa Legends. Hartville capturing game one here in dramatic fashion. We're headed to game two, and Brian, it's going to be a thriller, I have a feeling. I can't wait, Brendan. I feel like we definitely got the two best teams of the weekend here in the championship I would, game. I would agree with that, for sure. Coming in, I felt like the, the competition was going to be pretty even across the board in a lot of ways, but I feel like these two teams have definitely separated themselves here at the end. There's a reason we're watching them now. And uh, hey, a couple teams in the tournament that we didn't expect to see fall out early did. And uh, you don't get to this point in the tournament by being lucky. Tyler Fox, line judge on the effort side at the moment with Sir Kenton Yoder, line judging on Hardville side. Kevin Shriver, the referee on the stand here. Longtime Fairview Falcons official here as we enter game two of this three game series. 
Ephrata looking to bounce back after a game one loss. Parkville trying to keep what they got going. You can see, Brian, Miller was starting to catch fire there at the end, and that's why they won by the amount that they did. She definitely had a couple big hits at the end, but once again, credit to Ephrata for be being in the right spot. I, I mean, getting some arms on those those spikes, but, man, when they're hit that hard, it's just tough to return those those uh, those spikes. Yeah, Ephrata not used to playing from behind, so we'll see how they respond to dropping game one. Ephrata raring to go. They're ready. Got about 34 seconds to the horn sounds. Let's see here if Candace Fox checks in the game here for Ephra. Looking like she might start on the bench. 0-0 zero, zero is the score. Game two, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. sounds the referees marking the number of the players on the floor and we're about set for action Cambry border at the line here we go serve the cross Nice excellent serve there. Pass, excellent pass. Groff. Groff. What a play, and it's in. Excellent ball placement by the senior. Jenna Groff, you can't ask for a more pretty play than that one, Brian. Absolutely. Effort able to find that spot a couple times on the floor now. Groff. Beautiful serve. What nice a great pass. serve of that young lady is as they set up to Gonzalez. Middle set. News Good able to shut it down. New Swinger. Just what Ephra wanted out of the gate to start game two. Momentum quickly coming on Ephra's side of things. Another excellent serve. Ooh, that's a tough play. Not quite able to make it up in that corner was Karina Rutt. Once again, eighth grader Lauren Mitchell at the serving straight. A fun player to watch this tournament. I've said eighth grader so many times. It just fascinates me <laughs> if there's an eighth grader playing here today in the championship game. Good for her. If I was in her shoes, I can guarantee I wouldn't be playing. As that ball is hit out of bounds by Courtney Newswanger, giving Mitchell a chance to take the lead here early. News to two. Newswanger again trying to exploit that deep, deep area on the Harville side, not quite able to do it. <laughs> Now Jenny nice Roth pass. sets up Rutt. And Rutt able to push it through the double block. Hartville underneath, called for the foot violation. If any part of your body completely crosses the black line at the center of the floor underneath the net, you get called for a foot fault. Here's Rutt. Serves that one across. A tight pass to handle here, and Newswing with a great... New Swinger with the play and score. Very smart play there. Very smart play. Not trying to crush it. New Swinger taking over at the net while Candace Fox takes a little breather on the sidelines. Four to two. Good again. Excellent serve. Off Excellent the arms serve. of Yoder. Very uncharacteristic of her to drop that one, but it's five to two after taking an early lead. Brian, let's see if they can continue to build on it. Definitely the start effort I was looking for in this one. Time for Hartville to have an answer. News New Swingers on fire! Oh. Six to two. Need a timeout. Single handedly carrying effort at the moment. Domination by Courtney New Swinger, and they have a four point lead. Ryan, it's been a fun game so far. Effort responding with a lot of energy in this game, too. 
I expected effort to come to come out in game two uh, on fire like this. So right now is where Hartville really they really have to dig deep and try and summon up whatever energy they have left. And the senior leaders from Ephra showing up big in this massive game. Same crew on the court for Coach Fox. Six to two is your score. Right at the line. Wood doing a good job from the serving strike so far. Hartville looking for that first good pass here. Serve by Rutt. Wow! Just absolutely mistimed it. Didn't know where they were on the court, and they just drop it. Big lead now for the Legends in game two. Hartville all of a sudden just lack of focus or on the defensive end. Excellent serve. New swinger Excellent gets a swing in it. Takes another swing out and scores! Unbelievable performance here in game two by number 10, Courtney Newswinger. Harville in ba badly in need of a side out here, but Root serves right now. So difficult to pass. Excellent serve. Brandon, I believe we were saying her name wrong. It's Caitlin, Caitlin Newswinger. I Caitlin apologize. Newswinger. Shout out to her mother, I believe, for coming and go, Katie. <laughs> Our apologies. Here's Miller, though. Nice Hits that one across. Here's Effort to go right save. there for the answer on the defensive side. Cambry Border hits it across, almost scores, and she will. Nine to three. Let's see if Hartfield can go on the run of their own now. Hartville able to finally stop the bleeding. See if they can put together a little rally of their own here and answer that. Here's Gonzalez. Gets that one across. Chance for Hartville. Border to Miller. That's it. And almost runs over the official. Outside of the post. And number 43, Corina Zimmerman will be serving for the effort of legend. The score is now 10 to 3. The serve. Bump set. And Fox is there. Fox checks back in the game here for the Legends. She's going to get a swing at it. A successful swing that was, nice but it's returned. Beautiful recovery by Hartville. Martin almost catches in there. Mitchell, what's the call? Close call by Tyler Fox, and he calls it in. Close call in the back line. This time, the call goes Hartville's way. Yoder sets the serving strike. She's been very consistent from here today. Border to Miller. Miller. Excellent dig by Karina Root. Fox gets it over for him. This is trouble, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Wow, what a hit by number 26, Daniel Miller. Bringing Unbelievable light. power there from 26. Absolutely fantastic athlete there that Hartville has wearing number 26. Set over by an initial winner. Great spot. Good recovery by Miller up in that front corner. And Jenna Groff's going to set up Caden's Fox. They get a hand on it. Can they get it over? And they will. There looks like they're going to go back to Candace. Another hand on it, but it drops this time and scores. 11 to five now off is the lead. The, off the blocker's hands that time. Hartville not able to pick that one up. Hartville outside this time. And she hits it into the net. Ephrata stretches the lead to seven. Hartville has got to find an answer and find one soon. Right when Hartville is showing some fire, effort comes in and stomps it out. Here we go. Here's Porter with the one arm save. Hey, wow. And they get that across. What a hustle play by Hartville. Oh, Winger! Yeah. A great set of hitting for her. She continues the roll. Timeout called Hartville. 
13 to 5. Impressive hit by Denisha Wenger there. She is not a tall girl, but able to get a lot on that one. A lot of talented players in this one. It's hard to find one that is having the most impact, Brian, but it's been fun to watch all these girls play. Miller making her mark. Gonzalez serving. Very nicely for Hartville. And on the other side, new swinger playing very nicely, especially early in this game for Ephrata. Now a good set of serving by multiple girls from Ephrata's side of things. Yeah, absolutely. Very consistent serving, really, really by both these, these teams in the championship match here. Not many service errors. You love to see it. 13-5, to Ephrata off to a big lead here early. We're in game two, ladies and gentlemen. If you just joined us, Hartville won the first game. Game three will be to 15. This one's to 25. Win by two, cap at 27. Here we go. Cheers on Martin at the line, wearing number seven. She's a junior. Just so clips the net. Border to Miller. Wow, that's a great What a hit by Border. Wide open is Miller. Unbelievable set by Border. Backside to Miller, who puts it home. Can't leave her that wide open. Good back set. Six to 13. Miller now with the serve for Hartwell. Outside the winger. Wow, couldn't quite. The we ball got hit the roof. Ceiling. And that's going to go Hartville's wet. Seven to 13. Now the lead doesn't look too big, but you got to keep rolling here if you're Hartville to make this a game. Miller's at the line. Excellent pass by Kareen in the back row there. Sets up Groff. Harbo able to dig it in the back row. Go outside. Blocked by Candace and Fox. scores. Candace Fox has recovered from a few net mishaps earlier and has been scoring very nicely for the Legends. Big block right there by Candace. Getting some mojo back is Ephrata. And wow. By Denisha Wenger. 15 to 7. Hartville looks like they're just trying to find some answer. Perhaps at this point, Hartville starting to tire a little bit. And the call is in. Sixteen to seven, ladies and gentlemen, is your current score. It's Denisha Wanger serves that one for the legends. Mitchell, men at the net. Apparently, a touch on the other side, but Ephrata allows the volley to continue. Great hit, excellent dig oh, by Brown. And it swings and puts it in. Now Candace is dominating for the legends. They're down ten. Some life is getting sucked out of Hartville here. They're trying to find answers, but I don't think they know the problem. Effort is just playing really flawlessly at the moment. Effort are totally controlling the play right now. Here's Candace. And that's out. Just a bit too deep on that one. Good call by the line judge. 8 to 17. Marcy Gonzalez checking in. She's been dominating in this tournament. Gotta love when she's in the middle of the court if you're Hartville. Absolutely. Reagan Mitchell with a nice serve there for Hartville. 9 to 17 now. Brian, they're chipping away at it. Let's see if they can keep it going to make this game an exciting end. Here we go. Every serve so crucial right now for Hartville. Nicely. Oh, and she floats it out the back. Sailed like a sailboat out of bounds. Here we go, 18 to nine. Candace, Candace at the line. The jump serve, it looks like. She's been very consistent in this tournament with this serve. Candace does it again. Mean nice jump done. serve. Gonzalez. Try to place on the weak side, but there was a girl there. What do we got here? Two hits indeed. Double hit on that one allows Hard to regain the serve. Here's Camby Border. 
trying to bring her team back in this game. Nice serve by Border. Beautiful pass by Fox. And Martin the Grove. Drop. Nice cross court shot. Hardly able to return it. Groff to Caitlin New Swinger, oh, who gets blocked. Blocked by Gonzalez. Effort able to pick it up though. Border scrambles. Groff. Outside they go. Rutt. Karina Rutt not gets able blocked. to block. 11 18. Still big lead. around. And not going away just yet in this game. This is win or go home here for Africa. They're on the ropes. They're up seven, though, in control of this game. After the seven, play it back over softly. Hardly with a chance. Border to, to Gonzalez. Miss hit there. She didn't square that one up. Ephrata stretches the lead back to eight. Groff. Serves it across. Border to Gonzalez. Oh, picked up well by Groff. Karina Root. Sail across. Border with this little back and forth over. here. Caitlin Newswinger nice with the hit. Newswinger, good pick up though by the eighth grader Mitchell. Gonzalez puts it across now for Hartville. They set up Rutt. Nice hit by Rutt. But well done. Tough. All over right now. Wow, oh, the net. Pick up by Ephrata. Both teams using the Good net to their advantage. The Martin Border. Border sets up Gonzalez. Ah, again, a dig in the back row by Ephrata. We got ourselves a volley here, folks. We do indeed. Here's Gonzalez. Oh, net at the net. Shuts it down. Net at the net. And now it's going across. Groff. Back Martin. Side. This volley will never end. And it does. Excellent volley there. After the able to take the point to go up by nine. Up nine and in control of this game. And Jenna Gross at the line. Excellent serve. Excellent serve. A lot of power. No one there. Brian, it looks like we could be going to a game three, 21 to 11. Timeout caught here by Hartville. And we got... Oh, look. A confusing call here. Too many timeouts taken, maybe? I don't know. And we're not sure what happened there, but there's not a timeout. Two timeouts, and I think they tried to call a third one. Is that a point now? I don't see How about happened. no? Newswinger, another block in the middle. Now, Brian, is that usually a uh, result of a point there, or what? You know what? I, I don't know. I don't know I don't that's a yellow card. Effort finds the open spot on the floor. I don't know what the rule in that is, Brendan, but I guess I'm guessing the officials know, and I don't think they awarded the point. So I doubt the point in cards. I've never really seen it at this level, but I don't know if they do have cards. Or not. Wow, across. excellent dig. Miller with the beautiful dig in the back row. After uh, only three points away from going to game three, but they can't get it across, and now it's a 10-point game. Let's see if Hartville can climb up a little bit higher in this game. in need of a rally right now. Leaning on eighth grader Lauren Mitchell to do it. Lauren Mitchell is at the line. Serves that one across. Good pass by Karina. A little miscommunication in the front row. Allows Hartville. Order to, to Miller. Down. We've been saying that combo That's a lot tonight. Excellent but... dig by Groff. Gonzalez to Miller. Tight set there. Miller goes up and pushes it over. Miller and Newswinger having a battle at the net. Back to Miller. Outside. Miller moves with a soft shot. They're going to set her up. Nope. Gonzalez now gets a swing Ooh, into the net. Someone. Who got there first? It's it was Gonzalez. Two points away. Is that for the, from going to game three, Brian? It certainly looks like we're going to have that winner take all game. Karina Root trying to score the last two points for Ephrata. Nice serve there. She Porter. has a good floater serve. And it hits the upright. Game possible now for Ephrata. One point away is the Legends. They have Rudd at the line. 
Effort of Faithful feeling pretty excited right now. Their team could possibly be excellent serve again. 16 points away from their first championship. Nice dig in the back row by Fox. Tears are not able to pick it up. Hartville says game's not over yet. 13 to 24. 10 Gonzalez to the line. No timeouts left for Hartville's growth as we found that out about five minutes ago. Hartville needs 11 in a row to keep this game alive. That's a good spot for that serve. Wenger, though, nice short Wenger. shot. And Border was inches from touching that net. New Swinger into the net, it goes. New Swinger had a, having a great game, not able to convert there. 10 points now needed for Hartville. 14 to 24 is your score. Gonzalez. Nice serve. Straight line that one. Here's Miller. That ends. Hands. Wait, no, no, no. We what's the call? It's off the it hand. Block. Yeah, off the effort of block and out of bounds, resulting in another point for Hartville. And it puts Gonzalez back to the line once again. She's probably on like a three-point run right now. Oh, and that no does it, folks. Game three between Hartville and Ephrata. Coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere. Ryan, here we go. We are less than two minutes away from a game three. What do you got to do if you're Hartville offensively? And what do you got to do if you're if you want to win this game? Well, in the see, States? Brendan, right now, I, I feel like you got to give the edge to effort just from an endurance standpoint. Mm. Hartville play has played so many extra games today as a result of coming up through the loser's bracket at the end. Right now, endurance-wise, after with a lot more left in the tank, you know that. It's just, if you're Hartville, it all comes down to one game. You came this far. You let it all on the court. Let it all out on the court. Dig as deep as you can and find whatever energy you have left. Hartville. Almost looks like sometimes they're just trying to figure it out too much. They should just go out there and play. Let's see if they do that, Brian. After the fans getting very noisy, we'll try to get as close to the mic as we can so you folks can hear what's kind of going on. Game three, folks, is to 15, not 25. So a fast start, absolutely critical in this one. You don't want to get down to that early four or five point deficit because it often just proves to be too much to come back from. It's going to be quick, so pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. Hartville Ephrata championship game. Only the third match, I believe, in this whole tournament that has gone to three games. And what game would you rather be than this one? Two powerhouse teams Absolutely. coming out. It. You obviously, you asked both these teams if the before the tournament started, would you settle for playing a game three in the championship? Both of them would have signed up for this in a heartbeat. And no one wants to lose in this one. But we know there's only one winner, so let's see who it is. Camry Borders at the line. Number 17, longtime senior setter for Hardville. Once again, game to 15. A 
a cap of 17, win by two. And we're off. Serve for Borda. Borda? Jenna Groff. Nicely played in the back row that time. Gonzalez. Gonzalez with the chance. Excellent hit. Dug well, though, in the back row by Karina. Hartville with another chance to set it up. Gonzalez. Oh, wow. Puts it down and scores. That's Marcy Gonzalez, ladies and gentlemen. The number two player, the sophomore. Excellent hit that time out of the middle by Gonzalez. Hartville, Hartville the early one-point edge. Border back at the line. Her team up one. It's a good serve. Nice pass by Candace Fox. They set up Jenna Groff in the corner. Excellent. Groff finds the blind side spot of the defense and exploits it one to one. That's an excellent shot by Jenna Groff. Double blockers up, push it deep. She did it to perfection. One to one. Wow, nice serve by Jenna. And Shayla Newswanger makes them pay two to one. Efforts off to a one-point lead in this game, and Jenna Groff is serving the best server here for Africa. Agree, Brennan. Critical spot right now for Hartville. Can't let this thing get out of hand early. Put across. Border. Gonzalez. We have they call a net violation. Caitlin Newswanger. Oh, it had net. It's two to two. Man, Brian, this is a nail biter this early. This is a nail biter. A game to 13 now. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The cap's at 17. Games go to 15. Win by two. Mitchell. Fox. Nice pass by Candace there. They set Caitlin Newswinger. Nice dig, though. What can they do with it? Nice play by the Order, center just way to, to take it back. Stay Order. away from the net there. Both teams flying around right now. Let's see what Africa can set up offensively. They're going to go to rut with it. Oh, she takes Finds the a spot. Shot. Nice recovery by Mitchell. Set up Martin. Nice hit by Tears of it. Hartville right there. Miller puts it away. Miller scores. Three to two. Excellent volley there, Brendan. Excellent volley. Good defensive plays on both sides of the floor. Three to two. Hartville has a one point advantage over the Africa Legends here in the championship game number three. Mitchell. Nice serve there by the eighth grader. Caitlin Newswinger gets blocked by Gonzalez. Down. Back to Miller. Miller off the hands and out for the point. What a power play by Danielle Miller, number 26 from Hartville. Effort of looking to answer now. Let's see if they can, Brian. Four to two. Like I said at the beginning, Brendan, critical not to go into that four or five point hole at the beginning of the game. Especially when it's such a short game. Martin tears on, oh, that's out. Three point lead for Hartville. They're building it now, Brian, five to two. Early timeout time call. Out Only a three point lead from Hartville, but that gets amplified because of how short these games Absolutely. are, Brian. Totally agree, Brendan, that's an excellent point. Big thing for Hartville coming out of this timeout. I'm not sure who's serving here, but it's simply just get it over the net. We've seen it so many times in this tournament where they come out after a timeout and simply just put the ball out of bounds or straight into the net. Let's see if right. Hartville can't do that. You want your you want your best players to make big plays in the big moments. And right now in game three, Hartville seems to be doing just that. After looking to find an answer. Winner takes all, ladies and gentlemen. This is it. Only a few more points until this great tournament that we have been experiencing all weekend long comes to a close. Hardville trying to take this trophy back to Ohio for the third straight year. Effort of trying to bring it back. Lauren Mitchell serving again for Hartville. Nice serve. Excellent pass by Karina. They set up Newsman in the middle. Hartville able to return that ball. Marcy Gonzalez hits that one over to Jenna Groff. Border to Miller. Playing with the line there is Danielle Miller. Oh, here's a off the hands of Miller and drops it in. Big point there for Ephrata. Karina Rudd at the line for the Legends. It's 5-3. to three. Her team down two. 
Karina, an excellent server. Effort in need of a few here. Let's see what she can do. Rutt puts it across. So consistent back there at the serving stripe. She well has done. been. And wow. out of bounds on the hit. Just Goes like that. The, one. the timeout seems to have worked for Ephraim. Great call there by Coach Sydney Fox. Her team down now one point with her solid server, Rutt, in the back. Nice serve once again by Rutt. Well, to Miller. Excellent set. Miller couldn't get a whole lot on that one. The set goes to Newsland in the middle. Gonzalez over to Miller, pushes that ball into the hands of Jenna Groff. Wanger way out, out not even bounds. close. Out of bounds to give Hartville the two-point edge. This game is sitting at six to four right now with Miss Gonzalez at the line, wearing number two for Hartville. Gonzalez, a good server. Crucial for effort to respond right here. Fox. Digs that one all the way back to the back row of Hartville. Miller. Nice swing. Good dig by Karina. Not quite in court. Nice hit by Miller. Miller showing her dominance once again. No surprise there. Seven to four. This is a big point here. Oh, the line. It was on the here. line. Unreal. Big, that. big, big spot. Brian, we saw she must have been centimeters earlier. That time, no doubt, her foot slipped. Seven to five, that one hurts. Karina Zimmerman now with a chance to bring her team within one. Border, beautiful set. To, Border's an incredible setter. Nice set to the outside here. Oh, Wenger not able to push it across. Looking to take a little bit off, but just took a little too much off. Eight to five. Yoder with the serve now for Hartville. Yoder. Fox. Candace Fox. Nice cut shot. Beautiful dig, though, by Hartville. And they get, get it across, Brian. Can you believe it? Here's Fox. With another chance. That uh, ball's out. Out of bounds. Hartville goes up by four. Africa needs an answer and needs one now. Six points away from the championship title is Hartville. Groff. Wanger. You know Porter. where it's going here, Brendan. You know where it's going. And Unreal. Miller puts it home. Unbelievable play. Border to Miller. We've been saying that combination all night long. Once again, it works for them. I would feed her, Brendan. I would feed her right now. She is feeling it. Effort with the timeout to discuss it again. 10 to 5 is the lead that Hartville is holding on to. What an exciting game three we are witnessing right here between two great teams, well coached on both sides. Coach Sydney Fox, obviously a good call here. Just want to call timeout and talk some things over. Effort is just looking to settle it down a little bit. All they're looking for right now is the next point. Focus on that next point. Take a deep breath. Make that first pass. Make that first set. Put that first hit away. Get control of that serve. If you're hard filled, don't overthink it. Just go out and play. And that's what they've been doing the past couple little rounds that they've been on. The Jota's back in the line. What a great server she's been for them. Oh, tournament long. Draw oh, to Martin. To Tirza. Nice hit through the double block. Miller once again, Brian. Off the hands of Candace. Excellent dig. Unbelievable play. Oh, wow. What a play by Afro. Great effort by the legends. But now Hartville only four points away Excellent from capturing this title. By Efforta, but couldn't quite put it in the court. Nice spot with that serve. They set up the outside. Wanger oh, into that. No. Unreal, Brian. There's three points away. Yoder on a roll from the serving position here. Yoder again at the strike. Another solid serve. This game goes to 15, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget that. So we are Setting close to the, the end. And Fox picks that one in. Nails our camera, as you can tell, but we're all good here.
12 to 6 now in favor of Hartville. Oh, and a bad effort of normally so consistent from the serving stripe. Brian, I didn't catch that. Who was that? Uh, Tears of Martin with the service air. Here's Danielle Miller at the line. She's two points away from bringing a title back to Harville. Oh, and they can't return that one. Hartville starting to smell it. Game possible. Brian, they're a point away. Unbelievable, Brendan. you got to give him credit for fighting so hard. Game well, on the line for Effort. Ball is served. Here we go. They give it to Border. Border just pushes it across to Candace Fox. And, and they're going to score. The for a big hit there out of the middle. They're in need of everyone from here on out. Keeping it alive, ladies and gentlemen. A reminder, this game goes to 15, 14-7. Parkville, seven-point commanding lead. Denisha Wanger. They're going to Mitchell with it. Mitchell off the block and out of bounds. And Hartville takes the championship. Unbelievable. The title's going back to Ohio. For the first time in the third year in a row. Congratulations to Ephrata. They're an outstanding team. Hartville just a little better in game three. Absolutely incredible match. Congratulations to both these teams and a wonderful tournament. What a fun tournament this was, Brian. Fans, thanks for tuning in. Your championship team, Hartville. Unbelievable playing, and it was their offense that we've been talking about so much that brought them this championship once again. Alfred, I'm not going to hang your head on the number two team. What a great tournament it was for them. I feel like Brian, if these teams would play ten times, both would win five. I, I, I agree. Well, like I said earlier in game three, you you want your best players to make the biggest plays in the biggest moments, and Miller came through with some clutch hits in game three, um, and you really got to tip your cap to them for coming back up through the loser's bracket. Uh, they, they exerted an incredible amount of energy just to get here and to cap off the comeback. Impressive effort, though. Nothing to hang their heads about. Really, really solid volleyball team. Well done. And the awards are coming up, so uh, parents can stay tuned for that. We're going to stop broadcasting, but leave the mic live and hopefully it catches um, the, what the microphone's saying. Have a great night, ladies and gentlemen. It was a fun one. Thanks for listening. See you guys next year.
An important thing that it's very easy for us to do is get caught up and follow the world in its course of the ship. And get mad and yell at the refs and yell at the coaches and say bad things from the stands. And, our, and, and that, that's what comes out. Competition brings that out in us. And, uh, and we all think either competition brings out the worst in us, but I usually say the competition just brings it out who we are. And it, and it tends to expose us at times. And so I want to say congratulations and thank you. I saw so much good this weekend. We preach it a lot. But we need to improve the spirit of Christian school, and we're always trying to improve and always trying to be better. And I give that challenge to every person in here that we are the best force to ever be led. In 2 Timothy 2, 5 to 8, it is very familiar verses. And Paul said to Timothy, as Paul was coming to the end of his life, he said this Keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord, or by telling others the good news. Fully carry out the ministry God has given you. As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I fought a good fight. I finished the race. I remain faithful. Now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, which will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. Go to the message there from Paul, and he was exhorting his enemy to be faithful and to give it his all. And Paul had come to the end of his life, and he had just poured it all out. He had given everything that he had, and his life was back to land, and he was confident that he had done everything. And as I watch the girls play, I thoroughly believe that every team put it all out there. Yes, Hartville won at the end, and uh, I didn't predict to win, but everybody you know, all put it out there, and that was great to see. I don't think I ever left anything on the table, and that's why you can play the game. You know, we, we need that same energy in the Christian life. And I know you're not going to go to church tomorrow morning, and you have a screen like I know that. I'm not sure how to work through that. We worship a little bit. But I'm going to say this. Go to church tomorrow. Even if you're a high people. You belong to church tomorrow, okay? Because our boys would do the high out send our kids to, to church too. And we drove that. My kid was whining. And we drove them a high out. And we said, you will be in church. Even though you're going to get home at 3 in the morning or whatever. But I had to think of a year ago. And a year and a half ago, we were dying to be in church, and we were so upset that we could be in church, and we were getting mad and fighting up with and everything. And I was talking to my co pastor in the last week, and he said something like, You know, Marcus, it's getting harder and harder to get people in church, and here we are a year and a half later, and many of even us got used to not being in church, and it's that much harder to get people, all of us, you, and me, and people in my church, and everywhere out. One, even some Sunday mornings and Sunday nights and Wednesday nights, I said, New Orleans, someday that might be different. The things that are going on in our country, we might long for church like we know today. So I give you that challenge that you worship God, don't go yelling and screaming in the morning, morning. That's probably not going to go too good. But that same energy and enthusiasm and 100% full effort that we went to today, you need that. For your spiritual life. And God needs that for you, and that's far more important than a volleyball game or a basketball game. So I encourage you to go with that energy tomorrow and back to church. Have that zeal. Have the zeal of a legacy. A legacy of live for Christ. I'm going to make a shameless plug here, okay? Shameless plug. As long as you admit it, it's okay. But you guys probably come to this city year after year. You can't stand the parking. And you know, I, I obviously know the very part. I hope at least a few of you I hope because it's more money than this city desperately needs. So uh, we like to bring each other. Believe me, when I helped the ladies say $350 last night, I shouldn't have helped her, but I did. Let me go to the man and post me. Put it down for the bar, okay? But anyway. Um, 52 
years ago, my mother and father were getting ready. They were sitting down there. And my father turned 76 yesterday. Two of these years ago, he came right to this community. I said, you know what, I'm going to work in this community. And so our family and many other families in our church have spent the last 52 years here working in this community. And we love it. We enjoy it. It's been good to us. And my father has left a wonderful legacy. He started a very Christian school uh, close to 50, 45 years ago. And that's why we're here. We're right in this community. And my mother just finished her book a few weeks ago. And she has to look through. You can find her on Amazon stories from the box den. Uh, she has to be here to find her on Amazon. Uh, what's the actual name of the end? Stories from the Fox Den. Don't be afraid to pick that up, check that out, and it's a story of legacy. And I pray to God for the legacy that my parents have left with me. And I ask you this evening, what legacy are you going to live when you're born from this world? The biggest thing, you were a great volleyball player, you were a great basketball player, you were a great at this, you were great at that. What's going to be the legacy if the Lord took you home in the next week? What is going to be said about you? And that's a sort of question we should all ask ourselves. What, well, how will the kingdom of God be less in it? We will take it out. And so think soberly about that and live your life for Jesus Christ because Christ needs you. He needs you. The work of his kingdom needs you. As the world continues to get dark and dark around us, he needs us. Live for him, love for him, and serve him. I'm guessing they're going to come out in a minute or two. And in a way, I feel guilty right now when we get to have these wonderful events. Maybe somebody who wasted some time on Tuesday night and watched the teachers up the roof, okay? Maybe not. Well, you don't have to admit it, you did. But you know, we took a minute and we stopped. And we prayed for that situation to be a team. And that is near and near the memory of our hearts. I think we have some very close family here. But I think it's only appropriate. That we just stop at an event and we're having fun and cheering and yelling. And life is all good here in the United States. But we have 17 of our friends that are going about three weeks now captive. So let's just take a moment of silent prayer, lift them up in prayer, we're praying for the release of somehow that God will be honored and glorified in that situation. And so everybody is praying and now I'll have a short prayer. Soon after that, let's pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, our hearts go out to you this evening for those that are captive in AT. Lord, you know their plight. We don't know if they're cold, sick, hungry, alive, dead. There's so many things we don't know. God, we don't understand why it happened, but we do know that you are in control. And we know that you are with them. And Lord, we're here praying for the release. And we, and we, in our, in our minds, our human minds, we think that would be best. Father, we do give it to you, and we know that you are holding them in your hand, even though we can't see them. So we give that to you, and we just earnestly pray that you would work in the lives of the captors that are holding them. Lord, we know that people from Guam are treating them in a godly way, and I just pray that I would speak to the captors and they would just let them go. And in your name be honored and glorified in that terrible situation. I pray for the people here that are close family. I pray that you would just comfort them and minister to them during this time. Lord, we thank you for this good tournament. Thank you that everybody was relatively healthy and those that have spring ankles, and then there's going to be a lot of sore bodies tomorrow, but I pray that they would recover. We thank you for strong, healthy bodies that allow us to do this. Lord, I pray that these girls who have strong, healthy bodies, that as they get out of school and they move on, that they would always use their bodies to bring you honor and glory. And we thank you that you are a God that is worthy to be praised. In 
Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we'll start the meetings here. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Mr. Middleworth. Thank you, Miles. So they are making their way out here. While you do that, just a few quick announcements to close up. Um, there is a church that addresses this on Sunday mornings, so unfortunately we can't leave this until Monday. So if you can help us out, just pull it up the chairs you're sitting on, put them against the wall, pick out any trash that you see, things like that, or you can talk to us, and uh, that will be much easier for us. So thank you. All right, thank you everyone for making this a great tournament. I don't know that I can remember a tournament where the, the, the seat was playing back close to you know, the front of the tournament and uh, just a great play. I know you can let me explain the process of picking the all-stars to understand what happened. Each coach nominates uh, a team from or, uh, sorry, players from their team. The championship is the team that wins the tournament and nominate three. The runner-up can nominate two. And uh, third place and fourth team place them all nominate two, and the rest of them all nominate one. So the coaches have nominated who for their own team, for their own team. We put it in there, we uh, figure it all out, and we try to figure out who gets what. This is a bit of a ball going because there's so much, so much to play, and uh, it's not easy, you know, you can only get something to get worse. And so, uh, it was uh, some just great play. So when it all came out, this esteemed group of uh, committee, all-star committee came out with the following results. So let's start with uh, the center board, which uh, everybody here knows and, and should know and appreciate the value of a center. This one here was like, um, I think like all the nominations that came in, uh, this is at by 75% of them. This young lady comes from Kirkville. <laughs>
Another one all star from FMS Janet Roth.